Daryl Brooks, case number 21 CF 1848. Appearances, please. Zach Wichow. Sir, state your name for the record, please. I'm here as a third party intervening in the matter. In this matter, as authorized representative for my client, I accept for value and return for value all of the charging instruments in this matter and make my exemption available for discharge of all obligations and charges connected with this case. I do not dispute any of the facts in the charging instruments. And for the record, I do not consent to or agree to being called that name that you have identified here today. The record should reflect that the individual known to this court as Daryl Brooks is present in person in custody in street clothes, specifically a suit and tie and a mask. Um, I just also want to make a record quickly that um, a number of documents were left by Mr. Brooks in the holding area uh, just outside the courtroom. They have been put on his desk today. It's all of the autopsy protocols that were provided to him yesterday, the hard copies, that is, uh, the diagrams that were uh, presented in court related to those protocols, and a copy of the pretrial offer. So I just wanted to make that record. Hold on. Not right yet, please. So um, I have been advised that all of the jurors are here and ready to go. I presume the state has available its next witness. Yes. We do agree to also move state's exhibit 162A into evidence. As to 162A, Mr. Brooks, um, any position on that? Yeah, I object. I haven't even seen it, first of all. And second of all, again, for the record. Mr. Brooks, I'm dealing only with the uh, exhibit right now. Sorry for the interruption, but I need to uh, do that without interruption from you. Uh, 162A was a screen capture uh, that related to an annotation that a witness made. Um, I believe that was during witness number 34. Yes, that was... Uh, Mr. Hallmark, and so based upon that, uh, Exhibit 162A is received, and I will so advise the jury uh, when they come in. Uh, sir, I'm not going to address any preliminary matters at this point. I've already addressed uh, a number of things yesterday. The jury is to be brought out. No, there, there were some things that needed to be discussed about the paperwork from yesterday. Um, we'll take that up on a break. You can look over it. You can make a note and pass it to I've my already, clerk. I've already looked over it, Your Honor, with all respect. I think there's some things. Mr. Brooks, need. I'm not going to deal with it right now. Yeah, it's paperwork. I just wanted it notated that you left it, and now it's being provided not, to you talking, again. I'm not referring to that paperwork. I'm not right. dealing with the paperwork from the clerk of court's office either. I am not the custodian. We're going to bring the jury out. Okay, but she should, Mr. Brooks, she should know that she's trying Mr. to Brooks, get me I, to pay. Stop. I am not addressing it. it. It has to be addressed. All right, I'm going to take a quick break and make sure the jury is ready. And if we'll I don't, if I don't address it now. All right, thank you. The jury can come on out. So we're not going to address the civil matter? No. I was told to pay for something under a civil statute. Mr. Statue. Brooks, I am not the custodian. Bring it up with the clerk of court. How I'm not can I addressing bring it up it. with the clerk of court? She, how, how am I supposed to do that? So that makes me wonder is what's being if it's a Mr. Civil Brooks, case. the jury's coming out. I'm not going to address your request for open civil, records. If it's That's, civil, I'm not the custodian of the records, sir. Being sued? My sesty trust is being sued? Civil Mr. Is civil Brooks, matter. this is an irrelevant matter that you're attempting Look, to bring up in the presence of the was, jury. The record should not, reflect these interruptions. Before the jury came out, Your Honor. You and I told that. you I wasn't going to address it. Please. Okay, so it's a civil matter. How, who's being sued? 
My sis be trust because I, how can I be? Mr. Trust? Brooks, it, you're talking about an irrelevant matter between you and the it clerk of court. It wasn't irrelevant so, when I got the paperwork from the clerk of court. So I was Mr. Trying Brooks, to address it. <laughs> I'm not going to address that. The jury will so disregard I'm, I'm assume, these irrelevant this is a comments. Matter. We have an address subject. All right, matter. thank you, everyone. This? Please be seated. The jury so will disregard the statements matter. Mr. Brooks is making about subject matter jurisdiction. They are a misstatement of the law. Yes. No, All right, not. and just like this is a civil case. Mr. Brooks, the jury's here. Please like show respect and decorum. According to this um, document, this is a Mr. civil Brooks, case. Mr. Brooks, please stop. Which means someone is being sued. Civil is a suit. Mr. Brooks, you're talking about an irrelevant matter. I'm starting the trial. Of course, right here that says it's a civil matter. Mr. Brooks so has nothing to do with My this case. trust is being sued. I have no idea what you're talking about. So I, I got the paperwork right here. All right, I'm going to excuse the jury right about. now, given this disruption. I'll rise for the jury. This should be properly addressed before the jury even comes out. That's why I tried to properly address it before we even went on the record. Mr. Brooks, stop. I'm not going to. This is. You are. Not I'm being respectful to this proceeding you, or to with this respect, jury. No, it's with not. With all due respect, respect all stating due respect, that doesn't make it respectful. I was this paperwork by you, Mr. Brooks. Monica Pass. Stop talking till the jury court. is out. Okay, Thank you. So why can we address this before they came out? I'm that not going time, to address it. That bottom was the line. time to address it, though. We're supposed to do all the, all the addresses before the jury comes out before we start the matter. Please I was be seated. Trying to simply address paperwork that was given to me. By you, Your Honor. That states Mr. That Brooks, this, it states that you have interrupted me matter. repeatedly. You are on the verge of being removed to that courtroom. I don't want to do on that. What, I want you to stay here. But you law, keep Honor. interrupting me and bringing up irrelevant matters. I told you yesterday as a courtesy that was provided to you so that you would frankly not complain that you didn't get it as quickly as possible. Okay, I am not the custodian of the records. If you have an issue with what was provided to you, how it was provided to you, then take it up with the clerk of she court. But from me. now on, I am not going to be the messenger and give you documents that you request to the custodian of the records or from the custodian of the records. They will simply have to be delivered to you at the jail. But that is in response to your discussion or whatever we want to call it this morning. I'm not taking it up. Issue. All right, it is irrelevant. It, it needed to be noted for the record. It doesn't need it to was, be noted, sir. All right, the jury's me, coming back out, and I'm court. going to warn you if you bring this up again, I will pause and I will remove you to the next courtroom for being disrespectful, for being interruptive, for being disruptive, and for bringing up irrelevant matters in front of this jury. You will forfeit your right to be present for the direct examination of this witness. I object to did that, you Honor. hear what I said, no, sir? No, I did not. I, I object to that, Your Honor. Well, you can and object, and your objection is noted, but if you interrupt record, when this jury comes the out, they will go. I will, rem I will have them taken out again, and you will be removed to the next well, courtroom. You can't. What is the legal basis for that ruling, Your Honor? Illinois versus Allen, sir, and all of the and, other cases that I've cited previously. Anything, I'll make the appropriate record. Stop interrupting me. The jury's coming out. We're continuing with this trial despite your repeated efforts to disrupt. That's Yesterday, sit down. Record. Yesterday alone, sir, 17 interruptions, not including the opportunity that I gave you where you spent 50 minutes, okay, discussing what were primarily either irrelevant or baseless accusations and requests not based in law or fact. I was abundantly patient with you yesterday. And you still haven't and, verified by proof any of what and I said. And none of that is required, sir. Because and it is. You can't verify Your belief proof. That the that's the matter? law the doesn't make it so, Mr. Brooks. Your belief that these are legitimate legal positions they doesn't are. change the law and doesn't make it so. It, it, it's so again, relevant because you didn't want. To I'm going it. to step off and give Mr. Brooks five minutes to cool off, and not, when that I, happens, I I'm bringing cool the jury I'm not, I'm out, not angry at and all. then we will I just wanted continue. To, I don't.
Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. All right, the jury can be brought out, please. again not addressing the subject matter jurisdiction yet again Dead. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, while you were not with us, the state moved Exhibit 162A, and I did receive it. With that, uh, who do we have on the witness stand? The state calls Assistant Chief Craig Learman. All right, sir, would you please stand and raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please be seated. Sir, the first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Sure. First name, Craig, C-R-A-I-G. Last name, Learman, L-I-E-R-M-A-N-N. -N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. I'd like to direct your attention to Sunday, November 21st of 2021. Did you attend the Waukesha Christmas Parade that day? Yes, I did. Were you alone or with other people? I was with my family. Overruled. Could you say that again? I was with my family. And I see you're wearing a uniform today. What do you do for a living? I'm uh, assistant chief with the Franklin Police Department. Were you at the parade in your law enforcement capacity? I was not. Why were you there? I was there to attend the uh, parade just uh, to get the Christmas mood. Okay. Um, and did you have any family members participating in the parade? I did not. Where were you standing or observing the parade? I was standing on the West Main Street, uh, very near the intersection of Maple, um, just to the west of Maple. Do you know if you were on the north side or the south side of Main Street? I was on the south side of Main Street. Can we please put up for the jury uh, exhibit number 15, which has previously been received and published? Go ahead. Overruled. Can we zoom in on the bottom left quadrant here? Do you recognize the area uh, on the map that you're looking at? Yes. What does it depict? Uh, it's a map of the parade route, Christmas parade route. Could you draw a little X for us um, if you can find where you were standing with your family? Overruled. Do you want me to go up and touch the map? Is that oh, the screen there? in front of you. I'm sorry. The screen in front of you is okay. a touch screen. You can use your finger. Sure. Okay. Overruled. I would be right, basically right there, just just west of the intersection with Maple by maybe 20 to 50 feet. Okay. Southwest corner, Maple and Main. Yes. We can clear that then, please. Uh, could we now please display for the jury... Exhibit 56, which has also been previously received and published. Go ahead. This is uh, 
an exhibit has already been received into evidence. It's a, obviously a diagram of the intersection we're talking about. Do you recognize this intersection? Objection here, sir. Overruled. Yes, I do. And could you point out for us by, again, drawing a, a little X uh, where you and your family were standing? Yes, it would be approximately right here. Okay. So the, again, southwest corner of Maple and Maine. Yes. Do you recall what happened? We can take that down, please. Do you recall what happened at approximately 4.39 p.m. that Sunday afternoon? Objection. Overruled. Yes. Can you tell us? Sure. Um, standing at that location, um, the parade was coming from my right to my left, so from the east to the west. Um, there was a break in the parade in front of me. Um, to my right was the Milwaukee Dancing Grannies. To my left was a group from the Catholic community of Waukesha, and there was a break in the parade right in front of me, an opening. Um, I heard the crowd um, become more excited than normal. Um, so I felt like something was coming, but I didn't know what. didn't know if it was a unusual parade thing or what, but people became more excited, so it kind of grabbed my attention. Um, then I realized that something wasn't quite right. Um, I could see a vehicle um, traveling from the east to the west. Um, at first I could only see the top portion of the vehicle from maybe the um, windshield up because there was people obviously standing along, along the route so they kind of obstructed my view. Um, but I could see that the vehicle was traveling at a much faster rate than any of the other participants so clearly something was wrong. Could you describe the vehicle for us? Um, at first I could only tell that it was an, probably like an SUV because of again my vision was obstructed by the people that were standing watching the parade. Um, as I got closer uh, I could see that it was a uh, red Ford Escape SUV. What happened as the SUV got closer to you? As it got closer to me um, I could hear that the engine was revving very high. The RPMs were much higher than normal, almost like it was um, maybe in the wrong gear or there was something mechanically wrong with it. It was revving, like I said, revving much higher than a typical car. It definitely grabbed your attention. Okay. What happened next? Um, as I got closer, I could hear something, which I didn't know if it was like the engine sputtering or... I didn't really know what it was, um, again, kind of unusual, um, but then as it got closer, um, you could see that it was, again, traveling at a high rate of speed. I was concerned at that point in time um, that either there's some sort of mechanical issue with the car possibly, or maybe some parade participant was having a medical emergency, but the, clear, the vehicle was clearly not under control in relation to everything else that was going on. How close did the SUV get to you? As it passed me, it came uh, more towards my side of the street, so it would have been traveling essentially um, west in what would be the eastbound lanes normally. Um, so when it passed by me, it was very close, probably maybe 10 feet away at most. Were there parking spaces in front of you where you were standing? I, be I believe there were, yes. Do you recall if the vehicle passed through the parking spaces in front of you at all? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Yes. Could you describe the lighting conditions at that time? What were the, the sunlight, street lights, things like that? Um, it was, if I remember correctly, it was getting to be towards dusk. Um, I don't believe the street lights, lights were on at that point in time, but it was, it was getting darker, but it was still, um, like I said, I would describe it as maybe dusk slightly before that. How good of a look did you get at the driver? A very good look. Okay. Can you describe, or did you? can you give us a physical description of what you remember? I remember the driver being uh, a light-skinned male black, approximately 30, mid-30s, mid to late 30s, um, had very facial hair and um, what I would describe as like dreadlocks, longer <coughs> hair, longer hair. 
What was the driver doing as he passed you? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Uh, as he was driving by, he uh, the window was open. He stuck his head and actually like the upper portion of his body out the driver's window and looked back behind him. The window you're talking about, which window is that? It would be the driver's window. And he actually stuck his head out the window. Correction, leading the witness. Overruled. He may answer. Correct. Uh, to the point where I briefly it crossed my mind he actually may fall out. That's how far out I perceived him to be. Where was the? What direction was the driver looking when he stuck his head out the window? He was looking behind him. From the direction that he had come from. Correct. Correct. What happened next? Um, at that point, when he when he looked back and then he kind of turned towards the front, uh, based on his body language, um, my heart kind of sank because I felt like what I thought could be maybe a medical emergency or something like that. To me, it clearly uh, I felt like it was an intentional act, so that obviously upset me a little bit. And um, then the driver, after he had leaned back, he turned forward, he grabbed the steering wheel, he pulled himself up off the seat and cranked the steering wheel to the right. So let the record reflect that the witness used both hands <coughs> at the 10 and 2 position to simulate the driver's hands on the steering wheel. Objection to that. Um, overrule, the record will reflect. <coughs> what happened as the driver cranked the steering wheel to the right? Unfortunately, when he did that, he essentially steered the vehicle across the parade route at a diagonal angle directly through um, a group of people that were walking with the Catholic, sorry, the, uh, Catholic community of Waukesha. Based on your memory of where those people were in the road and the SUV's path of travel, what would have happened if the SUV had simply maintained a straight path instead of veering to the right. Objection speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. I believe that there was a gap between where the Catholic community from Waukesha was standing and the, the parade um, spectators. So there should have been an open alleyway if he would have went straight. What happened next? Uh, when he, well, unfortunately, when he drove through that group, um, he struck many of them, a lot of them kind of bouncing off the hood, and um, some of them, unfortunately, actually ran over. I could see him kind of, people come out from underneath the vehicle. Did you see the vehicle at any point attempt to strike the word attempt? Did you at any point see the vehicle slow down? Objection. Speculative. Overruled. No, not at all. Did you see brake lights? Nope, none. Did you hear a horn honking? Nope, not at all. I'd like to put up for the witness only, please, exhibit number 133. Go ahead. This is a five second clip. It's cleared now. Uh, we're going to just play it for you once. Let me know if you recognize what you're looking at after you watch it, okay? Okay. Do you recognize that clip? Yes. What does it depict? Uh, that depicts the uh, red um, Ford Escape traveling through the closed parade route uh, from the east of Maple through that intersection with Maple on Main Street to the west, um, very close to where I was standing. Does that video accurately depict the events as you saw them unfold that day? Yes, it does. Move exhibit 133 into evidence and ask to publish. Um, overruled exhibit 133 is received, permission to publish is granted.
Could you just tell us which part of the screen does the SUV enter? Objection, leading the witness. It Overruled. It enters from the right side of the screen and progresses across to the, essentially kind of the left side of the screen. Okay, let's play this once then. Why was he playing so fast? <coughs> Is that normal speed? Um, Mr. Brooks, it's not your time to ask questions. You'll have an opportunity to ask those uh, previously, or er, uh, when. Speed. Could we put up for the witness only, please, exhibit number 132? So same concept here. I'm just going to play a few seconds for you. You let me know if you recognize the area depicted in the video and what happens as it plays. Let's keep going. you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Uh, it shows the same red Ford Escape SUV that I've been talking about come in from the right hand side of the screen and cross the left hand side of the screen, uh, striking at least one person there. And do you see the vehicle um, changing position in the road towards the end of that video? Can I see it again? Sure. For the record, how long is this clip? It is 11 seconds. Thank you. From my perspective, the vehicle travels straight through the video from right to left. Okay. Can we, is this an accurate? Uh, representation of what you saw that day? Yes. Move exhibit 132 into evidence and request permission to publish. Exhibit 132 is received, permission to publish is granted. Wait for the bailiff. I'd like to go back to the six second mark. Set it to 40%, please. And play from there. Go back to the six second mark. Objection. What's the relevancy of keep going back? I presume you have a question for the witness. I do, yep. All right, overall. Can you, uh, using a small, a little X again, can you draw on the screen the approximate area where you would have been standing at this time? Sure. I would have been somewhere down in that area. Okay. So the sidewalk running kind of up the middle of the screen here, that'll run into Maple? Yes. And then you would be on the other side of Maple? Yes. Um, overruled, his answer may stand. Just caution the state about leading questions. Thank you. Do you know what side of the street this camera is on, north or south? This uh, overruled, he asked if he knew. This camera would be on the south side of Main Street. And what direction is the camera facing? This <coughs> camera will be facing to the west. Okay. And can we 
back up a little bit, maybe to the three second mark. Yes. Okay, we're at the three second mark. Do you see the SUV that you've been talking about in the video right now? Ejection leading the witness. Overruled. Yes. Can you please circle it for us? Thank you. We can clear that. Now, paying attention to the tail lights, let's play again at 40% from that spot, three seconds. Did you see the the tail lights of the SUV doing in the last few seconds of that video? Objection. What's the relevancy? Um, oral he may answer. I didn't see the tail lights on as far as like brake lights. I didn't see any brake lights. But the uh, <coughs> the rear facing lights were illuminated in some way, correct? Objection. The witness. Sustained. Please. Tail lights, not brake lights. <coughs> Oh, please rephrase. Sure. Did you see any lights on the back of the vehicle? Yes. Which ones? Tail lights. And what did you see the tail lights doing in that portion of the video? Objection. The witness. Overruled. The tail lights were on. But the position of the vehicle, did you see that change? Objection. The witness. Overruled. I did not. Okay. You testified earlier that you thought there might be some type of mechanical issue. Did you maintain that opinion? No. Why not? Speculative. Overruled. Based on the body language that the driver had exhibited as he passed me, there was no panic, there was no um, distress, like he was trying to stop the vehicle. Um, in fact, he seemed to me like he was excited about what he was doing. Would please put up for the witness exhibit number 34, again for the witness only. Go ahead. 134, excuse me. Yep. Go ahead. 134. We're going to play, this is a 16 second clip, we're just going to play um, the first seven or eight seconds for you. Good. We played six seconds. Do you recognize that video? Do I recognize the vehicle in the video? Yes. Yes. Jason, that wasn't the question, Your Honor. Um, overruled. He may answer. The answer was yes. Yes. Okay. This is based on your recollection of the scene that day. This would be where in relation to where you were standing. That would be west of my location. What happens to Main Street as you go west of where you were standing? Objection. The witness. Overruled. Approximately a block to the west, the road takes a sharp turn to the left or south. You testified earlier that the driver's window was down when it passed you. Is that correct? Yes. Does this video accurately depict uh, how the SUV looked, including that window? At the time you saw it? Objection. Speculative. The window was open. Um, overruled. He may answer. He's testifying about what he recalled, not what someone else thought. Go ahead. Yes. I move exhibit 134 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. Hearsay. The objections overruled. Exhibit 134 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Play this once at full speed.
the video that we just played, Exhibit 134, that's how you recall seeing the video that day, the vehicle that day? Yes. Now if we could put up for the witness only Exhibit number 9, please. Do you recognize this exhibit? Yes. What is it? That's the uh, red SUV that I saw on the parade that day. Um, the damage done, the pics in the front of the vehicle is consistent with what I saw. The driver's window is open like I saw. And that's the uh, driver that I saw driving the vehicle that day. This exhibit 9 appeared to be a screenshot from the video that we just saw, Exhibit 134? Yes. I move Exhibit 9 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. Speculative. Exhibit 9 is received. Permission to publish is granted. What did you do after the SUV drove out of your field of view? I uh, checked on my family. They were physically unharmed. Um, so then I went into the road to see how I can help people. Did you? Yes. Who? Um, stepped out into the road. I looked to my left and to my right in each direction. I would estimate probably 12 to 15 people in each direction that were lying in the road in various positions. Um, I just walked up to the first people that I saw to my west, which would have been uh, people that were with the uh, Catholic community of Waukesha. And did you uh, attempt to render any medical aid to anybody in that group? Yes. Can you describe that? Um, so I, it happened upon two people. Um, one was an adult male, um, and then one was a small child, probably 8 to 11. Um, the adult male was conscious, was lying on his side, um, I, think, I believe it was the right side of his head on the ground. Um, he complained that he couldn't move his legs. Um, and then the young girl uh, was unconscious. She was lying on her stomach face down with her head tucked essentially down underneath her, like onto her chest essentially. The adult male that you described, did he provide you with a first name? Yes, he did. What was that? Jason. The girl that you mentioned, uh, did you ever learn her name? I have an idea who it is now. I did not learn it that day, though. Okay. Uh, what happened as you came upon that girl with her head tucked down into her chest? Um, I believe there was at least one other good Samaritan that had come down to assist her. Um, she was not, like I said, she was not conscious. Um, she was breathing, but um, the breaths were more like snoring. I recognize that they were, she was not getting good quality breaths. Could be characterized as agonal breathing, possibly, but she was not breathing normally. What did you do? Um, I told the uh, other Good Samaritan that we needed to get her in a better position uh, so she could get adequate breaths because where she was, she was not. Um, at first, the person was a little reluctant because they didn't want to hurt her more by moving her. Um, but I convinced them that she's not breathing appropriately right now. We have to move her carefully so that she can have an opportunity to breathe. So did you? Yes. Did you help anybody else with uh, the group that you've identified as the Catholic communities? Objection. Answered. Overruled. 
eventually there were several people that came and helped the young girl um, with various levels of medical training. I think one was like a retired military medic and there was a one, at least one nurse. So they were helping her to the point where I really could not provide any additional aid. So I kind of walked around to see if there was anybody else I could help. Was there? Yes, there was many people at that point. Did you help anybody else? Yes. Who? Um, I actually ran into uh, an officer who was also off duty from Franklin that I recognized. I didn't attend the event with him, but I ran into him. Um, we worked together then to help at least one other person um, into the back of a sheriff's squad that had come on onto the parade route to try to help get people to area hospitals. What type of vehicle was that? Um, it was a... Um, there's been an objection. It's not speculative. Sorry. The witness may answer. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it was a marked uh, Waukesha County Sheriff's uh, SUV. Okay. Did, what happened next? Um, by that time, there was a lot of medical equipment that was arriving on scene. I know there was a long board that we tried putting some of the victims on. Um, but the longboard wouldn't fit in the back of the uh, SUV because uh, it's a it's a hard seat, and we it just wouldn't fit in there. Um, so we ended up using like a makeshift stretcher out of a blanket, and then we carried one of the victims into the back of the uh, sheriff SUV, and then um, the officer who was with me from Franklin. He actually rode with her in the back, or the female victim, uh, and went to a area hospital. Do you recall the first name of that female victim? I believe it was Marisol. M-A-R-I-S-O-L. Objection, legal meaning. It's a clarification. Legal oh, overruled. Yes. Did you eventually leave the downtown Waukesha area? Yeah, approximately 5.30 after all the, the victims that had been lying in the road were taken care of. There was nothing left for me to do at that point. Thank you. I have no further questions. Any questions for this witness, sir? Yeah. That's a yes? Yes. All right, go ahead. Uh, are you, would you happen to be on duty today, right now, if you weren't testifying? <laughs> yes. And so right now, you, would it be fair to say that you are on the clock? Yes. So on the clock, would, would it be fair to say that you're getting paid right now? Yes. Would that be uh, for your testimony or just because you would be on the clock otherwise? These would be my normal work hours right now. So you're being paid to testify right now as we speak. Objection. Grounds. Asked and answered. Grounds. Um, he may answer. Yes. Any idea why you would be getting paid to testify? Because these are my normal work hours. This is when I'm working and I've been subpoenaed by the state to be here. So the state's paying you to testify? The city of Franklin is paying me. To testify? These are my normal work hours. So testifying in uh, open court is uh, part of your duties as an officer? Yes. So you've done this more than just this time then, that, would that be fair to say? Yes. And each time you were paid to do so? Yes. You, you may mention to the state of Wisconsin. Um, is that who you were subpoenaed by? Yes. Do you recall by whom? No. You you were in fact subpoenaed though. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you don't recall by whom the subpoena was delivered to you? Did the name on the subpoena? No. So would it be fair to say that upon being subpoenaed, you, you were in touch with the state of Wisconsin? 
specifically the Waukesha County DA's office. Do you recall who those interactions were with? Not specifically. So it'd be fair to say you, you had an interaction with the uh, <coughs> Waukesha County District's Attorney's Office, but don't recall who you spoke with. I spoke with a group of people from the DA's office. Do you remember <coughs> anyone by name? One, one of the people was the, um, the gentleman at the DA at the table. That the record reflect that uh, the witness made a hand gesture towards the prosecution table and identified attorney which out? Objection. The record will so reflect. So you knew that it, it was a strong possibility that you would be called to testify then, I'm assuming. That would be fair to say? Yes. Did you uh, seek to testify in any way? I don't understand the question. Were you, were you actively seeking to testify? Like, did you, on your end, did you reach out and volunteer testimony? After the incident, I did complete a report of what I saw that day and gave it to the Waukesha uh, Police Department. So after, after that uh, report that you submitted, um, you didn't follow up on what was happening in, in, in uh, the matter at, at that point? No. So it would be fair to say uh, after you gave the report on the incident, you just went back to work and continued your normal duties. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Did you follow much in the aftermath of the, the matter at that point after you submitted your report? Not really. Don't recall seeing any news reports related to the incident? I may have saw some. <laughs> you made reference at one point to um, Well, let me back up. Was today the first time you ever saw those uh, exhibits, the videos and steel frame photo? No. So you've seen that before today? Yes. You recall how many times? I believe probably one, once a piece. Um, do you recall who you were shown them by? The, um, the, the yes, same table, yeah. Same attorney? Yes. Let the record also reflect that, again, he's made a right hand gesture to the prosecution table and identified as attorney with child. Again. No objection. Record will so reflect. And do you recall around what, what date that was? What, was it recently? Was it some time ago? It was recently. And what, what would you define as recently? A few weeks? A few days? A month? A few weeks. And um, exhibit, I want to say it was 133, or maybe 132. You recall seeing the uh, vehicle that you saw that day going through the parade route. Would that be fair to say? Could I see the exhibit? I'm not sure which one specifically you're referring to. Uh, let's let's try exhibit 132, and then maybe. Would the state put that up, please. Yep. For the witness only, or for everyone? For everyone. All right, go ahead. Uh, I don't have it on my screen. It takes a moment. Okay, you should have yeah. it now. Let me, jurors, yes. let me know when you have it in the jury. I, I have it. I have it now. No, I need the jurors to let me know when they get it, since there's a more of a delay to the jury box and those monitors. Thank you. It's on in the jury box. 
Go ahead. Um, you made reference when when shown this exhibit, you made reference to be to be in position around like right in that area. Would that be fair to say? Yes. If you could play the video from, I don't know, maybe starting at around five seconds. Give me a second, I need to clear the annotation. You don't want to capture them anyway, do you? Oh, no, not good. All right. Can you, can you play it? Did you see the vehicle pass the position where you were standing in that exhibit? Yes. You made reference to the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the driver's side window and I think your words were you 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 were concerned that the driver may fall out of the vehicle do you recall saying that yes is it fair to say from that exhibit video that the driver of that vehicle is not hanging out of the window in that portion of the video, he is not hanging out the window. So what? So what portion? Let me back up. In any of the exhibits that you were shown, does any of them depict the driver hanging out of the window, on the verge of falling out? No. So at. What position were you in when you observed what you said as the driver hanging out of the window and you being concerned that possibly they would fall out? And where, where were you positioned at at that time? I would have been standing on the south side of Main Street, just west of Maple, by a few feet. Do you know of any reason why the, the exhibits are not depicting what you say you saw? That portion of the video only co covers from a distance where I was. It would have been the very tail end of that when it's going to the west. That video was probably from several hundred feet to the east of where I am. So Several hundred feet? How, how would you estimate that distance? Just... A, I know where that video is taken from and where I was standing. That's, that's an estimate of about how far. And you know that for sure? It's an estimate. So it would be fair to say you don't know for sure. Objection. Grounds. Sustain. Grounds for sustain, Your Honor? Argumentative. Sustained as to the form of the question. Please rephrase it. Would it be fair to say that in the exhibit that was just shown that from the position that you said that you would have been positioned at, would it be fair to say that the vehicle passed that position pretty quickly? Yes. So how were you able to get a look at the driver if it passed your position quickly and we can see lots of people standing in that position? When the vehicle passed by me, it was, the vehicle at that point in time was a threat to me and my family. So I was very focused on what was going on very focused and it passed directly in front of me about 10 feet away so all my attention was directly on that vehicle that's how i noticed that and you saying it passed 10 feet 10 feet in front of you approximately yes does this uh exhibit that was just shown depict what you are saying now that it passed 10 feet in front of you yes so can we pull that back up? Sure. It'll be shown to everyone? Yes. And if the jurors would let me know when it's on the screens in the jury box, please. Go ahead. Jury you want to play? They, they have it. Yes, they confirm. Do you uh, want it played from a certain well, spot? I, I'll get to that. Just so we're clear for the record and for the jury. Your position would be somewhere in here as you testified. Would that be fair to say? Correct. 
but can we put an X down? Hold on, he was oh. let him finish. He was interrupted. Okay, okay. Give, given the angle of this, it's very hard for me to show precisely where I am. It's a little, it's, if I can draw an X, I'm trying to draw it as far, to use your finger. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Like as far down here as possible. It, it's not right, it's not like any of these people here. It's actually, because this, this is still, all this video here is still on the east side of Maple. I am on the west side of Maple. So when I put an X here, I am essentially, I'm going to call it way down there, several hundred feet. I'm not any of these people pictured. Does that make sense? Um, no, it actually doesn't, but I was referring, so I probably had it a little coming this way, so by what you're saying, you would have been approximately in this area. Would that be fair to say? Uh, yeah. Object to the annotation. The witness drew twice now where he was, and I think adequately explained it. Ground. Um, I'm going to sustain the objection and uh, direct Mr. Brooks to have the witness put where the area that he was in. Okay. So we'll clear the annotation and go ahead. You can do that, sir. Okay, that would be. Now, did you mean to put that arrow? I did not mean to put that arrow there. Let's clear it again. We'll have you do it. I know it's a touchy screen, so do it again. So you and your family were approximately in the area of where you drew the X. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be also be fair to say that there are quite a few people in that area? Yes. Would it be fair to say that you can see, I guess it would be some type of lights from the vehicle that passed, would that be fair to say? Yes. And you estimate that where you can see those lights and where you would have positioned that is 10 feet. Can you re repeat the question? <clears throat> would you say that where you can see those lights at that, we, that you just said that you can see and the position that you drew yourself to be positioned in, you would estimate that that's 10 feet? Yes. I'll object and move to strike. I think this is a misleading question. We're at the beginning of the video. Those taillights are not the vehicle in question. Where did the taillights come from then? Um, a different vehicle. Oh. So would it be fair to say that Hold on, there's been an objection. There's been an objection. I believe the question mischaracterized the evidence. So strike the question, strike his response. Please rephrase. If you want to watch the video again to establish what you're asking, that would be fine. Before I play, do you recall there being any other vehicles? Positioned by where you were standing at with your family. Hold on, are you talking about at the time that we're seeing at, this? At, or? at the time that, that we're looking at right now, do you recall any other vehicles being present, positioned where you were standing with your family? I believe there was a vehicle to my left, which would have been immediately to my left was the group that was walking with the Catholic community of Waukesha. And just to the west of them was some sort of vehicle that was participating in the parade. So it had been a little bit further west. Yes. From from your recollection, would you say that that was the vehicle that you said would have been positioned a little further west? Sir, do you mean the vehicle in the photo? In yes, the, the vehicle video? that. Thank you. The vehicle in the city. I'm sorry. That's okay. I just want to make sure that we all understand. Okay. It's possible that's the vehicle. But you don't know for sure? No.
can you uh, play a little bit of it? I, I'll tell you when to pause. Can we bring the X off? We can. And we will. Go ahead and play. Pause. Would it be fair to say that it looks like the vehicle that's traveling with, with direction, would that be west? Which, which vehicle are you referring to? Uh, the, the, the vehicle that just drove through the middle of the screen. Yes. For Would it record, be fair? Hold on. For the record, your the video was paused at four seconds. Go ahead. Does the vehicle appear to be in the middle of the street? Would that be fair to say? At that point, yes. And would you estimate the middle of the street to be 10 feet from where you were positioned at, at the time? No, it would be a little further than that. And with all the people in that general vicinity, would that in any way be hard for you to focus on if you could actually see who was driving the vehicle? No, when I gave the description, the vehicle was right in front of me and there was nobody in my way. Do you see yourself? Can you, did your position, well rather, did your position move closer to the vehicle as we can see that it's in the middle of the street and you just testified to that? Did you move closer to the vehicle or did you move back from the vehicle? What did you do at that point when you noticed that the vehicle was approaching your position? It happened very quickly. I don't know that I moved in any direction when the vehicle came by. So to your recollection, you pretty much stayed where you were at? Yes, it happened very quickly. So it would be fair to say that it was... Well, let me back up. What, what will you define as very quickly? A few seconds? Yes. And in the few seconds you were able to see the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the window and almost falling in and, and doing all that in just a few seconds? Yes. And you also made uh, mention to the driver of the vehicle looking behind them. Do you recall saying that? Yes. So, in your recollection, you, you witnessed the driver hanging out of the driver's side window, being concerned that they would possibly fall out of the vehicle and looking back and continuing to drive in a straight line, all in a few seconds. Can you repeat that question? <coughs> you were able to see, because you testified that everything happened in very quickly, and then you defined that as being a few seconds. Would that be fair to say that that's what you just testified to? Yes. So what I'm asking is, in those few seconds, you were able to see, from your recollection, you were able to see the driver of the vehicle hanging out of the vehicle, you being concerned that the driver would possibly fall from the vehicle, notice that the driver was looking back and continuing to drive in a straight line. You witnessed all this in a few seconds. I would not say continue to drive in a straight line. All the rest of that, yes. You, you witnessed all that in a few seconds? Yes. Oh yeah, we we done with the video. I'm Thank sorry. You. Just for we clear, just so we're clear for the record, the exhibit that we just watched, the driver of the said vehicle is not hanging out of the window. Would that be fair to say? Correct.
you made a uh, reference to the make and model of the vehicle. How you, how were you able to determine that in just a few seconds? Given my job, I, I know different makes and models of vehicles, so I'm positive on the make and model. So would you would you know the make and model of pretty much any vehicle that would pass you on a on a street? Most, yes. Most, but but not all. Some of the newer vehicles look very similar. Some might be a little difficult, but I'm very confident in that vehicle description. You were able to determine that in a few seconds? Yes. You may mention to some mechanical problems. You believe that there may have been some uh, mechanical problems. How were you able to come to that determination? That was my initial concern because of the noise that the engine was making. It wasn't a normal engine noise. The RPMs were revving much higher than normal. Um, can you explain to the jury what, what do you mean by that, the, the RPMs? How, how that has any bearing on the engine? Sounds very, very high pitched. Um, this is very different than a normal vehicle driving down the road. Very, very high pitched. It would get your attention. And so, upon hearing that, from your recollection, you thought because of that sound that there had to be some mechanical problems going on with the engine. I thought that there could be. But it was your first initial thought, correct? Correct. And you were able to to hear that sound and come to a conclusion that possibly there were mechanical issues all in a few seconds. A lot runs through your mind at that point in time, yes. And would it be fair to say because depicting from the exhibit that there were quite a few people in that general area you were able to to hear this engine over all the noise and chaos that was going on at that at that time yes absolutely and you can hear the engine clear over all those people yes would it be fair to say that there were hundreds even thousands of people present at the parade that day hundreds for sure in my area sure in your general area hundreds yes would it be fair to say that hundreds of people can get pretty loud? Yes. Um, you stated that, I can't remember what, what side of the, the road you said it would be, but you made reference to a to an open alleyway? Do you recall saying that? No. Do you recall if you were uh, positioned by any cross streets? Yes, there was an intersection just to my right with Maple Avenue. Uh, do you recall if it was barricaded at the time? I believe it was, but I couldn't say for sure. Do you recall if any law enforcement were was stationed at that barricade? I don't recall. So it would be fair to say you don't recall if there could have been an exit out of the parade route at that time? I don't recall. In any of the uh, exhibits that you were shown, uh, and not the not the steel frames, but the the, the videos 132, 133, and I think it was 134. Did you see yourself in any of those videos? I did not. Did you see your family members in any one of those videos? I did not. Back up real, really quick to the um, mechanical issue again. You you may mention to uh, sounding like the engine was sputtering. Do you recall that? Yes. 
Uh, can you define to the jury what you mean by stuttering? Uh, sputtering? I heard noises that sounded like a, almost like a popping, which at the time I didn't know what was. I thought it was possibly mechanical related. In retrospect, it may have been impacts of the vehicle hitting things. I don't know. I don't know which it was. It would be fair to say that based on what you testified to earlier about the RPMs and um, you knowing that that would have something to do with uh, the engine being louder, high pitched, I think it was the, was what you said. It would be fair. Do you, do you think it would be fair to say that if that is pursuant to the actual engine, how could it? How could that have anything to do with something being struck? If that's engine, that's inside of the vehicle. Can you repeat the question? I'm not sure what the specific question was. The mechanical issues that you are describing was pretty much geared towards engine trouble. Would that be fair to say? A sputtering engine, it high was, pitch. It was very high pitched, so it, it could be a, a mechanical thing, or it could be the engine or the transmission being like in the wrong gear, so that it's sounding much higher. From from your from your line of work, obviously you've been doing it for a very long time. <coughs> uh, engine or trans transmission. Uh, Possibly uh, the vehicle being in the wrong gear, as you just said. Could that at any time cause someone who's driving the vehicle to lose control of the vehicle? I guess it could. Do you know for sure, or is, there, or is that just a guess? That's just a guess. So you don't know for sure if that would cause... If, if the driver may have been stuck in the wrong gear, you're not sure if that would have caused them maybe to lose control of the vehicle at that point in time? It could, I, I don't know. From the, uh, well, let me back up. From your recollection, do you recall there being any tents to the vehicle, like tinted windows or anything? I don't recall. <clears throat> Can we pull up uh, Exhibit 9? Um, can we, how do you show it to everybody? Do you say publish? Yeah, it's on. <laughs> I'm sorry. Publish, yes. It may, and it is. Jury will let me know when it's in the jury box, please. Would it be fair to say from this still shot depiction that there are, in fact, tinted windows of the vehicle that you identify? It does appear that the windows in the back are tinted. So you don't see any tinted windows on the side, too? Yes. When I mean back, I mean driver's door back. Uh, so, I, so, I apologize. So. I, I didn't know what you meant by that. Okay. Back driver's side window and the window, the immediate window after that as well. Would it be fair to say that they're from this picture there are two tinted windows that you can visibly see. Would that be fair to say? Yes. You can take that down. In that Exhibit 9 steel frame, it would be also fair to say that the driver is not hanging out of the window at that point? That is fair to say. That is correct. To your recollection, do you know who uh, who may have took any of those uh, videos, not the still frames, but the videos that were shown? 
No. Were you injured in any way during the incident? No. Any of your family? No. Do you know if anyone uh, filed a claim in this incident? I don't, know, don't understand the question. Um, filed a claim like uh, seeking to be an injured party. Objection. Grounds. Sustained. Uh, working in law enforcement, um, have you at any point seen uh, the complaint in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Or rule team may answer if he's able. A complaint regarding this case? Yes. No. Do you know if there's a plaintiff in this case? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Plaintiff in the case? I sustain the objection. Okay, thank you. you don't have to answer. All right. Do you even know if there is a plaintiff in this matter? Same objection. Grounds. Sustained. Being in law enforcement for as long as you have, are you aware that there has to be an injured party to bring a claim? Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. Also misstates the law. In any of your uh, investigations dur during your career, were you ever made aware at any time that the state of Wisconsin can be a plaintiff in a matter? Objection, relevance. Sustained. And from your recollection, do you recall seeing any other occupants in the vehicle at, at the time? I don't remember seeing anyone in the vehicle other than the driver. Were you able to get a look inside of the vehicle? I could only see the driver. I couldn't tell you whether there was anyone else in the vehicle or not. So it would be fair to say that you're not sure? That would be fair. No further questions. Thank you. Any redirect? Yes, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, if we could bring 132 back up for the jury, and while we're waiting for their screens to come up, I do have some separate questions. Go ahead. Uh, you testified that you're getting paid today as you sit there, correct? That is correct. By the city of Franklin? Yes. Okay. State of Wisconsin is not cutting that check. The objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Objection is speculative. Um, overruled. You may answer. <coughs> Correct. It's just the city of Franklin's paying no one else. Do you get paid more money if there's a guilty verdict? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. It's not hearsay. You may answer. No. Okay. Direct your attention to Exhibit 132 on the screen. Uh, if we could jump ahead to maybe three seconds. and slow it down to about 40%. One last time, I'd like you to draw an X to depict where you and your family were standing approximately. Objection uh, answered numerous times already at this point. I'd like to preserve this as an exhibit. Go since ahead. He's done it so many times. Can we save that as exhibit 132A and I move that into evidence? Objection, relevancy. Didn't answer numerous times. 
Exhibit 132 is received. 132A. Sorry, 132A. Thank you. Objection. Overruled. We can see the red SUV uh, in the roadway on Main Street in this portion of the video. Is that right? Yes. Okay. At this point in the video, can you see the driver leaning his head or body out of the driver's window? No. Let's go frame by frame, please. And pause there. We've paused it at about four seconds. This is the approximate location uh, on cross-examination where you were asked about your position and whether or not you were 10 feet from the vehicle. Do you remember that line of questioning? Yes. When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this where it was on Main Street? Objection. Overall, you may answer. Speculative. It's clearly not 10 feet. It would. The juror will disregard the comment made by Mr. Brooks. Um, it's not testimony. The witness may answer. I don't think you seem to be called that name. Objection to that, for the record. Could you repeat the question one more time, please? When the vehicle was 10 feet away from you, is this, as it's depicted right now in the video, is this where the vehicle was at that time? Objection. Hearsay. Overruled. Grounds for the overrule, Your Honor. He may answer. The vehicle at this point would still be east of my location. Okay. So it hasn't... At this point in the video, it hasn't reached you and your family yet. That is correct. Let's go frame by frame a few more frames, please. And we'll pause there. Just for the record, it was not paused when you asked it to, so go ahead and get back to the spot. It should be at four. So looks like the video is at four seconds. Yep, we'll play from there. Um, and if you could just indicate, hold on, oh, what, what speed you're at. We're going frame by frame at this point. Thank you. Okay, we've paused at uh, five seconds. Is the vehicle now closer to the approximate location where it was near you and your family? Objection. Yep. Hearsay. Overruled. Yes. You described this video camera as being several hundred feet away from your location, is that right? Approximately. In your opinion, if the driver's body were hanging out the window at this point in the video, could we see it on the video? In my opinion, no. Okay. There was a question on cross-examination about uh, your use of the phrase open alleyway. So just to clarify, what, if anything, was between the group of the Catholic group and the south curb of Main Street as the SUV drove through that area? Objection leading. Overruled. I believe that there was nothing in that space. It would be an open space. And you testified that you saw the SUV veer from left to right. Is that correct? Objection. Speaking to you. Overruled. You may answer. That is correct. So I want to make sure that we're at about 40% speed here. This is still Exhibit 132. We're going to play from where we stopped, which is five seconds. In that last portion of the video, did you see the vehicle veer from left to right? Yes. Okay. 
In your description of a mechanical problem, you talked about um, the engine revving in what sounded like a high gear, is that right? Yes. And almost as though it were stuck in the wrong gear. Yes. You're not a mechanic, are you? No. Um, you testified that you thought it might be possible if a vehicle was stuck in the wrong gear that the driver could lose control. You remember saying that on cross-examination? Yes. Based on your limited knowledge of how vehicles work, if a, ve if a vehicle is stuck in the wrong gear, do you know if the brakes still work? Based on my knowledge, I would say yes, it sh they should still work. Your initial opinion that there may have been a mechanical problem, that changed at some point, didn't it? Yes. Speckly to you. Overruled. Yes. Why, why did that opinion change? Objection leading. Um, overruled, he may answer. It changed when I saw the driver and his body language. What was that body language? What did you see? Objection leading. Overruled. You may answer. I would describe them as being in an excited state, um, not in a state of panic. More, again, excited or almost happy about what was going on, not panicked or scared. Well, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, thank you, sir. You may step down. <coughs> Statement called its next witness. State calls Ralph Salyers. All right, sir, if you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the Record and spell each. Ralph Salyers III, R-A-L-P-H, last is S-A-L-Y-E-R-S. Thank you. Go ahead. Sir, how are you employed? The city of uh, Wauwatosa Police Department. What county is that in? It's in Milwaukee. Not Waukesha? Correct. Do you recall where you were on the afternoon of November 21st, 2021? Yes, I was at the Waukesha Christmas Parade. In downtown Waukesha? Yes. What were you doing there? I was uh, attending the parade uh, with my family. My daughters were walking in the parade with their dance team. Were you on duty? No. That was not the extreme dance team, was it? No, it was Liberty Dance. Okay. Did you watch them uh, go down the parade route and perform? Yes. Do you remember where you were standing when that happened? Yes, I was standing on the <laughs> southeast corner of Maple and Main. Okay. Do you know, are you familiar with the Curry Insurance Building? No. Okay. Do you remember any other uh, businesses or landmarks in that area? The corner where we, we were standing, there's a parking lot right there. It's like one of the only parking lots in the area. Did you leave the parade at some point? Yes, once my uh, daughter's teams, uh, the team passed by, we went to pick them up at the Cutler Park, which was the rallying area for the after the parade. Where is Cutler Park in relation to where you were observing the parade? Would be uh, about a block south and a block east. Okay. Are there any uh, public landmarks in that area other than the park itself? The, the library is right there. The Waukesha Library? Yes. What happened after you got to the Waukesha Library? Uh, we picked uh, the, my two girls up and uh, we were intending to go back and finish the parade, uh, but it was a little cold and windy and uh, we decided to head home. So what happened next? We were walking back. I had driven separately. I came later um, to the parade to surprise them. So I had driven separately. And uh, we walked back to the, high, the middle school parking lot where my wife had parked. My wife and her mother-in-law and my um, youngest daughter left with her. And then my older daughter and I continued to walk toward my vehicle. What happened as you were walking towards your vehicle? As we were walking south down Maple, uh, 
on the east side of the sidewalk, I uh, saw an SUV driving behind the houses on the west side of Maple, and uh, I just assumed it was driving in a alley or a, a driveway. Um, as I lost visual of the SUV, was driving behind houses, I heard a crash, which I am familiar with uh, vehicle crashes. It sounded like a vehicle crash. The vehicle then emerged a little bit further south from behind one of the residences there and drove down the driveway of that residence toward the street, toward my daughter and I. Um, and then what happened? I saw that the front end of the SUV was severely damaged and uh, put two and two together, thought the damage was from the crash I had just heard. Um, uh, so the vehicle came, so eastbound down the driveway toward the sidewalk. I was standing across the street from it, and then it came to a stop. Um, I saw the the driver of the vehicle exit the vehicle. Uh, he came around to the front of the vehicle, looked at it, and yelled, fuck, and uh, appeared to be panicked, went back and got items out of the driver's side of the vehicle, and then ran southbound. The vehicle that you're talking about, do you remember what color it was? Uh, it was a maroon Ford Escape. What direction was the front of the vehicle facing when it came to a stop? It was facing east. And where were you in relation to the vehicle and the street? I was directly across the street from it on the sidewalk. Were there any vehicles between you and the red SUV that you've described when you saw the driver get out? No. Were there any other obstructions between you and the vehicle as you saw the driver get up? No. Do you remember approximately how long in seconds or minutes you saw the driver um, as he was getting out and then leaving? It was just a few seconds, if I had to guess, 10 to 20. Okay. And you've already said it was across the street. Do you remember approximately how many feet it would have been between you and the driver? Rejection, Overruled. You may answer. Uh, if I had to guess, maybe 50 feet at most from one side of the street to the other, plus the <clears throat> length of the vehicle. Could you just could you describe the lighting conditions at that time in terms of sunlight and street lamps, if there were any? Objection. Yeah, it was, was uh, overruled. You may answer. It was pre-dusk, I would describe it as. <laughs> How would you describe the uh, the physical appearance of the driver? What he was wearing? And any other physical descriptors? Uh, well, he just looked to be kind of in a panic. Obviously, I just <coughs> thought he was involved in a crash. And uh, he was wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt and blue jeans. What about race? I would take his Um Overruled, he may answer. <coughs> I would have described him as a light-skinned African-American or possibly a Spanish <coughs> male. And you, uh, in fact, you prepared a, or excuse me, you gave a statement to a fellow officer shortly after this happened, the, den the next day, is that right? Yes. And that's the description you gave to that officer? Yes. You've seen uh, news reports about this case in the days or the time since November 21st, is that right? Yes. And you've seen photographs of Daryl Brooks in, in other contexts, is that correct? Objection. Yes. I do not consent to being called that name, nor do I know that individual. And it's Go ahead, you may answer the question. Speculative. It's not speculative. Clearly. Yes. The person you saw get out of the driver's seat of that SUV on November 21st, do you see that person in the courtroom today? Your yes. Objection is hearsay. How huh? he's speaking as a uh, first eye hand witness. Um, overruled. I believe he answered, but could you state it again? Yes, I see him. He's sitting at the defense table wearing a suit with a blue tie and a white surgical mask. And just to be thorough, uh, could we please have Mr. Brooks remove his mask for a moment? Please. Mr. Brooks, please remove your mask. Thank you. The record to reflect the mask has been How confident are you in your identification today? 100%. Is your identification in court today colored in any way by seeing pictures of Mr. Brooks uh, in other contexts? 
Objection, speculative. Um, overruled, he may answer. No. Can you describe the difference, if any, between Mr. Brooks's appearance today and his appearance on November 21st? Objection, hearsay, and speculative. Um, it's neither one of those things. The objection is overruled. The witness may answer. Objection is irrelevant. It is relevant. He may answer. Not if he identified me already, so he said. Mr. Brooks, please. The objection's been overruled. <coughs> the witness may answer. He's got very short hair right now, and he didn't then. What does it look like on November 21st? Objection. Overruled, you may answer. Brother Missy. Go ahead, you may answer, sir. He had longer hair. I'm going to ask that we put up for the witness only exhibit number 65, please. Go ahead. <coughs> Do you see a video on the screen in front of you? Yes. We're going to play a few moments from that video just to give you a chance to see if you recognize what's what's shown. <coughs> okay, that's good. We played seven seconds out of the total of 36 seconds on this. Do you recognize that video? Yes. What does it show? Uh, it shows me walking southbound on the east side sidewalk of Maple. Uh, just south of, <coughs> I think that's Prospect, um, walking my dog Elvis and walking with my oldest daughter Ava. Was that an accurate depiction of that scene as you saw it that day? Yes. Overruled. Yeah. Move, move exhibit. Answer. Yes. Thank you. Move exhibit 65 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 65 has received permission to publish as granted. Objection. Relevancy. <laughs> Overruled. This is 36 seconds. Uh, let's play it through one time at 100% speed, please. Back to the beginning and pause it at the beginning there. Do you see yourself at the beginning of this video? Yes. Could you circle yourself for us? That's a touch screen, just use your finger. Thank you. We can clear that. You're the only person walking a dog in this video, is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's play <coughs> and we'll pause it at another point. We'll pause there at four seconds. Uh, you mentioned prospect. Could you draw a line down prospect for us? Okay, so that's the only cross street we can see clearly in the video? Correct? Yes. And do you see any vehicles on prospect at this point? I see two. Could you uh, circle the yes. one with... Clearly more than two vehicles. On prospect. I'll, clear, I'll clarify. No, you said on prospect. He answered. His answer may stand. <coughs> where's Where's prospect? Where, where are you referring? He already drew a line. The witness would redraw the line for Mr. Brooks. Thank you. Go ahead. Do either of those vehicles have appearing to you today to have an inoperable headlight? Yes. Which one? If you could circle it, please. The it's leading. It's not leading. He may answer. Thank you. We can clear that. And we'll resume at four seconds, please. <coughs> Pause. Paused at 27 seconds. 
Do you see on the video right now the person you recall being the driver of that vehicle? Yes. Could you please circle that person for us? I'd like to mark and preserve this annotation as Exhibit 65A, please, and move it into evidence. Objection. You're saying. The objection is overruled. Exhibit 65A is received. Go ahead. Yes, please. The clothing worn by the person you just circled, does that match your memory of what the driver was wearing that day? Yes. Okay. And let's play from this point. 27 seconds. And we'll stop there. From the 27 second point to the end of the video, the person who you circled does that match your memory of what the driver did that day after he got out of the SUV? Yes. What did you do next? I attempted to call 911 to report a crash. If we could take the video down, please. Did you get through on the first call? No. What about the second? No. Third? No. Did you eventually get through? Fourth time. Objection hearsay. I'm sorry, I didn't um, hear the answer. Um, the objection is overruled. Could you please restate your answer, sir? I believe I got through on the fourth attempt. And that's when you reported what you saw? Yes. That's all I have. Thank you. Any questions on cross-exam for this witness? I do. Um, can we pull that uh, exhibit back up again? 65. And, and publish. 65 will be shown. Go ahead. And publish. Granted. Permission granted to publish. It's been received. Let me know, jurors, when 65 is in the jury box. It's up. Okay. <coughs> Okay, right as this right as this pause right now it is not playing to set zero. Would it be fair to say that to the I guess that would be my right of the screen, you can see a white looking SUV by the by the walkway where people would be able to cross the street. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And would it be fair to say that the side street that you lined as being prospect, I think you said it was, where the two do not enter signs are, that would be the side street you're referring to? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Would it be fair to say that from the position that you're in, approximately here, and the side street being here, and just so the record is clear, Mr. Brooks has annotated the uh, touch screen with a line uh, depicting the direction of prospect uh, intersecting with the street, the perpendicular street. I apologize, I don't remember the name. And then an X where. Prospect, you see? Prospect is the street uh, in the direction of the line, but there's a cross street there. Okay. But the X is uh, indicating where uh, this witness his dog and his daughter were are in the video. Go ahead. So from where you're positioned right here by the X, you can see down this street from the position you're in. No. So how were you able to see if a vehicle would be coming from this way from the position you're at? I didn't see the vehicle driving on Prospect. I saw it driving behind the houses through the yards. So you were able to see the vehicle behind houses? Between houses, behind You said houses. behind. You said behind. Right, through the yards, behind the houses. And you were able to see that from where you were? Yes. Can we take those marked lines and step down? Can you play it a little bit? I'll tell you when to pause. You just confirmed you want full speed? Uh, 
Yeah, re- I guess that would be regular speed. Whatever is the regular speed. Yes, please. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. Would it be fair to say from... Do you want to pause? Uh, no, not yet. Just you, you can let it play. I, I'll say I think it's 36 seconds, so... Would it be fair to say from... Well, hold on. The video's showing, so wait till it's done playing and then ask a question. Or have us pause where you want it paused. Pause. So let's pause that 18 seconds for the record. Would it be fair to say that in the 18 seconds shown to this point, you're pretty much just walking the dog, moving around, just walking normal. You you don't make any sudden moves to the left to look or you don't stop in your tracks or anything. You're just walking along. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you also made reference to hearing a crash. What point did you hear the crash? Sometime while a vehicle was driving behind the houses. Why didn't you immediately stop and stop in your tracks and say you just heard something? Why do you just keep moving as if you heard anything, nothing? I just turned my head to see if I could see anything and I didn't see anything. And so you just kept moving? Correct. So basically it was just like, oh, do 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 do, walking the dog. Yes. Can you play? Pause it. Would it be fair to say that another roughly eight seconds of play from 18 seconds to 26 seconds, still you didn't stop in your tracks, still you didn't turn to look at the other side of the street in any manner. You're continuing doing what you're doing. Is that fair to say? Yes. Why so nonchalant? When the vehicle emerged from the back of the house, I saw that it was damaged, and then in my mind, I knew what I had heard. With all respect, that wasn't the question. Why so nonchalant at that point? I didn't think it was uh, anything of great emergency at that point. I just figured that an intoxicated driver may have just struck another vehicle in the back of that alley, and now he was going to take off and run. And being a... a being in law enforcement, why would you not investigate that if you heard something crash? Why, being being an officer of the law, why would you not investigate that if you heard that? I was with my daughter, and I would in no way put her in harm's way. Well, I I would think it would be fair to say that you can't handle yourself. You you're obviously a law a, a, a officer of the law. You're trained to be able to handle yourself. Would it be fair to say that you could have invested, at least investigated the sound that you heard, the sound like a crash, at least? Objection. Grounds. Sustained. It's also a compound question. Please rephrase. So all these thoughts, maybe it was just a drunk driver and they're going to they're gonna run anyway. And all these thoughts, and that never piqued your interest to investigate? Sometimes being a good witness is the best thing to do. That's why I called 911 to report it immediately. Now, that, that's fair, but being an officer of the law, you're right there. Again. Objection. That's not a question. Also asked and answered. Also argumentative. Sustained as to the form of the question. What, you don't need to answer, sir. Next question, please. What if someone may have been hurt at that point? You don't think you would have an obligation to investigate if someone, someone may have been injured at that point? That's why I called 911. Can you play the rest of the video? We sure can. Go ahead. It did a weird little like motion thing. That's probably from the camera. I, I, I would guess. But in that entire in that entire video, is it fair to say that you did not reach for a phone and take out a phone? from your pockets or anything in any way? That I, can't, you to say? I, can't, I, I can't tell if I did from the video itself. I know. So when I did you make the call? At some point after you started running. Who was you? The defendant, the driver of the vehicle. So how, how long after you saw the driver of the vehicle did you make the 911 call? Within seconds, I believe. 
Is it fair to say that we don't see that on the video? The video is very small at that point. It's hard to Is see. it fair to say we don't see you do that on the video? Yes. Can we pull the video back up? Can you take it to 27 seconds and pause at 27? Maybe, maybe 28, I'm, I may be mistaken. Maybe just go one more second, maybe to 28. Or, you know what, no. Keep your pause right there. Would it be fair to say that you noticed the vehicle in this area right there? Yes. Can you remove the X? And... What do you see right there? I'm not, I don't understand. Do you see anything right there? An individual, uh, anything, do you see anything right there? It's Inside hard to tell from that picture what I can see. Can you move it, can we blow it up a little bit or move it closer? Just a little bit? I don't know that it can be zoomed in. Does that can state it, have that capability? In? So we can zoom in as long as the defense is okay with dispensing with any technological foundation issues there. But we can zoom in. We have the ability to do that. Do you, would you like it zoomed in? What, what do you mean by not say, say that again? I'm sorry. We can zoom in if you want to. Can you zoom in just a little bit? Just, just a smidge. That's the extent of our zooming capabilities okay. with this software. No, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Can you see anything there? It looks like something white. I don't know if that's the driver. Looks like something white. Yes. It's light colored. White color what? It's light colored. Light colored? But you did say white. Is that fair to say that you just said white? I just did say white. Can we erase the circle? Zoom back out, take the, it's a, like a box there in the corner that's kind of throwing the whole exhibit off. Take it back to the regular. You testified earlier that you saw the driver uh, with a gray hoodie, as you referred to it. Do you recall saying that? Yes. Would, would I just circle right there? Would you, from your recollection, say that that was the driver you saw? I don't know what that is at this point. You don't, it's you just don't know? just a paused video. It could be a glare, it could be a person, I don't know. If you could play it again. Well, let's play it again. From the 27 mark? Stop right there. Okay. Yeah, no. from, from the 27 mark. The, I think it just played maybe, what, a second, half a second or something like that? Did you see that whatever you said you didn't know what it was, could have been a person, could have been something else. Did you see it move from the position that it was before? Yes. And you also identified that that was white, right? That's what you said, correct? I did say that. And would it be fair to say that you saw the driver in gray? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Take the circle off. You also stated that you were about 50 feet from the vehicle. Well, you added the vehicle in until you said maybe 50 feet and then depending on the length of the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And from where, from where you are here to here, because it would be fair to say we can't see a vehicle and the picture at that point, would that be fair to say? We can't see a vehicle that would be facing you because you said it was facing you. We can't see a vehicle, would that be fair to say? From the angle of vehicles obstructed, yes. So that would be 50 feet from, approximately 50 feet from X to X? Approximately. 
and you were able to see the driver and a description from where you from where you're standing now to where the other X is. Yes. And you were able to make out the race of the driver from where you were at. I guessed. You guessed. Raced. So you're not you're not for sh for certain. I wasn't for certain for certain at that time. So what conclusion were you coming to at that point? Just an educated guess or what? Can you explain further? How, how, what? Would it be fair to say that your guess could have been inaccurate? Could have been. And you also stated that you saw news reports and a description of the driver on the news. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you made reference to the driver's hair. Would that be fair to say? In my testimony, yes. You you brought up the hair is what I'm saying. You, you said long hair. Would that be fair to say? Yes. And you will be able to see hair if you describe the driver wearing a hoodie? Yes. You be able to see here and tell the length of the hair. If it's hanging out of the hoodie, yes. Well, you didn't. You didn't say. All fairness, you didn't say it was hanging out of the hoodie. You just referred to the hair. Yes. Is it? Hold on. There's been an objection. I believe the witness understood the question, so I'll overrule the objection. His answer may stand. Next question. Is it any possible way you could have gotten a description from the news reports instead of what you actually recall? No. And how did you determine that? In the report I gave, in my uh, statement, I described what I saw that day, not what I saw in the news. And you also described two different colors of dress. Once, once you said gray and one you said white. Would that be fair to say? I said that the item in the video appeared to be white. Did you not say that the item moved? As you say item, did you not say the item moved from where it was at? Yes. Would it be fair to say that there can be no movement to an item if it wasn't a, a, a person? Yes. A person that you described wearing white? On the video screen it appeared white. It appeared light colored or white. Would it be fair to say that you said white? That was your first? Yes. At any time in that video, could you see here? In the video? In the video. You can't see very much in the video. No. After making the 911 call, did you return back to the scene where you noticed the vehicle? Yes. And did you investigate at that point? Yes. So what changed from the point that you heard a crash, as you say, and then returning back to where you saw the vehicle? What changed between those times? As I was talking to the 911 dispatcher, I wanted to get give them better details about the vehicle, so I walked back over to so give at them the time. That. At the time that you initially made the 911 call, there were still details about what you saw that you were unsure sure of. Would that be fair to say? I believe they asked me what the license plate was, and I couldn't see it from where I was at, so I walked back over to give that to them. So you, you couldn't see the uh, the license plate of the vehicle from where you where you were at? There was no license plate on the front of the vehicle, so I could not see it. So you came back to investigate if there was a license plate that you can identify? Yes. Did you investigate what you may have heard the vehicle strike? No. 
Any reason why not? By that time, a large crowd had gathered and there were sirens. I could hear them in the distance and the police were, were responding rather quickly. So you didn't take the opportunity to see if anyone, from, the, from saying that you heard a, a loud crash, you didn't take the opportunity to investigate if anyone may, may have been hurt no. from that loud crash? I didn't know. Any reason why not? No reason. Any other details about the driver that you can recall as far as uh, further clothing? No, I thought at some point I saw Packer's logo on his clothing or something to that effect. Did you put that in your report? Yes. At any time, have you read or saw a complaint in this matter? No, just my report. Any other officers that came to the scene because you made reference to officers were, was responding by the time you came back to give more details to the dispatcher, more officers were arriving. Uh, do you recall if any, any one of those officers investigated the loud crash you heard? I'm unaware. But they would, they, it would be fair to say that they gave reports from what they observed when coming to the scene. Would that be fair to say? Yes. Do you recall any of them asking you a, a, a description of what you saw? I didn't speak to any officers on scene that day. Any reason why not? I just seeing, left. Seeing as, how, seeing as how that you made the initial 911 call, I, I'm sure the officers were probably responding by that time anyway, but seeing as how you made the 911 call, you didn't collaborate with the other officers to try to, you know, like piece together what you may have saw? I'll object to the characterization that that was the first 911 call. I didn't, I didn't say first, I said you made the initial 911 call. Initial means first, so sustained oh, as to the form of the question. Besides, uh, well, let me back up. After seeing the description on the news, did you say to yourself, that's the driver that I saw? I recognize the driver as the person I saw on TV and or, or social media. <coughs> Social media or the news? I don't recall, probably both. Both. Did that, did you report that? Uh, when I gave my statement, that's what I told them, yes. And did you report that description before or after you saw it on uh, the news or social media or both? I gave a statement the very next morning. I worked at 6 a.m. I reported it to my supervisor who contacted Waukesha investigators and had one of our detectives take a statement from me that morning. The statement that I gave them was from my experience at the scene, not from what I saw on TV or social so, media. So it would be fair to say by that next morning you had already seen reports on the news or social media? Yeah, or yes. both? Yes. And your report was the next morning, so could it have been fair to say that that's where you got the description? No.
did you learn any additional information uh, that you don't recall having via social media or the news after you had already made your report? I don't understand the question. Did you learn any additional information after you had already given your report? Learn information about what? About uh, the description of the driver, what had happened at the parade, any anything. Well, originally I had no idea what had happened at the parade. I thought it was just I witnessed a hit and run crash. I had no clue what had happened at the parade. So you, you, you just said now you witnessed a hit and run crash, but you also said that you didn't investigate the crash that you heard. Correct. So how would you characterize, characterize it as a hit and run crash if you never investigate what you heard? Because well, I heard a crash and then the driver ran. Well, you also stated, to be fair, that you didn't investigate with the crash. So how was it any way to know what you were witnessing if you didn't investigate it? Because I heard a crash and I saw the driver run. So in my mind, I assumed that was a hit and run crash. So it was an assumption you didn't know? Yes. I heard a crash. I didn't see the crash. <clears throat> Correct. So would it be fair to say that the, from the assumption that there was a hit and run crash, as you say, <clears throat> the only way to know for sure where the crash came from would, would be to investigate it. Would that be fair to say? <clears throat> yes. And you stated for the record that you did not do that, correct? Yes. So why would you report it as a hit and run crash if you were not sure what it was? Well, based on my training experience as a crash investigator, that's what I thought it was. Did you talk to any uh, any of the people that, that lived in those houses to see if they had heard the same thing you heard? I spoke to uh, maybe a resident of the apartment or the house right there who just said that the vehicle didn't belong there. Did they report to you that they heard any crash? No, not that I recall. Did they report to you that they saw a driver? No. So as far as you can recall, you were the only one that heard the crash? As far as I know, yes. <coughs> no further questions. Any redirect? Yes, please, thank you. You testified that you didn't investigate the sound of this crash, correct? Yes. Were you off duty that day? Yes. When you're off duty, do you carry a police radio with you? Objection, that is uh, irrelevant. It's an officer of the law. Overruled, he may answer. No. So you, if you did get into a pickle, you wouldn't be able to call for backup, would you? Objection, the speculative still has a cell phone. It's not speculative. He may answer the question. Correct. Uh, your daughter, the one that we saw in Exhibit 65, I believe. 65? 65. Yeah. Um, is she a sworn law enforcement officer? Objection. Irrelevant. Overruled. He may answer. No. At the time you heard the crash but didn't investigate it, did you know that the vehicle that you saw had been involved in hitting dozens of people on Main Street minutes Object earlier? Objection. Uh, Acts during cross. Answer. Overruled. He may answer. I had no idea. 
when the driver got out, and just to clarify again, who, who was the driver? The defendant. Daryl Brooks? Daryl Brooks. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name. And Mr. Brooks, I'm sorry. I don't consent to being called that name. So noted. Next question, please. Did you see anybody else get out of the vehicle? No. When you went back to check the vehicle, was there anybody inside? No. Um, on this issue of the white clothing, can we please show for everybody uh, exhibit number 120, which has previously been published? Go ahead. You see exhibit number 120 on the screen in front of you? Yes. You see the person who appears to be behind the driver's wheel of the red SUV in that picture? Objection. What is the relevancy? Overruled. He may answer. Yes. How would you describe the color of the shirt that that person's wearing? Light gray or white. That's all I have for this witness. All right, thank you. You may step down. Uh, may this witness be excused from this opinion? He may. All right, I am going to excuse the jurors for a, and actually take a recess. It's a little bit later, but we'll take our mid for late morning break at this point, about 15 minutes or so. I'll rise for the jury, please. All right, we are in recess. Please be back in 15 minutes.
Thank you. You may be seated. There's no history on them because they're all blacked out. But when I click on that, it will take me to the amendment. But the Wisconsin one is yeah. for 1975. It's 200 pages long. And I've been digging through it. Yeah, okay. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we'll have the jury brought out, and uh, the state may call its next witness when the jury is out here. Go ahead. Your objection is noted for the record. I, I don't believe the audio is on. Your objection is noted for the record. I addressed that yesterday. I will not be addressing it again. Was I at least heard for the record? Because you just stated that the audio wasn't on. I heard it. Did the record hear it? Yes. So you heard me say the uh, subject matter jurisdiction hasn't been verified or proved yet? All right. And the statement calls next witness. State calls Officer Bryce Skolton. All right, Officer Skolton, if you would please make your way to the witness stand. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand. My clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help the God. I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. The first thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Uh, Bryce Skolton, spelled B-R-Y-C-E. Skolton is S-C-H-O-L-T-E-N. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Anyway. I'm a police officer for the city of Waukesha. How long have you been a Waukesha police officer? Uh, seven and a half years. What's your current assignment? Currently I'm a specialist assigned to the criminal investigations division. What about back in November of 2021? What was your assignment back then? I was a police officer. <laughs> Were you working as a police officer on November 21st of 2021? Yes, I was. Were you assigned to work at the Waukesha Christmas Parade? Yes, I was. Do you recall where you were posted during the parade? My assignment was traffic control at the intersection of Northwest Avenue and Wisconsin Avenue. Will you please put up for the jury exhibit number one, which has previously been published? Go ahead. Could you circle for us the intersection where you were posted uh, yes. on this map? Actually, it's a touch. Use your finger. Just use your finger. <laughs> I may want to take that away. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so you've circled the intersection of West Main Street and Wisconsin <coughs> Avenue, correct? Correct. What does the purple line on that map depict? The purple line is the uh, parade route for the Christmas parade. But then uh, what happens to the purple line at Main and Wisconsin? Uh, that is where the line stops. That is, I believe, where the vehicle left the parade route. The vehicles and the groups and the participants of the parade who were marching on the parade route, where did they go once they got to the intersection of Maine and Wisconsin? They continued down the parade route, which was eastbound on Wisconsin Avenue. And then after reaching uh, Maple Avenue, then they were to go southbound. 
and the library is near that intersection. Is that right? Correct. Traffic coming westbound, excuse me, eastbound on Wisconsin Avenue from the west. Were they able to get through the intersection where you were posted? No, I had traffic blocked off uh, where I circled there. You can barely see anymore, but uh, the red line, that is how I had barricades across that intersection. So all eastbound traffic on Wisconsin was forced to go southbound on Northwest Avenue. Okay, what about traffic approaching from the south on, um, what is it, West Avenue? Yes, yeah, so northbound traffic on Northwest Avenue could only go westbound on Wisconsin Avenue. Do you recall what you were wearing that day? Objection. Overall. Yes, I was wearing my uh, standard police uniform with external carrier and a police jacket. And on my outermost um, layer was a like neon uh, traffic vest. We could take this exhibit down, please. <coughs> what was that number again? One. Thank you. That's my thought. Were you uh, the only police officer stationed at that intersection? Yes, I was. Do you know approximately how far away the next closest officer would have been? I believe the next closest officer was approximately two blocks away. Did you have a police radio with you while you were standing in the intersection? Yes, I did. At some point, did you hear something on the radio that concerned you? Yes. Describe that for us. I heard, so the parade was on channel three, so that's what I was assigned to. Um, these radios also have the ability to scan other channels, so I was scanning channel one, which is what the road squads uh, were working on. At that time, I heard a call for service on channel one for uh, the road squads to be dispatched to, and it was some sort of domestic disturbance or fight in Frame Park, which was east of my location. Um, I heard squads responding to that um, from the south portion of the city and Northwest Avenue or West Avenue is one of the main thoroughfares um, in our city to get from the southern portion to the northern portion or at least to the downtown area. And I could hear squads coming from that area so I blocked traffic to allow the squads to get through and then uh, I just continued on with my parade duties. What happened next? Uh, after that, approximately a minute or so later, uh, I believe I started hearing uh, radio traffic on both Channel 3 and Channel 1. Um, I believe either a reserve officer or a community service officer on Channel 3 requested an ambulance somewhere on the eastern portion of the parade route. Um, I remember it was sort of towards the beginning of the parade. Uh, they were asking for an ambulance because someone had been hit. Then what happened? Uh, I believed that it was something stemming from the domestic or the fight because during that fight someone had fled on scene and someone had been flagged down who had reported this incident. So I believed that the hit was something to do with the physical altercation that had happened. Um, moments later, this was all, it was all sort of spun out of control very quickly. Um, radio traffic became more and more difficult as Channel 1 and Channel 3. So as officers on the road and officers and community service officers and reserve officers uh, were working the parade, everyone was starting to get on the radio and more and more people started calling for ambulances. As And then I could tell as people were calling for them, it was becoming, it was moving westbound on the parade route. What did you do as a result of hearing that information on the radio? Um, it was tough to piece all together. I didn't know exactly what was going on. Uh, I knew something was happening, but I didn't know exactly what. Uh, I have a collar mic, so my microphone was approximately right about here on my chest. I don't have an earpiece. That's just what I use. Um, so between list, trying to listen to the radio microphone and the parade, it was sort of hard to piece together. Um, but after a few minutes, I realized something was happening. I began walking away from my post, and I walked past my barricade sort of into the parade route. And as I did that, I was looking um, more to like northeast. Uh, I couldn't see that much of the parade because where West Main Street ends right there, it's got a hard turn to go southbound to Wisconsin. So I could only see approximately... I don't even know, maybe 100 yards or less uh, of the parade route. 
And at that point, that is when I started hearing more screams. And this time it wasn't just screams on my radio. It was screams like in my vicinity that I could hear. And at that moment, I saw a red blur come past the Wisconsin house westbound and uh, make a very hard braking maneuver to navigate the left-hand turn on West Main Street to go there. And let's put southbound. Exhibit one. Sorry, let's put yeah. exhibit one back up. As you're putting exhibit one back up, I just want to make a record of the hand gesture he made previously when testifying about, uh, I believe it was his radio microphone, he used his right hand, I would say about heart height, to indicate his, I believe he called it a lapel mic or uh, something to do with his radio and where he would hear from. Go ahead. Objection, I don't think he said lapel. I think he was just, I think he referred to the microphone just being here and not using the earpiece. That's just- um, Your objection you. is noted the state can seek clarification, okay. but the fact, um, I did my best to describe uh, the action of the officer on the stand. Go ahead. Thank you. Can we actually uh, zoom in on the bottom left corner of this map? You mentioned the Wisconsin house. Can you describe for us where that is? The Wisconsin house is actually this building right here that is tan. It's the farthest uh, building right before I guess on the left portion. You just put a little dot there. That should be the Wisconsin house. Okay, so the right as the main street curves to the left there. Correct. Right, you know? It is the, I believe it's the last building sort of on West Main Street right before the left turn. So if you were standing in the intersection of Wisconsin and Maine, the Wisconsin house is the building that would obstruct your view further east up Main Street? Correct. Um, there's a parking lot to the left as you look at the screen, um, and the vehicle's parked there, so I can't even see pretty much anything in front of uh, the Wisconsin House on Main Street from my location. We can take that back down, please. What happened as the red blur rounded the corner? I realized um, what was happening at that point. Uh, I recognize it was a red SUV and there was extreme uh, vehicle damage to it on the front. Uh, the hood was smashed up towards the windshield, uh, the front portion, the front bumpers, the fenders, everything was, um, it was extreme vehicle damage, like vehicle damage that you'd see at a traffic crash between two vehicles. Um, at that point, between all the screaming I heard, everyone calling for ambulances and help, and then realizing people hit, I knew it was now people hit by a vehicle. And I knew that those initial requests were so far eastbound on the parade, and now I'm at towards the end of the parade, or at least the end of the portion of Main Street. I knew that this vehicle had likely, and based on the speed of the vehicle, that the vehicle had ran through the entire parade route and likely severely injured people or killed people. And at that point, I thought it was a terror attack at the parade. What happened as the SUV continued southbound? Uh, as the vehicle navigated its turn to go southbound, it accelerated towards me. Um, that is when I knew I had to use deadly force to stop the threat. And as the vehicle was approaching me, I remembered making the decision that um, the easiest shot likely would have been through the windshield. However, I remembered the entire backdrop were just surrounded with kids and people. So I waited for the vehicle to pass me and tried to direct my rounds as most southern as I could because there were less people in that direction. Where were you standing in the intersection as the vehicle passed you? At this point, I had walked uh, northbound um, slightly, so I was, I believe, out, just out of the intersection at West and Wisconsin. So I was on, I believe, my shots. I was technically on Main Street at the time uh, when I began shooting. Using cardinal directions, can you describe for us which side of you the SUV passed? Objection, what is cardinal? Um, overruled, <clears throat> the witness may answer. The vehicle passed uh, to the east of me. 
What direction were you facing as it first started to pass you? I was facing north. So that would have been on your, the vehicle would have passed you on your right? Correct. Okay. How close did you come to the vehicle as it passed you? It was very close. Uh, I believe at the time, uh, I remember stepping to my left. It was so close I felt like I could touch the side of the vehicle. Could you see into the vehicle? Yes, I could. How many people could you see inside of the vehicle? I saw one person. Where was that person in the vehicle? That person was uh, the driver's seat of the vehicle. Did you get a good look at the driver? Yes, I did. Do you see the driver in the courtroom today? Yes, I do. Your Honor, I'd ask Mr. Brooks, please remove his mask for a moment. Thank you for doing that, Mr. Brooks. His mask is off. Can you identify the driver in the courtroom if you see him? Yes, the driver is seated at the defense wearing a uh, blue tie and blue shirt underneath his suit jacket. Does the record reflect that the witness has identified the defendant? The record will reflect the witness has identified the defendant as the driver of the <coughs> vehicle he saw on November 21. What happened after the vehicle passed you on your right? After the vehicle passed me on my right, I began um, firing at the driver of the vehicle. And as that happened, he uh, ran over the barricades and left, ultimately left the parade route and continued southbound on Northwest Avenue. West Avenue is how many blocks from Maple Avenue? <clears throat> One block. Oh, well. And uh, to what direction is west from Maple? West Avenue is one block to the west from Maple. I'd like to show for the witness only, please, exhibit number 57. Can we clear the annotations? You see a video on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. We're going to play a few moments uh, without any audio just to see if you <coughs> recognize this video, okay? Okay. We've played seven seconds for you. Do you recognize this video? Yes, I do. What does it show? This is the vehicle that was driven by Daryl Brooks on, uh, during the Christmas parade that drove past me and I shot at. Objection. Um, I don't consent to or being uh, called that name, or nor do I identify it. I'm here in third party. So Your objection is noted. Me. It's overruled. The witness has previously identified you. Go ahead. Stated for the record. Let me ask him a question. Does this video accurately depict the scene as you saw it that day? Yes, it does. Move exhibit 57 into evidence and request permission to publish. Exhibit 57 is received by the court and permission to publish is granted. This is a 19 second video. I'll wait for the bailiff to signal that the jury has it. Okay. Before we hit play, I'd like you, if you can, to point out the Wisconsin House for us. The Wisconsin House is this brown brick building here on the right that has the Golden Moments gentleman beer sign right here. Thank you. We can clear that. And we'll watch uh, the entirety of this clip with volume, please, at regular speed. <laughs> gunshots did you hear in that video? Three. Is that consistent with your memory of the event? Yes, it is. Can we pull that back up uh, at about the 10 second mark, please? Do you see yourself at the 10 second mark? Yes, I do. Can you circle yourself for us? 
you're the only person at this 10 second mark wearing a yellow vest. Correct. Okay, we can clear that please. Can we slow this down with no audio? Slow it down to about 50% please. And play from there. And we can pause it. We've stopped at 16 seconds. Does that portion of the video accurately, accurately reflect uh, what you did that day? That is correct. Okay. I'd like to show for the witness only, please, exhibit number 170. Go ahead. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What does it show? This shows the vehicle damage that I observed when I first saw the vehicle as it was coming towards me. This is the vehicle that was, again, driven the Christmas parade by <coughs> Daryl Brooks. Objection, I don't consent to being called that name again for the record <coughs> I'm here in third party. The for objection, the it's on the record. Does this appear to be a screenshot from the video we just watched, Exhibit 57? It does appear so. And again, this is then an accurate depiction of how the vehicle looked that day? That is correct. I move exhibit 170 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Well, let me see. Overruled. Exhibit 170 is received. Permission uh, to publish is granted. I would remind the jury once again that um, comments made by parties and lawyers um, are not evidence and should thus not be considered as such. Now I'd like to show for the witness only exhibit number 169, please. Go ahead. Do you recognize this photograph? Yes, I do. What is it? This is that same vehicle. Uh, it appears to be just moments after that first picture we just were shown. Does this appear to be a screenshot from the video in exhibit 57? Yes, it does. Is this an accurate depiction of how the vehicle and the driver looked to you that day? Yes. Move exhibit 169 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Exhibit 169 is received. Permission to publish is granted. Objection. Noted. Overruled. Now I'd like to show for the witness only, please. Hold on. Was that in the jury box? Okay, it was there. Thank you. I'm sorry, I didn't quite catch that earlier. All right, so next exhibit you may show to the witness. Exhibit 58, please. We're going to play a few seconds of this, give you a chance to see if you recognize it, okay? Okay. We've played seven seconds. Do you recognize this video? Yes, I do. What does it show? It shows uh, pretty much what the last video showed, just from a different uh, point of view from that same intersection. Is this an accurate video <laughs> depicting the events as you saw them on November 21st? Yes, it does. I'll move exhibit 58 into evidence and ask to publish with the caveat about the Comments on the right side of the screen, please. Objection. Exhibit 58 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The jury will disregard the comments that are on the right side of the exhibit. Those are not to be considered as evident. This is a 15 second clip. We'll play it once at regular speed with audio, please. We 
we see the barricades at the end of that clip, is that right? That is correct. And uh, do you recall what those are made out of? I believe they're made out of fiberglass or plastic. And what we saw in that video, again, that's inaccurate. <coughs> Does that match up with how you recall the incident? That is correct. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. All right. Any questions for this witness, sir? I do. Um, you stated uh, initially that you had heard uh, some radio calls about a, a possible uh, altercation at Frank Park. That is correct. Uh, do you recall <coughs> what the initial report of that was? My recollection of that was that there was a call for service is either a domestic or some sort of physical altercation along the riverfront in Frame Park and that uh, there was a male with a uh, armed with a knife and that he was fleeing from the area. So it was reported it was a possible knife involved and there was a male running from the scene? That is correct. And were you ever given any uh, further information about the male with the knife that was running from the scene? No. Any information that the male with a knife running from the scene was in a vehicle at any time? No. Do you know if any investigation was done uh, looking into that supposed fight at the park? <coughs> Yes. And what did you learn? I did not learn anything of it. I just know that squads were responding there to investigate it. I was not updated on their findings or what they had investigated. I just know that they were dispatched there for that investigation. Do you recall if there was ever a knife recovered or a, a suspect recovered in that supposed incident? Do you mean like how much later do I know like what I know at, now? At any time, at any time. Do you know if, if there was a, a suspect, I guess I would say apprehended or anything that was found with a knife to your knowledge? To my knowledge, I do not know if the suspect from that incident which was you uh was located you, you with say a knife. You, what do you mean you daryl brooks mean? i know you were the suspect in that incident and i know you were um taken into custody approximately 30 to 40 minutes later i do not know if you were armed when you were taken into custody i'll let the record uh reflect that i do not identify by that name nor do i know any individual by that name i'm here in third party the records and noted, although the jury will disregard the comments, they are not evidence in this case. Next question, please. At the time, you said, did you respond to that incident at the park? No. So how can you know who was involved with it if you didn't respond yourself? Because you stated at any time this investigation took a long time to complete. And from this investigation, we determined that you were the suspect in that investigation. You determined that? I did not, no. Okay. So basically, you're just going off what you were told because you just stated that you didn't make any determination nor did you investigate it would that be fair to say that's correct you also gave uh and when you were asked the question of um were there any other officers along the route or i don't know if that was referring to side exits or anything of that nature but 
I recall you stating that you, you gave an estimate stating that you you weren't sure where other officers were stationed, but you gave an approximate ex estimate. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. <laughs> and would that have been officers stationed at different cross streets? That is correct. Do you know if those cross streets were barricaded? I know that there were barricades across numerous intersections for the parade route. That's how we uh, shut down traffic in the downtown area for parades. So pretty much every side street is barricaded? I can't give you specifics on what uh, streets were barricaded, but yes, the vast majority of streets are barricaded to stop traffic for the parade route. Can you pull up Exhibit 1 and publish? The state would please do that. Thank you. Does the jury have it? Yes. Um, can you see? Well, I know you can. Can you see the? Uh, the red lines on this map that we're looking at? Yes. And what do those red lines constitute? Barricades. So would it be fair to say that there's a red line at every cross street that we can see on this map? That would be... Do you mean start, along the parade route? Start, or the along, the, along the parade route, starting at East Main Street, there's... A red mark. Oh, I didn't mean to put that uh, arrow. Can we clear that? I was trying to put like a little dot. <clears throat> Starting there, there's a red line there. There's two at Buckley. Hold on, just so the record is clear, he put a mark at the near the intersection of East Main and White Rock Avenue. So from that location to where? There's two at Buckley. Well, hold on. You're a testifying now. you got to ask a question. So the juror will disregard that. Are there, are there two at Buckley? Yes. Is there one at Martin Street? Yes. Is there one at... Is, is there two at Barstow Street? Yes. One at Gaspar? Yes. One at North Grand and one at West Broadway? There's two at West Broadway. Well, this is one is on the closer to where it says North Grant, and one is on the other side of the star right there. This is what I'm referring to. Okay. Yes, there are two right clear there. That? Please clear that, Madam Clerk. So there, there's two there. There's two at Clinton Street. Can you see those two? Yes. There's one at Maple Avenue. Can you see that one? Yes. And there's one at right here at West Avenue. Can you see that? Correct. Yes. So it would be fair to say that there's pretty much barriers at every single street from White Rock in East Main to West Main in West North West Avenue. Yes. Barricades at all those streets. Yes. Do you know if there were officers stationed at those barricades? Yes, this map shows, it appears, uh, where everyone was uh, for their assignments that day. So would it be fair to say if someone wanted to exit the parade route, they would essentially be blocked in by the officers and barricades? No. There are barricades at these streets we can see, would that be fair to say? No. So it's not fair to say that there's barricades at these streets? It's fair to say that there's barricades at the streets. So, essentially if someone was leaving the parade route, can they just go right through the barricades? Based on the previous videos that we just were shown. Not, not based on the previous vid videos. If someone was leaving 
the parade route? Can they just go down these streets that are barricaded? Can they just drive right out of there? Yes, the video show that. How when it's barricaded? As the video we sh were shown we're earlier, the, the vehicle we're went right through the barricade. Well, when you ask the question, you have to let him answer that he's giving you a reason. You asked him how. He's explaining it. There's plenty of ways to get off the parade route. You, you can stop um, after being given lawful orders by officers, and they could have directed you off the parade route in a safe manner. You could have stopped the vehicle at any point or you could have driven through plastic barricades like you did at Northwest Avenue, where I was located. So and yes, you, you can drive through the plastic who? barricades. Do you, you refer to as who? Daryl Brooks, you, the person that's talking. Do you? And how did you come to the conclusion of that name as you stated that you couldn't see past this building here, which you just, which you, <clears throat> said is the Wisconsin House, would that be fair to say? Well, that's a compound question, so I, you need to rephrase that, sir. You state, clear, clear this right there. Please? Is that a please? Clear, can you clear this uh, circle and arrow right here that's... Thank you, Madam Clerk. You stated that from where you were positioned that you couldn't see around that building. Did you, did you say that? Yes, I did. So it would be fair to say you also couldn't see what was happening along the parade route on Main Street. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So it would be also fair to say that everything that you knew up until that point came over the radio and you didn't have first-hand knowledge. That is correct. You also stated that after a few minutes of hearing these, I guess, radio reports, you said after a few minutes, you noticed something was going on. Do you recall from the reports how long this vehicle traveled along the parade route? An estimate, a estimate of the time that it traveled down the parade route? I do not know how long uh, the vehicle was on the parade route for. If I had to estimate, I would estimate approximately one to two and a half minutes, two minutes maybe. Would you would you say it's fair to say that that's relatively a short amount of time? I would agree with that. So what do you mean by after a few minutes, you noticed know something was going on? <coughs> Because after a few minutes, what I meant by that was the initial call for service at the boat launch um, or for that domestic fight in Frame Park. From that time frame, from when squads were responding to there to the time that um, I had shots fired, that is what I mean by a few minutes. So you have to take into account the, the time for squads responding to that call. I don't know uh, police protocol, so just asking. Mr. Brooks, please ask your next question. I'm, I'm getting to it. No, I, right, but I, I have to advise the jury to disregard the comment because it's not testimony. And you stated that well, let's, let's go to, uh, yeah, go ahead. You don't need, do you need that? We're going to turn it off. Yeah, you can, you can take that down. Sorry about that. All right, thank you. Uh, I believe it's Exhibit 57. We can pull up Exhibit 57. Can we bring it to about 
16 or 17 seconds. Bring it back a little bit. Uh, one more, one more second, if you could. There, can you pause it there? Would it be fair to say that those are barricades that are laying in the street there? Correct. Any idea why they were not standing up? Yes, I do. What would be the reason? It was very windy that day, so when they were standing up uh, how they normally are, they kept on blowing across the street. So we tilted them on their sides so they wouldn't get blown across the road, and they would still stay up there and block traffic. They would be able to block traffic by laying down? Yes, they serve the same purpose. But they would be able to block traffic by laying down? I guess I don't understand what your question is here. Would, would it be much more easier to see them if they were facing upright than laying down? I think the height difference between them laying down and uh, being upright is probably quite minuscule because as you see the legs that are now up in the air are approximately the same height as what the bar would be if they were standing the standing up how they normally are. And you come to that conclusion, conclusion how? Based on my training experience, after deploying barricades on numerous events and working several parades in my work history. So you would estimate that a barricade facing upright and a barricade laying down would be the same height? Approximately. Can you bring it back to 10, 10 seconds? From what we're looking at right now, it's a little hard to see. You can see the vehicle, you can see where you identified you, you were. But it's a little bit hard to see everything. Would that be fair to say? Because of the the person with the black coat and the gray hoodie and Nike black pants is directly in the middle of the screen? That's fair to say it's a little hard to see from this. Where it is paused now, yes. Yes, where, that's what I meant, where, where it's paused now. Yes. Um, it looks like you're... This would be you right here. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. It looks like you're firing your weapon right there. Would that be fair to say? I do not know if I have uh, pulled the trigger yet or not. I don't believe I have. I you were ready, ready to fire at that point. That's correct. Do you recall what you were aiming for? Yes, I do. Can you stay for the record and for the jury? You, Daryl Brooks. Again, you make reference to the you and the name. How did you come to that? Being Seeing as how you just testified to that you couldn't see anything before uh, what you called the Wisconsin House. Would that be fair to say that you testified to that? That's correct. And you also stated that you learned additional information later on. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So how could you determine at this time right now where we're looking at that you knew the suspect's name and the driver? Because you keep referring to you and then you saying the name, how did you how did you have that information at this point that that's paused right here that we're looking at? I didn't say at that time I knew your name. You referred to the name, did you not? That's correct. 
So how were you able to obtain the information about a name? I did not know your name at the time I shot at you. Who's the you you were referring to? Daryl Brooks. Again, you say a name that you haven't answered how you came to that information. Were you told this? Yes. By whom? I do not know who told me. Ultimately, I just know that throughout the course of the investigation, you, your name, you were arrested within 30 or 40 minutes, and you were identified as Daryl Brooks, who was the suspect in this incident. So you either had to hear that name from either a report that you heard or someone told you. How did you come to the conclusion of the name? I'm assuming someone at the police department told me your name. And you don't recall who that was? No. Even though you can cite the name so clearly and identify it and keep stressing it and stressing it, and you don't recall how you learned the information of the name? That is correct. So is it fair to say that you're just using the name based off what you're told and not what you were aware of? What are you asking me? Is it fair to say that you're identifying this name based off of what you told and not what you knew? I'm saying the name based on the fact that you are now, you were arrested for this incident. You were identified during this incident. And because of that investigation, that is how we know your name. Would it be fair to say, and obviously you said you've been uh, in law enforcement for seven and a half years, correct? Correct. I'm sure you've done a lot of investigations in that seven and a half years. Is that fair to say? Correct. So you do understand that during an, a police investigation, any suspect is innocent until proven guilty. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. And so with that knowledge, why are you so eminent about the name of the suspect that you just testified to not being aware of at the time, that you testified to, in fact, being told. I'm sorry, I'm confused by your question. You say it again. I think it was clear, but I'll say it again. Thank you. Well, I'll say it this way. You testified to not being aware of the suspect's name at the time. Correct. You also you also testified to being told of the name, correct? Correct. I don't I don't know how I came about your name. I would assume it was through the investigation at the police department. And were you in fact part of that investigation? No, I was not. So it would be fair to say that by you using a name, you would not be sure. How can you be sure? I'll object. Um, Ground. Argument. It's been asked. It's been answered. It's argumentative. The objection is sustained. Please ask your next question. When asked about uh, what you were aiming at when you fired, you didn't give a definitive answer. You were aiming for the driver? I felt like I gave a pretty definitive answer. My what? answer was you, Daryl You were Brooks. aiming for the driver? Yes. It's pretty definitive. I identified the person so I was shooting what, at. What part of the driver's body could you see when the vehicle passed you? When the vehicle was approaching me, I could see the silhouette of his uh, face and upper portion of his body. Can you describe what you mean by silhouette? The upper portion of a person's body, I would say, from maybe chest, shoulders, and head and face. 
You said silhouette, though. What What is a silhouette? The outer portions of what would be like your shoulder down, your arms to your chest. The silhouette would be the outer portion of it. That would be the upper half, not the silhouette. What do you mean by silhouette? Uh, object, the objection is sustained. It's Mr. Brooks is not asking a question. It was argumentative. Um, the jury would, can certainly decide fair? what that means, but would he's it, answered the question. Would it be fair to say that that would be equivalent to a profile? What do you mean by a profile? A profile would be sort of like a, like a side angle view. Would it be fair to say that a silhouette would be more of an outline that would be kind of similar to a profile? I don't know exactly what you're asking here, but I can tell you when the vehicle was driving towards me, I could see your face. And then as the vehicle drove to my right, yes, then I saw the side of your face. And so then, yes, as a vehicle passes you, you see different portions of the driver, I guess you could say. And so you aim towards what you can see? Correct. So that would be the upper part, as you say, the, you said the show, you made a, I think it was your left hand pointing to your right shoulder, a uh, shoulder and up silhouette, as you say? That is what I could see when you were driving at me. You asked me what I could see of you, and that is what I could see of you in the vehicle when you were approaching me. The question now, though, is, is that what you aim for? I was aiming at you, yes. At what you can see? I was aiming at you in the driver's seat, yes. Shoulder, as you pointed to, and up, correct? Would that be fair to say? Yes. Firing a weapon of your caliber, would any of those shots be kill shots? Yes. Would it be fair to say that firing a kill shot at anyone would terrify him? I'm sure being shot at is terrifying. Yes, it is. So it'd be fair to say you were shooting a kill? No. So would it be fair to say that judging based on what you see that you testify to a silhouette <coughs> from about here that you pointed to from the shoulder using your left hand you pointed at your right shoulder from here up and you just acknowledged that any one of those three shots could have been kill shots would it be fair to say that you were aiming to kill shooting to kill rather not aiming to kill but shooting to kill no. So, in your estimate, what do you think you would have hit if you just testified to saying that you aimed at the driver? What were you estimating to hit? Well, my intention was to shoot you in the upper portion of the body. However, my intention was not to kill you. My intention was to stop the threat, the threat that you were posing to everyone in the downtown area at the Christmas parade. You keep referring to the you again. Well, well that's not a question, so... By your estimation, acknowledging that those were kill shots, if you connected with any of those shots, is it possible the driver could have been killed? Yes. And would it be fair to say that that's deadly force? Yes. <coughs> Do you think it would have been possible to aim at the tire of the vehicle? No. Why not? Would, would, the, would shooting the tire of the vehicle not stop the vehicle? No, it would not have. So a blown tire would, to your estimation, 
a blown tire would not stop a vehicle from moving? No, it will not. So it would just, it'll just keep on, it won't even slow down? That is correct. I'm trained to stop the threat. You were the threat. The vehicle was not the, th the vehicle was the weapon in which you used. So that is why I shot at you. There's the you again. Pretty clever. Um, could you have, well, you, you testify that you're trying to stop the threat. And so would it be fair to say that that training constitutes shooting kill shots? Well, we are trained uh, in deadly force, and when we are presented with a deadly force incident, yes, we have to sometimes make that difficult decision and use deadly force. Have you ever used deadly force before that incident? Objection. Ground. <coughs> Sustained. You said you're trained to use deadly force. So would it be fair to say that any time you shoot your weapon, it would be deadly force? When it is directed at a person, yes. Were you injured in any way during the incident? <coughs> no, I was not. And at the time, being where you were posi positioned at, You've already testified that you could not see what was going on during the parade route from your <coughs> position. So, why did you feel the need at the time, not knowing the full extent of what was happening, to use deadly force? Because as I previously stated, based on the fact that the radio traffic for people screaming for ambulances and as uh, different officers were getting on the radio and it was progressively moving further and further westbound towards me on the parade route. Um, that, and then officers saying someone was hit, which I initially thought was a physical altercation, someone being hit, but it was a vehicle versus person hit. Um, based on that, the vehicle speed at which, yes, I could not see it uh, down Main Street. I only had a couple seconds at most until uh, the vehicle from where I saw it was to my location. So based on the amount of vehicle damage, I knew uh, the vehicle had been striking pedestrians in the roadway. And because of that, um, that's a deadly force incident. So that is why I deployed deadly force. So you said you knew, you knew what the vehicle had been. You knew, you, keep, you said it multiple times, you knew. Yes. How could you know if you could not see around the position that you were, were positioned in? How do you know that? Because based on the speed of a vehicle on a closed roadway during a parade and no, and people running out of the way so they did not get run over right in front of me, between all of those things, I knew what had just happened and that is why I had to take action. And you knew based on the radio reports? I would say everything that I had just previously described, all of that encompassing, yes, that led up to my decision making and to yes, now I knew what had happened. I did not know previous to that what was going on. I did not know there was a vehicle on the roadway until I saw it. And it all made sense and when I put everything together. When you saw it, by the time you saw it, as you said, it was a couple of seconds. So at that point, did you observe the vehicle strike anyone from the time that you saw it? No, I did not. I was focused on the vehicle, so I just remember that there were a ton of little kids and adults, uh, adults on the sidewalks. I knew there were a lot of children right in the roadway right there. And I remember seeing people like running, but I wasn't really paying attention to the people. I was just focused on the vehicle. Um, so it was really all I was focused on at that point. You weren't paying attention to any other people. You... That was not my primary focus. But you do recall that no one was struck from the time you saw the vehicle. Yes, after looking back, 
after videos later on throughout the investigation. No, 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 no. From what you saw, from what you observed with your own eyes. No, I can't recall ever seeing someone hit right in front of me. No, I do not recall that. Does the exhibit videos that you saw here today, does anyone get struck in those vi uh, videos that you saw today? No, not that I saw today. And you still made the decision to shoot to kill? That's correct. Actually, correction, I, I shot to stop the threat. If ultimately you would have been killed from that, that is a possible outcome. But you did testify that they were kill shots, did you not? Objection. Argument. Sustained. It's also been asked and answered in multiple ways. At Do this you point. recall what your shots hit? If anything? Uh, yes. Later on, uh, throughout the investigation, when I no, did at my the time, at the time. Not, not later on, at the time where you fired the shots. Mr. Brooks, you asked a question. He was attempting to answer it, so you have to let... I was trying to give him <laughs> clarification on what but I you mean. But you have to let him answer the question that you asked, and if you feel the need for follow-up, then you can do that, or ask a very specific question. But he's going to... He, I'm allowing him to answer. Um, he was interrupted. Go ahead. Um, I believe it was three days after the incident. That is when I gave my voluntary statement to Detective uh, Kirby and Detective Casey. And upon completion of that statement, I asked them if uh, they could share any information with me. And during that conversation, I was shown a picture of the vehicle and where my round struck the vehicle. You stated you asked them for any additional information that they can give you. Correct. So it would be fair to say at that time you, you still didn't have a lot of information. <coughs> would it be fair to say that? That is correct. I didn't know where my rounds had struck previous to that. Did you ask them in the, in the statement that you just testified to saying, you asked them if they can provide you with any more information? Did you at any time specifically ask about the shots that you fired when you requested if they could give you any more information? I do not remember the specifics of what questions I asked uh, in pertaining to what information they could share with me. I think it was sort of a generalization of what can you share with me at this point. So would it be fair to say at that point that there's a possibility that you did not know the name of the suspect, nor did you know if you had shot the suspect at that time? At that time, I knew I had not uh, shot the suspect because the night of the incident when he was taken into custody, um, it was relayed to me that uh, he was uninjured and he had not been struck by any of my rounds that were fired. You do recall just testifying to requesting more information from the detectives when you had the conversation with them. Is that correct? That is correct. <clears throat> And you said that you don't recall asking them about if your bullet struck someone. Is that correct? That is correct. So the day I met with Detective Kirby and Detective Casey, that was, I believe, two or three days after the incident, uh, Mr. Brooks was taken into custody the night of. So when I was still at the police department, I knew that he had not been struck. So. I think we're dealing with the questions I asked of the detectives. That was not the same night of the incident. I'm sure you asked. Uh, you didn't. You didn't say it, but you said you don't recall the information that you requested. Would that be fair to say? No, I don't recall specifically what questions I asked that the what. I don't know specifically what questions I asked of them a year ago. I just, I know it was a generalized, 
what information can you share with me at this point because I didn't know what was going on in the investigation or what leads they had or essentially what had happened after my involvement, I guess. So you didn't, it's, it would be fair to say there was a lot of information that you still was unsure about at that point. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. So if there was information that you're acknowledging that you had no knowledge of, which would be essentially the reason why you would ask if they can volunteer more information to you, then how would there be, how would there be any way of knowing if you struck the suspect? Objection. Grounds? It's sustained. It's a compound, confusing question for you to be And I also think it mischaracterizes the testimony. said you had you made a statement during your testimony that you had learned that the suspect was not injured do you recall you learned that information from I believe um, when I was back at the police department after the incident so after using deadly force you're ultimately removed from the scene um, when I was at the police department I was with a support officer and another detective and at that point, um, I was still answering questions for investigating officers for what I saw, what I knew, what I saw in the vehicle. And I believe Detective Stern um, was at our substation with uh, Daryl Brooks after taking him into custody. And I was shown um, a photo at that point. And um, I know I had asked if he sustain any injuries or if anyone else had sustained any injuries um, from my use of force. And at that point, I was not told that anyone had been struck by my gunfire. So you just said you asked if the suspect or if anyone else was struck by the gunfire. That is correct. So you weren't sure at that point? You weren't no, sure? I was. I was not certain at that point. It was... I can't describe it any more than it was just pure chaos. And at that point, I did not know if anyone else was injured for my rounds or um, up until I was confirmed that you were not injured. Um, at that point, no, I did not know if anyone was hurt until I was told that. So would it be fair to say that, and as you just stated, you were unsure if the suspect or anyone else was injured, would it be fair to say that there was a possibility because you did not know for certain? Objection. Ask Grounds? Sustain. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor? Asked and answered. Next question. After the vehicle passed you, did you observe it strike anyone? I did not. I did not observe it strike anyone after it passed me. Call who you? Well, I think you did. I, I think you said you um, gave your report to Officer Kirby. Is that is that correct? Detective Kirby. Yes. I'm sorry, Detective. Do you recall <laughs> telling Detective Kirby 
that you were unaware of a vehicle on the parade route and you were unaware of people being injured? Yes, I previously stated that. Were you able to make out a license plates when it, from the vehicle when he passed you? Uh, I later learned uh, that I must have, um, but I do not recall that. So from what you recall at the time that the vehicle was passing, you don't recall getting the license plate? At this time, I do not recall the license plate, but after... I shot at the vehicle. I then responded up Main Street and started triaging victims. And after doing that, um, I met with officers and I, because I couldn't get on the radio and uh, give out as much information as I wanted to. So when I spoke with other officers, that's when I explained to them that I was the one that had shot. It was not a suspect shooting, it was me. And that uh, the vehicle in question was a Red Four Escape. And I believe I was talking to Detective Casey. Uh, Specialist Moss, and I believe there might have been another officer there as well, and I must have provided a license plate to Detective Casey uh, during that debrief on scene. I did not know about that until about two days later when I gave my statement to Detective Kirby and <coughs> Detective Casey, uh, because that is when I was informed by Detective Casey that I had actually provided him a correct license plate, but I don't remember that. Any reason why you didn't mention the license place in your report? Because like I stated, I don't remember it. So it'd be fair to say if you don't remember it, then it's a possibility that you didn't get the license place number. I would say that if Detective Casey is telling me that I told him on scene during a traumatic incident that I provided him the license plate of the vehicle, I'd have to believe that Detective Casey is correct. There's many things that I, you do not remember during a traumatic incident, and I believe that's because your brain prevents you from remembering everything. So you would describe it as a traumatic incident that you do recall using deadly force and recalling what you was aim aiming for, but not the license place or anything else like that. That is correct. Would it be fair to say that because you describe it as a traumatic event, that there was a lot of things that you probably don't recall about the incident? I would, uh, I would agree with that. I would think that there's a lot of things um, when I became, uh, when I started going up West Main Street and started seeing the absolute destruction, I, I know there's things that I did and saw that I don't really remember and I don't really want to remember. Will one of those possibly be the suspect that you keep naming? No. And how did you come to the knowledge of the make and model of the vehicle when on the exhibit that was shown, you only had interaction with it for a few seconds? How were you able to make out the make and the model of the vehicle? Because that vehicle model has been out for quite some time and I'm halfway decent with vehicles and I readily recognize that it was a Ford Escape. 
So you've seen many Ford escapes? Yes. And you said uh, the model has been out for some time, so what do you mean by that? Do you mean it it's 2022 model, now, and that Ford model was approximately a 2008-ish to maybe a 2011, 2010-ish, so yeah, they've been out for over a decade. And how did you come to that knowledge of the estimate of the years that the model could have been? That would you agree that that's pretty difficult to know just off the bat? No. Would that be fair to say? No. So it would be pretty easy to tell the make and model in year of a vehicle just by looking at it. That is correct. So it would be fair to say if someone had a vehicle right here in front of you, you would be able to tell just by looking at it for a couple of seconds to make the model in the year. Depending on what vehicle it is, yeah, quite likely. I'm decent with vehicles. <coughs> what do you mean by decent? I can recognize many vehicles that are manufactured. Uh, part of being a police officer is dealing with vehicles. Um, we run a lot of vehicle registration plates. So when you match the registration to a vehicle on a response, you become very well accustomed to the many different vehicles that are manufactured. Did you at any time see the registration of the vehicle that passed you? Like I stated previous, I debriefed with Detective Casey during the incident, and he stated that I gave him a registration number, a registration plate for it. I do not recall giving him that uh, registration plate, but uh, Detective Casey informed me that I provided him a correct license plate for that vehicle. Would it be fair to say that a registration kit without, would it be fair to say that that automatically links to the, the make and model in the year of the car? Would it be fair to say that? That if you rent or if we're judging by the license plates, if you were conducting a stop and to do that you will have to run the license plates, would it be fair to say that, that all that information would come up in your computer when you run the license plate? That'd be fair to say. You had a lot of questions right there. So okay, let me let me back up then. So if you were if you were conducting a traffic stop, okay, and you pulled up the license plates of the vehicle that you were stopping, okay, with the information registered to that vehicle show in your computer. If the license plate is actually accurate and current to that actual vehicle, yes. Just so we're clear, the information would come up though. That is correct. It should, as long as the system is working. And did you have a uh, a system or any equipment that could have assisted you in learning the make and the model and year of the vehicle at the time of the incident? No, I was on foot with no other equipment. So is it fair to say that you did not know that information until later when you were told by Detective Casey or another detective? No, because like I previously stated, I can recognize vehicles pretty well and I knew what approximate, I knew the, it was a Ford Escape and I knew the approximate year of it. You did testify that, and you can also see from the exhibit video, that the front end of the vehicle was damaged. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. And you can still make out the make and model and year of the vehicle with extensive damage. That is correct. Could you see the emblem of the vehicle at that point? I don't recall if I saw an emblem or not. I know the body style of the vehicle and I knew it was a Ford Escape. Would it be fair to say that many SUVs have the same type of body build? I'm sure some vehicles do look similar. So that would it be fair to say that there's a possibility that you could not make out the make and model and year of the vehicle, especially with it being extensively damaged to the front. 
No, I was confident that it was a Ford Escape. Did you notice any tents on that vehicle? Uh, the front windshield that I looked through, I know it was not tinted or it was not tinted enough to um, not make me recognize you. Did you see any tents on the side of the vehicle? Not that I recall. And if they were, they weren't that dark. You don't recall, though, for sure, if there were any tents to any windows of the vehicle you saw? Well, all windows are tinted to some extent. It just depends on to what uh, percentage of tint that they come with. So I'm sure there is tint on the, on the windows because vehicles come from the factory with some level of window tint. So I guess to your question, was there any window tint? I'm sure there was, but not to a degree that would prevent me from seeing who was driving it. Explain what you mean by uh, tint percentage. So there's different varying degrees of tint that you can put on vehicles. Can you elaborate for the jury? Okay. Rounds. I'll overrule the objection. Mr. Brooks, please um, ask your question again. Um, you stated that uh, all cars come from the manufacturer with some level of tint, but you made a reference to percentage. Correct. Can you elaborate on uh, percentage, what, what, what would constitute a darker tint versus a lighter tint? Well, you've asked two questions now, so which one do you want them to answer first? <laughs> the last one, I'm sorry. So you're asking about lighter about the versus the tint percentage. Darker. About the tint percentage. So you like a... A 50% tint would be a lighter tint than like a 35% tint. So the, the, the lower the percentage, the darker the tint. That is correct. Okay. You stated that you're pretty decent with the making out makes making modeling years of uh, vehicles based on your line of work would that be fair to say that is correct would you know of the make and model of the vehicle that you saw that day would you know if those model vehicles come from the manufacturer with any tank To be honest with you, I don't work for Ford, so I don't know if they come um, with tint, but I would assume as most vehicles, um, when they come from the factory, they come with some sort of tint. I believe usually the front is approximately 50% tint and the rears are usually, I think, 25 or 30 or something like that. So from your knowledge, the, the backer windows are you usually coming from the manufacturer, maybe a little bit darker than the front. Correct. No further questions. <coughs> Very briefly, thank you. Uh, so the barricades that we saw at the intersection, intersection where you were posted, those have been blown over by the wind? Uh, yes, so when I deployed the barricades initially, um, standing upright, they kept on blowing directly, like right off the street. So um, I tipped them down on their sides so they wouldn't I guess, uh, catch as much wind and they wouldn't blow all over the place. Did those barricades appear to slow down the SUV as it drove through them? Objection, speculation. Um, overruled, he may answer, given all of the cross. Uh, no, it did not slow the vehicle down at all. You discharged your firearm three times toward the vehicle? That is correct. Did all three rounds strike the vehicle? Yes, they did. Can we please put up for the jury exhibit number three, which has previously been published? Go ahead. We're going to start at the 2 minute and 59 second mark if we can, and while we're working on that, can we please clear the screen now? Thank you. What, what exhibit is that? Three. Three. We're at the 2.58 second mark uh, on this exhibit number three. Do you see a vehicle on the screen? <coughs> yes, I do. Does that appear to be the same color of vehicle you saw uh, drive through the intersection where you were posted? Yes. Let's play from the second, please. Oh, 
Pause. We paused at 302. Does that appear to be the same make and model as the SUV you saw driving through the intersection? Objection. Overrule. It's clear yes, it does. Is there a difference between this vehicle and the vehicle you saw at your intersection? Uh, the difference in the vehicle is that there's no damage on this one. Okay, let's play again from this point. minutes and 47 seconds. Did you see a person wearing a gray hooded sweatshirt in that clip? Yes, I did. Was the appearance of that person and their clothing consistent with the person you saw driving the SUV through your intersection? Objection, speculation, two different incidents. Overruled the witness may answer. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 120, which has previously been received and published? Go ahead. Oh, wait, wait. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes, I do. Does that appear to be a vehicle consistent with the one you saw driving through your intersection? Yes. And the person seated in the driver's seat, does that look like the same person you saw driving that red SUV? Yes. Can we put up for everybody, please, exhibit number nine? Go ahead. You see the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw Driving through the intersection of uh, Wisconsin and Maine. Objection, hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver of that same vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes. Can we please put up for everybody exhibit number 169, which has previously been published. Go ahead. Objection, relevancy. Overruled. See the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yes. Does that appear to be the same vehicle that you saw drive through the intersection of Wisconsin and Maine? Yes. Does that appear to be the same driver? Yes. What's going on with that front passenger window? It looks Objection like it's leading. Overrule the witness may answer. It looks like it's rolled down. So if someone had, before this incident, painted that window black, covered it in a black paper bag, and taped it up with duct tape, and then rolled the window down, would that have prevented you from seeing through the front passenger window? Objection, speculation. No. Overruled the witness, my answer. Who was the no. person depicted in exhibits number 120, number 9, and number 169? Daryl Brooks. Thank you. Objection, I do not consent to being called their name. The objection is noted that the jury is advised to disregard as it's not testimony. It's a comment. All right. Thank you, sir. You may step down. And I appreciate the patience of everyone. As we concluded with that witness, uh, we will now take our lunch break. It's 12.58. Um, I'll give the jurors, um, I'll have the parties come back at uh, 2 o'clock and the jurors probably shortly after that. So thank you, everyone. Please rise for the jury. Please be seated just very briefly with the parties, um, just witnesses for this afternoon. I don't need to know who, just the numbers, and if there's anything else you are asking the court to do this afternoon. No, um, we're 
We're behind schedule, Judge, but we'll keep moving along. We will certainly have a full slate of witnesses available for the afternoon. Do you know about how late you intend to go tonight? Um, I'd like to try to keep it as close to 435 as possible, given that it is a Friday. It's been a long week. Um, any idea when you'll be requesting the view of the vehicle? Will that be next week? That will definitely be next week, um, probably Tuesday at this point, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Then that answered my question about scheduling, so everyone is aware of um, what we intend to do this afternoon. We are in recess. I'll see everyone at 1 o'clock. I'm sorry, at 2 o'clock. It's now almost 1. Thank you. We are.
Thank you. Please be seated. Oh, Madam Clerk, when you get an opportunity, I uh -huh. forgot my water. Oh, right. And I assume you still have Sam. Yes. Hi, Sam. I'm told we are well first of all we are back on the record appearances are as they were before I'm told the jurors are done with lunch and available for us so I presume the state's able to call its next witness yes we're ready Your Honor. thank you all right great then we'll have the jurors brought out I will um, go tell them since I had Madam Clerk step off the bench for me Record was my ICF received? Uh, I have not looked at my mail today. I can't tell you that. Also, for the record, I'm appearing by special appearance on behalf of my client. I'm sorry, sir. I can't hear you. Could you start that over? Oh, that's what happens when I send you on errands. All right, um, the audio is now on. I did call the case earlier. Just noted that the appearances are as they were before. The jury is on its way in. Um, and I just will state in case it wasn't clear, Mr. Brooks asked about an inmate communication form. I have not reviewed my mail today, so I can't tell you whether I've received anything, but I'll take a look and at the next break, uh, if need be, we can address that. And I just wanted to state that I'm here. <clears throat> I'm here under special appearance on behalf of my client with all rights reserved. All right, I'll rise for the jury, please. State may call its next witness. Thank you, Judge. State calls Officer Christopher Moss. All right, Officer, if you would please make your way to the witness stand, which is on my right upper riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, who's on my left, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. Thank you. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. First name is Christopher, C-H-R-I-S-T-O-P-H-E-R. -E last name is Moss, M-O-S-S. -S. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How were you employed? Currently employed with the City of Waukesha Police Department. How long have you worked in law enforcement? I have been a sworn law enforcement officer for 14 years. All of your time was spent with the City of Waukesha Police Department? No, ma'am. Who else did you work for? Six and a half years was spent working for the City of Oconomowoc Police Department, and a year, or just over a year, was spent working part-time for the Village of North Prairie Police Department. Were you working for the City of Waukesha on November 21 of 2021? I was. Do you recall uh, participating in the Waukesha Christmas Parade that afternoon? Yes, ma'am, I do. What was your role, please? Uh, for that event, I was tasked uh, with the City of Waukesha Police Department's Honor Guard Unit. Uh, specifically, I was part of the Color Guard, which is the group that leads the parade carrying uh, the American flag and the state of Wisconsin flag. And uh, were you, so you were there right at the beginning of the parade, correct? Yes, ma'am, I was. Do you remember about what time the parade kicked off? Uh, approximately 4 p.m. 
Did you march the entire route of the parade? I did. Did you complete the parade? Yes, I did. Without incident? Without incident. And after you completed marching the parade with the color guard, did you go someplace? Yes, upon completion of the parade route, as we were the first entity to finish since we led the parade, I subsequently returned to the City of Waukesha Police Department. And why did you go back to the department? That evening I was assigned to late power shift, which is from 5 p.m. to 3 a.m., and I was designated to work Area 308. Okay, so you marched in the parade with the color guard, then you were going to go work a full shift that evening? That's correct. As you were back at the police station, what do you recall happening? As I was changing out of my honor guard uniform into my duty uniform, I heard multiple police sirens emanating from the downtown area. I subsequently checked our reporting system and observed that there was a call for service that officers were responding to in an emergency fashion, referencing a subject with a knife. And where was that response directed? To what location? I believe that response was directed to the area of Frame Park in the City of Waukesha. Did you do anything at that point? I was still technically off duty, so I continued to get dressed quickly in the event that they needed additional resources to that location. And did you ever get called to that location, sir? No, I was never called to that location. What happened next? As I continued to monitor my handheld radio while still getting dressed for duty, I heard via our primary channel fellow officers screaming hysterically on the radio, requesting people to respond to the downtown area and the parade route. What did you do? Got dressed as the fast as I've ever gotten dressed before and subsequently sprinted out of the police department, entered a fleet, and responded in an emergency fashion to the downtown area. Specifically, where did you go? I arrived in the area of Clinton and Main Street. And can you briefly describe for us what you saw when you arrived at that intersection, sir? Upon arrival, to describe what was just absolute chaos. As I exited my fleet, I looked east and westbound on Main Street. There were civilian subjects lying on the ground in every direction I looked, screaming, yelling, etc. Did you attempt to render aid to these individuals? I did. I ran in a westerly direction between Clinton and Maple, attempting to render aid to two elderly female subjects. Did you at some point leave that duty and speak with Officer Skolton? Yes, I did. Where did you speak with Officer Skolton? In the vicinity where I was, I ran into Officer Skolton, who approached me from a westerly direction. Upon making contact with him, he advised that he had fired rounds at a red Ford SUV, specifically an Escape. I asked him if he was okay. He stated that he was, and he subsequently said that we needed to find the vehicle. And did you, in fact, set out to try and find this vehicle? I did. Prior to Officer Skolton telling you that, did you have any vehicle description? I did not. The radio traffic was complete chaos with people screaming about injured participants of the parade being all over the downtown area. So where did you go to look for the vehicle? As I was moving my fleet near Donnie Boyce Tavern on Main Street, I subsequently observed a male Hispanic running towards me, waving his hands frantically to garner my attention. And as I asked him what he needed, he subsequently stated he knew where the vehicle was. Did you understand what he meant by that? I clarified with him that he was speaking of the vehicle that was indeed involved in the incident in the downtown area, as well as the vehicle that Officer Skolton had fired rounds at. He confirmed this, and I subsequently told him to get into my squad car and began traveling with him. Do you know the approximate time this was occurring? The subject approached me at approximately 4.49 p.m. And so you took the citizen with you in your squad? Yes, ma'am, I did. And did he direct you to a specific location? Yes, ma'am, he did. Where did you travel? From my location where I met up with this individual, we traveled westbound on Main Street and subsequently made a left-hand turn to travel southbound on Maple Street. We 
traveled approximately two blocks to the area uh, where I subsequently located the vehicle in the driveway. How did you know it was the vehicle you were looking for? Based off what Officer Skolton had previously described to me um, as a red Ford Escape, I observed a heavily damaged red Ford Escape in the driveway of 338 Maple. Uh, this particular vehicle was heavily damaged in the front end. I also observed that uh, there was clothing embedded in the hood, as well as a headband with blue lighting hanging from the side mirror. Additionally, I observed a bullet hole in the windshield on the uh, passenger side. Did you secure this scene? I did. What did you do? Um, as I exited my fleet, uh, I drew um, my firearm to clear the vehicle to ensure that uh, it was clear of persons that could potentially harm me uh, based on the information that I had garnered up to this point. And um, after that was done and rendered clear um, additional resources that came to my location, uh, we secured it by taping off the entirety of this particular residence as well as the street. When you cleared the vehicle, were there any subjects present inside the vehicle? There were none. After uh, you had secured the scene, did you have an opportunity to take photographs of the of the vehicle? Yes, ma'am, I did. And uh, what device did you use to capture these photographs? So each of our City of Waukesha police squads are um, assigned a cell phone. I believe this one in particular was an iPhone. Um, we utilize that to capture uh, photographic evidence as well. So I utilize the cell phone from the squad. All right, I'm going to ask that exhibit number 99 be put up for the witness, please. Go ahead. Sir, do you see Exhibit 99 on your screen? If not, it'll be up in a minute or so. Just let me know, please. Yes, ma'am, I do. Okay. Do you recognize that photograph, sir? Yes, ma'am. What do you recognize the photograph to depict? It depicts a heavily damaged Ford Escape in the driveway. And uh, where is this location? Uh, 338 Maple in the city of Waukesha. Is this a photograph you took? Yes, ma'am, I took this photograph. Using your iPhone? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, move to admit permission to publish, Your Honor. Objection. Exhibit 99 is received. Permission to publish is granted. The objections overruled. Sir, is this what the vehicle looked like when you first observed it? Yes, ma'am. And you had testified earlier that you were able to see some articles of clothing on the vehicle. Do you see those items in this photograph? Yes, ma'am, I do. Uh, could you please point them out? And that's a touch screen in front of you so you can mark it with a dot or an arrow or whatever you choose. Okay. So here on the hood near the windshield was a hat and then clearly seen hanging from the driver's side mirror is a headband that's partially illuminated. What do you mean illuminated? Uh, this particular headband had multiple, appeared to be blue LED lighting. Okay. The uh, front of the vehicle, it appears to me that the front bumper is laying on the ground. Is that accurate, sir? Objection, Lee. Overruled, you may answer. Yes, ma'am, that's accurate. May we take the annotations down? Yeah, we can deal with that. Thank, Thank you, Judge. You. So to your knowledge, no one had uh, touched or disturbed this vehicle, at least since the time you were present, Objections. before you photographed it? Objection, speculation. Overruled, you may answer. To my knowledge, no, there was no manipulation of this vehicle okay. prior to my arrival. Okay. And... Uh, at some point, did you look inside the vehicle? And I, I don't mean just to clear it of persons. I mean, take a closer look inside the car. Yes, ma'am, I did. And what was your purpose in doing that, sir? Uh, due to the nature of what was happening and the exigency of trying to identify who may have been inside the vehicle, um, I did locate documentation of identifying in nature. And do you remember the name on that paperwork? Yes, ma'am, I do. What was the name on the paperwork inside the vehicle? The name on the paperwork inside the vehicle was one Darrell Edward Brooks Jr. Mel Black, date of birth 221 of 1982. And in fact, was there more than one piece of paper inside the vehicle containing that same personal identifying information? Objection, speculative. Um, overruled the witness, may answer. Yes, ma'am, there was more than one item. 
I don't see a front license plate in this photograph. Do you, sir? No, ma'am. <coughs> Where's the license plate? May I draw? Yes. Um, it was determined later that this is actually the license plate okay. on the front. Not from the photograph, but from your recollection, was the rear license plate clearly visible? Objection. Reading. Overruled. The witness may answer. Yes, ma'am. The rear license plate was clearly visible on the vehicle. Did you attempt to run the license plate for this vehicle? Yes, I did via police radio. What information did you learn about the registration of this vehicle? Uh, the vehicle displayed a Wisconsin registration plate of a. Adam D. David P. Paul 9256, which listed to a Don L. Woods out of the city of Milwaukee. Do you remember the approximate location of the um, street where Don Woods lived? Objection. Hearsay. Um, and relevant. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, I do not recall that information. Did you, you just remember city of, Walk, or excuse me, city of Milwaukee? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay. And the vehicle was registered to Don Woods solely. Objection. Leading. Relevancy of who, who is it related to? Um, the objections are noted. Um, I'll sustain as to the form of the question and ask Attorney Upper to rephrase. Was the registration only in one person's name? From what I understand, it was. Okay. Do you know the relationship between Don Woods and Daryl Brooks? Objection. Speculation. Overruled. The witness may answer. No, ma'am, I do not know the relationship. At a later point, uh, as you were, well, strike that. Let me ask this. Did you remain with this vehicle for some time? Yes, for some time. And uh, were other resources, uh, law enforcement and other resources called to the area to deal with this vehicle, sir? Yes, ma'am, they were. And as that was occurring, are you aware of other police activity that was occurring nearby? Yes, ma'am, I was. And what was that, please? I had heard via police radio officer Luling advised that he was out with a subject in the 500 block of Elizabeth Street, which is just a couple blocks away. And did you hear Officer Luling indicate a name for the subject that he was out with? Yes, I did. And what was that name? Officer Luling aired over police radio that he was out with a male subject identifying himself as Darrell Brooks. All right, sir, thank you. I don't have any other questions. We can take down 99. Oh, I'm sorry, I do have one other question about 99. I apologize, Your Objection. Oh, overruled. She may answer. I mean, she may ask. Do you know what time you snapped that photograph of Exhibit 99? Yes, ma'am. I took that photograph on the date in question at 5.01 p.m. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you. You're cross, Mr. Brooks. Uh, you stated that uh, you were flagged down by uh, a Hispanic male running at you waving his hands. Would that be fair to say? That's correct. Do you recall his name? I do. And would you state it for the jury and for the record? His name is uh, Abel Lascado. And do you recall if uh, Mr. Lascano gave you any additional information during your traveling to where the vehicle was located? I don't understand your question. You stated that uh, the Mr. Lascano got into your vehicle and you traveled to where the vehicle was located. Is that fair to say? That's correct. Did you learn any additional information from Mr. Lascano? How do you say Lascano? Lascano. Lascano. Did you learn during your travel to where the vehicle was located? Did you learn any additional information from Mr. Lascano? Not while we were traveling to the vehicle. So you traveled to the vehicle in complete silence? No, he was trying to direct me with the location of the uh, Red Ford Escape. Did he say he saw any anyone driving the vehicle? Objection, hearsay. Sustained. So all he told you was where the vehicle was. He didn't tell you if he saw anyone driving it? Objection, hearsay. Grounds. Um, the witness may 
answer the question as long as it he does not answer with hearsay. Go ahead, overrule. Can you uh, restate your question, please? So all that the uh, Mr. Lascano all that he told you was the location of the vehicle, not if he saw anyone driving? I object that question calls for hearsay response, Your Honor. Um, I, I would agree hearing that again. Sustained. Did he, did he at all tell you that he saw someone in the vehicle? Objection. Hearsay. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain? Um, it's hearsay to ask him what Mr. Lascano told him would be hearsay. So all, so all Mr. Lascano did was just direct you to the vehicle? That's correct. That's all you guys talked about during your trip to the vehicle? Objection, asked and answered. Grounds. Uh, sustained. It was asked, um, and I previously sustained the objection. So, next question, please. When you were able to locate the vehicle, where did Mr. Lis L L Liscano go? Um, once the vehicle was located, I had Mr. Liscano stand by in my fleet until uh, other officers arrived to assist me, and then I transferred him over to someone else. Do you know if he made any report at that time? Define report. Did he make any report to law law enforcement at that time? <laughs> I'm Pretty not clear. sure if he did or not. Do you recall Mr. Lascano uh, yelling that there were subjects standing outside of the building Objection, Your Honor. Um, I'm going to excuse the jury while I take up a legal issue. I'll rise for the jury, please. Thank you. Be seated. Mr. Brooks, before I have you question this witness any further, it sounds like to me that you are attempting to offer through this witness the statements made by Mr. Lascano. If that is what you are trying to do, um, you may not do that. You will have to call Mr. Lascano as a witness if you so choose, if he's on your witness list. But that your questions are seeking to elicit hearsay from this witness. That's why I had the jury removed so we could, I could explain uh, my ruling and why I'm going to direct you not to ask this witness questions about what Mr. Lascano may or may not have said. I'm reading directly from the, his report. That would be double hearsay then. Because it's 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 not mis you need Mr. Lascano here to say what he told this officer. If you are attempting to offer it for the truth of the matter asserted, which is what I believe you are doing, you're attempting to establish the veracity of something Mr. Lascano either said or didn't say through another witness. That is hearsay. So it's not hearsay for the uh, the prosecutor to bring up. Uh... I'm not going to talk about other rulings. There's been an objection by the state and I'm sustaining the objection, and I'm directing you not to ask this witness questions that would call for this witness to say what Mr. Lascano said. That is hearsay, that is textbook hearsay, Mr. Brooks. And then I don't think it's fair for, the, for me to object to hearsay from the uh, prosecution about the, along the lines of the same type yeah, of thing. I'm not gonna have a debate on what may have come in previously. Um, I know you've made a number of hearsay objections, many of which uh, 
the answers that were being provided were not hearsay. Um, but I would direct your attention to 908.01 of the Wisconsin statutes. You have that book in front of you that I provided to you a number of days ago at the beginning of this trial or near the beginning of this trial. There's the definitional section of the statutes, which defines hearsay. Uh, it also, and then if you go on to 908.02, um, that's obviously one you may want to look at as well. Um, and then 9803 has the exception. So unless you can Clearly. give me an exception, sir, as to why this witness should be allowed to answer those questions, I'm going to, again, directly not to answer directly from questions. his report, the report that he, that he wrote. Nothing, nothing is coming from, I'm reading directly from his report. That's what that I have Doesn't change the fact that it's hearsay. You said what? That doesn't change the fact that it's hearsay. So it his report is hearsay? It another level of hearsay. It's an out of court statement. So Not this witness made, but what another witness made. So you have to... So I can't read from his report that he wrote. Um, you can't ask this witness questions that call for a hearsay answer unless there's no objection from the state. Or you can convince me there's an exception to the hearsay rule that applies. Do you have an exception you'd like to offer to the court? So I might as well not read the report that he wrote then if I can't question him about the report that he wrote. That's your misunderstanding, sir, what is hearsay. Um, and I, I, all I can tell you is I'm sustaining the objection. I'm going to bring the jury back out um, and we'll go from there. All right, Madam Clerk, bring the jury out, please. Clear bias. Clear bias. Mr. Brooks, I understand you I may I disagree to with or the. Agree to being called that name. For the record, again, I'm here as a third party intervener on behalf of my client. I don't know why that's not understood by now. So I guess I can't bring up the plaintiff either, huh? Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Continue with your questions, sir. I got a tree of lightning. The jury will disregard that last comment. Oh, wow. And that one as well. Right. It's not your opportunity to testify. You'll be I'm given an opportunity testifying. should you choose I'm later, sir. But please question the witness. If, if Thank I you. can ever get to it, I'll do that. And again, the jury will disregard that statement. It's not evidence. <coughs> you made reference to a hat. Being on the hood, can we pull uh, Exhibit 99 up again? Are you asking the state to do that, sir? Yeah, can, can it please be pulled up and sure. published? Sure, it can, and it will. The jury can let me know when it's on the screens in the jury box, please. All right, it's in the jury box. Continue, please. 
you testified to this being a hat, right? That's correct. And from this picture, can you tell what that is? Uh, not specifically. So how do we know if, if that's a hat from looking at this picture? Uh, from looking at this picture, uh, it would be difficult to determine if that's actually a hat. So it would be fair to say you don't know what that is? Based on this picture, you're Based right. Based on this picture? Based on this picture, I'm not able to determine what that item is. Would it be also fair to say we can't even determine if that's outside or inside of the vehicle at that point? I would disagree and say that is on the exterior of the vehicle. And how would you make that assumption if you can't tell what it is? Objection. Grounds. Sustained as to the form of the question. Can you clear that? Thank you, Madam Clerk. You can definitively say from this picture that you can tell where the item is based on this picture? Yes. Are you going off what you found or what you can see from the picture? I can see from this picture that that item is on the exterior of the vehicle between the hood that is destroyed and the windshield. So it's on the hood? It is between the hood and the windshield of the vehicle. And you can tell that from this picture? Objection as an answer. Grounds. Argumentative. Sustained as to both grounds. And from this picture, you can tell what this is. Yes. Just from the picture? Yes. And how do you come to that determination? Based on the fact that it's hanging on the exterior of the vehicle from the driver's side mirror, um, that it is in the shape of a headband and it is partially illuminated in this photograph with LED lighting. It could, it, it could be fair to say that it's anything, would you not? say that that's fair just from looking at the picture it doesn't necessarily say or it doesn't it's not 100 percent identifiable from this picture would, would that be fair to say objection compound question sustained as to the form of the question please rephrase just from strictly looking at this picture you can't positively say what the item is objection that's a mischaracterization of his testimony sustained Please rephrase. Clear, clear, clear the photo. You're asking Madam Clerk to please clear, clear the photo. It. Mr. Brooks, I'd ask that you show some deference to my clerk and not bark orders at her and use simple courtesy. Thank you. And thank you, Madam Clerk. Will I be awarded the same, Your Honor? Please ask your next question, sir. Will I be awarded the same, Your Honor? Please ask your next question. I, I, I will. I just want to know if I'll be awarded the, I, I awarded have been. the same. Thank you. Please continue. Did you talk to anyone uh, who lived in the residence? I don't recall the specific persons I talked to or where they resided. So it's fair to say you talked to someone? There were multiple people outside of the residence and in the area at that time that I spoke briefly to. But you don't know if any of them was the renter or owner of the driveway? I do not recall. Do you recall asking anyone if the, uh, if the vehicle belonged to somebody who may have stayed in that general area? I do not recall asking that question to anyone. You did state that you cleared the area. Would, would that be fair to say? No, I said I cleared the vehicle, not the area. Did you, did you clear the area? Uh, eventually, we did clear the back portion of the residence to ensure there were no suspects or victims. Who, who is we? Persons of law enforcement. 
And did you wait until law enforcement came before you started to do that? Or did you start on your own kind of way? Upon arrival to the location of the suspect vehicle, I was by myself. So I initially cleared the vehicle to ensure that there were no potential threats to myself. When I advised dispatch that I had located the suspect vehicle, numerous officers came to assist me and were there relatively quickly to help me secure the area. So would it be fair to say when you found the vehicle that you didn't locate anyone inside the vehicle? Correct. No one was located inside the vehicle at that time. And you also stated that you cleared the vehicle for possible threats to yourself. If no one was in the vehicle, what did you need to clear the vehicle? Of what would be the threat? Based on, again, as I early, earlier stated, um, what had occurred in the downtown, plus the fact that Officer Skolman had fired rounds at this vehicle, I was unsure uh, who or what may be inside the vehicle. Uh, given the time of day as it was becoming dusk, it was getting harder to see outside. So to ensure my own safety, I cleared it the way I earlier stated. So would it be fair to say that, well, let me back up. You, you took this photo, correct? That is correct. So that would mean you were, at least by that time, sure that no one was in the vehicle. Would that be fair to say? That is correct. So did you clear the vehicle before taking the picture or afterward? I cleared the vehicle before I took the photograph. Did you find any threats in there? After I initially cleared it, no. It was deemed to not be a threat to my person. Did you do any, any other investigating after you had uh, took this photo? Can you rephrase the question? Did you do any other investigating after you took this photo? I, uh, after the photographs were collected of the vehicle in place from multiple angles, um, I did locate uh, identifying information inside the vehicle. What I'm asking is, so let me back up. So that was the extent of your investigation was finding whatever you found in the vehicle at that point. Correct. Grounds. I'll let you Thank you. Correct. So when you were clearing the vehicle, would it be fair to say that you could have did, done the, invest, the same investigational work at that time? No, that would not be fair to say. And why not? Because when you're clearing a vehicle to ensure that there are no threats to you, you're not looking for anything specific as far as evidentiary value. You're looking for a threat to your person. So you would clear the vehicle of threats after being in the vehicle to do that and then go back into the vehicle and look for or start investigating rather. Correct. Why not do them all at once? Is that a, a procedural thing or? Asked and answered, Your Honor, I object. Grounds? Sustained. Next question. Is it usually procedure to investigate later on after clearing for threats? Yes, you always want to ensure that where you're working on an investigation is clear of threats and that you are safe. Would that be the same protocol if you were searching a, a, a home? Objection relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Relevance. And you may mention that the vehicle wasn't, I guess I would say, touched or uh, 
between the time that you were flagged down with the location of the vehicle until you actually observed the vehicle, you stated that you don't believe the vehicle was, was touched in any way in that time? Objection, that's a misstatement of his, care, of his testimony. Grounds, he said something similar to Sustained um, as to the form of the question. Are you sure that the vehicle was not touched in the time that you were flagged down about the location of the possible vehicle and observing the vehicle? I am unaware if the vehicle was manipulated in any fashion from the time that Mr. Lascano flagged me down and to the time that I located the vehicle in the driveway. Do you know approximately how long it took you to get to the vehicle when you were initially flagged down about the location of the vehicle? I do not know how long it took me uh, to get to the vehicle upon being flagged on. So it's possible that it could have been manipulated? Yes, it's possible. At the time that you uh, located the vehicle, were you aware of uh, any suspect identification or name? Can you restate your question, please? At the time you located the vehicle, were you aware of any suspect or name of suspect? No, I was unaware of any names of any suspect involved in the incident at the time I located the vehicle. And when did you learn of that information, if you learned of that information? I only learned the information of a possible suspect upon locating the identifying documents inside the vehicle and subsequently providing that information to dispatch. At the time you found that information, did you immediately regard that information to be the possible suspect? Yes, since it was in the vehicle that was heavily damaged, the red Ford Escape with the bullet hole in the windshield, yes, I believe that that information indeed belonged to a suspect. And at some point you ran a license plates number, would that be fair to say? Correct, I did. And you also stated that it was registered to someone that was not the suspect, would that be fair to say? Um, as far as I know at that, or I'm sorry, as far as I knew at that time, uh, I did not know if the person registered uh, or registered the vehicle to was a suspect or not. You also stated that you found identifying paperwork in your investigation of the vehicle. Did that information match the identity of who the vehicle was registered to? No, the uh, identifying information again for Mr. Brooks that was inside the vehicle did not match the uh, registration on file with the Wisconsin Department of Transportation for the registration of the vehicle, which was Don L. Woods. Uh, for the record, I don't identify by that name yet again, stating that um, for the record. Um, for the record, the jury will disregard that commentary by the defendant, and it also mischaracterizes the witness's testimony. It does not. I was just stating for the record. Again, the jury will disregard uh, that so commentary as Mr. Brooks is not presently testifying. The information you found in the car, the vehicle was not registered to that person, correct? That's correct. So there's a possibility that at any time, multiple people can utilize that vehicle. Would that be fair to say? Objection, speculation. Grounds. Uh, calls for speculation, sustained. Would you agree that a vehicle registered to one person and information found by another person constitutes that more than one person used the vehicle? Objection. Grounds. Uh, go ahead, you're the, the, the question was 
does that prove that more than one person could drive the car? That's an improper question. That, that wasn't the question. Um, well, sustained as to the form of the question and assumes facts, not in evidence. State that last part again. It assumes facts, not in evidence, your question. Your next question, please. Is it fair to say that people leave all types of information in, in family members' vehicles at any time? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Speculation. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Ask your next question, Mr. Brooks, please. May I have the grounds, please? The objection has been sustained. Ask your next question, please. May I have the grounds? The court's not answering that. The record is self-evident. Is that a tacit agreement? Here's what I found. Um, sir, I don't know what a tacit agreement is, so please keep going. Clearly know what it is. Um, to say, and this is along the lines of the same question, would it be fair to say that at, at some point you've left items in other people's vehicles? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain. Next question, please, sir. I've sustained this question multiple times, multiple it, it ways you've asked question. it. Next question, please. May I have the grounds? 90611, right. sir. May I have the grounds? Next question, please. Mm -hmm. Is it to relevancy? Is it to hearsay? Under 90611, ask your next question or I will cut off your cross-examination. Please ask your next question, sir. You have to give the grounds, though, Your Honor. Especially if I'm really just asking for the grounds of the sustain. Sir, ask your next question. What's the point of me asking questions if I can't ask anything? The jury will disregard his commentary that he just stated right now. Recall speaking to, uh, well, you, you said you spoke to a few people you didn't know if they were the owner of the house or the driveway or the renter. Would that be fair to say? Yes, that's correct. Did anyone you spoke to give you a description of a possible driver? I was given multiple descriptions by multiple parties um, of multiple suspects that had fled the vicinity of the vehicle. And what do you mean by multiple descriptions about, of multiple suspects? Two, three, four people, five? I was given information that uh, one male black suspect that was taller, wearing um, blue pants and black, had run southbound on Maple towards college. Additionally, I was given information that Tudor shorter male blacks wearing gray sweatpants had run in a westernly direction from behind the residence at 338 Maple. And then later I was also given a, another description of a male black, um, unknown height, wearing uh, like a gray sweatshirt and pants. You said medium height for the last description? Unknown height. I know. Okay, I'm sorry. Unknown height. Did, did anyone you talked to report uh, the sound of a crash? No, no one I spoke to uh, at this location reported anything regarding the sound of a crash. Did you see any signs that there may have been a crash when you, once you and other officers were secu securing the area? 
uh, as far as the vicinity around the vehicle or the vehicle itself? The, the general area. As far as the general area, given the time of day, I was unable to determine if there was any signs of a crash in that vicinity. When talking to the uh, people that you, uh, while talking to the people that gave you the descriptions, um, did they identify themselves as living close or living in any of the houses in that area? No, due to the chaotic nature of the event, uh, I did not ascertain where these individuals lived or if they were associated with any neighboring <laughs> residents. Do you know if they made in, uh, any other statements to any other law, law enforcement that was there present with you at that time? Not to my knowledge. Why do you think you, you uh, received so many different descriptions of suspects? Uh, multiple people from multiple angles observed different things and there was a lot of people there. It was a very chaotic event. Um, even this particular scene was chaotic and hectic with numerous people coming to and from, so it was difficult to determine um, that information. Did any of the people that you spoke with um, give any reason to why, they, why the suspects that they identified were run from the scene? Objection. Speculation Rounds. also calls for hearsay. Rounds. Sustained. Browns. Next question, sir. Do you recall uh, any of the officers that were securing the scene with you having a canine present? Yes, I do. And do you recall what officer that was? That was Officer Bousman, who was a canine handler with the City of Waukesha Police Department. Eventually, you left uh, the scene where the vehicle was found and uh, started searching the area? Yes, I uh, transferred command of that location to Officer Butchern and had him remain at that scene for scene security with additional City of Brookfield officer. And then myself, uh, K-9 Officer Bousman, and numerous other police officers from various departments conducted an area search uh, as we were conducting a K-9 track. Based on the information I had obtained, of multiple suspects running from the area. And do you recall what time you went back to where you initially observed the vehicle? I do not know, uh, recall what time I made it back, but it was some hours later. And did you go back to your department after leaving from the, the scene where you found the uh, vehicle? Yes, I was directed by my command staff to return to the police department as the scene was still secured by other uh, law enforcement officers of various agencies. <laughs> and were you instruct, instructed to make contact with anyone at that point? Yes, I was. Do you recall who? I do. May you stay for the jury and for the record? Yes, upon arrival to the police department, I was directed to make contact with District Attorney Sue Opper.
And when you say Sue Upper, are you referring to District Attorney Sue Upper? Yes, that's what I said. Is she here in court today? Yes, she is. Can you point her out for the jury? She's seated at the prosecution table wearing the gray cardigan. Uh, let the record reflect that the witness has identified uh, Attorney Upper. No objection, Your Honor. The record will still reflect. <coughs> and do you recall what the nature of the contact was with Attorney Upper? Yes, I was directed to locate uh, Attorney Upper in the downtown area at the scene of the parade incident and subsequently transport her back to the City of Waukesha Police Department. So I'm assuming make contact with her at the parade, so you went and picked her up? That's correct. I picked her up in the area of Maple in Wisconsin. Um, correction, I'm sorry. The area of Maple and Main Street. And did you continue that contact after picking her up? And where did you, oh, let me back up. Where did you go after picking up attorney Opera? As I stated, we uh, once I picked her up, I transported her back to the city of Waukesha Police Department. And did you continue to have contact at that point? I did. And what was the nature of that contact? Uh, District Attorney Opper and I uh, worked together to draft a search warrant for the uh, 2010 Red Ford Escape SUV that was in the driveway of 338 Maple Street. Uh, you said a search warrant? Correct. Initially, when you secu secured the vehicle and then investigated the vehicle, after securing it, what did you need to search for at that point that you needed a search warrant? After I cleared the vehicle and located those items of identifying nature, that was done due to the exigency of the event and identifying any outstanding suspects. After that was done and photographed in place, I re-secured the vehicle and it was no longer touched at that point. So therefore, later on, it was required to have a search warrant to continue processing that vehicle for items of evidentiary value. So you just stated that the vehicle wasn't touched between those times. So what, what if anything new, did you need to search for? Objection, argumentative. Well, um, overruled, he may answer. The basis of the search warrant was to ensure that, again, any items of evidentiary value I may have overlooked due to, again, the exigency of trying to find identifying information with an outstanding suspect, as well as clearing the vehicle for safety reasons. That is the pur purpose of the search warrant, is to do a more slow, methodical search of the vehicle for said items of evidentiary value. But it would be fair to say that after initially um, clearing the vehicle, for, as you said, for any possible threats to, to you and investigating the vehicle further a second time. What did you feel would be of evidentiary value at that point that you hadn't already observed before? Objection. Asked and answered. Grounds. Argumentative. Grounds. I'm referring to him stating the evidentiary value. Asked and answered. Sustained. So what was the evidentiary value that you were looking for? Same objection. With the, with the search warrant. It's the same question a different way, so I'm going to sustain it. It's been asked. It's been answered. Next question, please. Can you give an example of what evidentiary value is? Um, something of evidentiary value can really be anything that's pertinent to the case. Um, an example would be like a shell casing or a spot of blood that can render DNA results, things of that nature. Did you find uh, any of those things when obtaining the search warrant? Objection. Grounds. 
Well, that's factually inaccurate, Your Honor. It assumes a fact, not an evidence. I'll sustain the objection as to the form of the question. Did you find, upon, upon attaining the search warrant, were you able to find anything of evidentiary value? Same objection. Ground. Assumes a fact, not an evidence, Your Honor. Sustained. It assumes facts, not an evidence. Please rephrase and establish a foundation related to whether this witness performed that subsequent search. After obtaining the search warrant, did you yourself go back in, search the vehicle? No. Do you recall what officer was dispatched to do, to execute the search warrant? No, I do not know who ultimately searched the vehicle for items of evidentiary value. Do you recall if the vehicle was then towed from that area at some point? Yes, the vehicle was removed at some point. I do not know when or by whom. Do you recall where it was moved to? I do not know where the vehicle was moved to. You stated earlier that you did observe a bullet, a gunshot in the windshield. Did you notice any other bullet marks? No, the only mark that I observed related to a gunshot was the bullet hole in the windshield on the passenger side. And was that, you said on the passenger side, was it to the passenger side window, the passenger side chair, the passenger side dash? Do you recall where the bullet hole was? As I previously stated, it was in the windshield, front windshield on the passenger side. Were you at any time given a copy of the search warrant? Yes, upon completion of the search warrant, I was given a copy. The original went over to the command center. Is it a standard protocol that, being that you were the one that obtained the search warrant, is it usually a thing where you don't have to be the one to execute it, any other officer can execute it? Based on the requirement of the search warrant to process this vehicle for items of evidentiary value, that's beyond the scope of my training and experience. So therefore, it was relayed to persons that are capable of actually doing that. But you can, you said it's beyond your level, I didn't catch where you said it was beyond your level or something? It's beyond my scope of training and experience. Beyond your scope of training. The actual, the actual writing of the search warrant isn't above your scope of training, would that be fair to say? That's correct. But the execution is? Of this particular search warrant, yes. What made this particular search warrant different than any ones you've ever written or obtained before? This particular search warrant was for a search of the vehicle involved in the Christmas parade incident. And given the gravity of the situation and the resulting effects of what this vehicle was used for, persons that are highly skilled in collecting items of evidentiary value are obviously the people we want to do that rather than a patrol officer. And you were able to get that search warrant signed, correct? That's correct. Do you remember by whom? Yes. Can you state for the record and for the jury? At that time of the search warrant, the on-call judge was contacted and the on-call judge was the Honorable Jennifer Durrell. That would be the judge right now in the courtroom? Yes, that's correct. Did that complete your part of the investigation for that incident at that time? 
Yes, upon getting the search warrant, I was relieved of my duties. Did you did you ever come back into the investigation in any way after that point? After that point, no. After your uh, part of the investigation ended, were you able to obtain any more information that you didn't know the night of your investigation? Objection made. Grounds for speculation. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Please ask your next question. contact with uh, attorney opera after that initial night no when were you aware that it was a possibility that you could be called to testify in this matter <coughs> when I re received a subpoena to testify in this matter excuse me I, I didn't hear. when I received a subpoena to testify in this matter was that subpoena served to you by the District Attorney's Office? Yes, it was. Was it served by Attorney Yacker? Um, I don't recall who served me directly. I believe it was via electronic. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? I don't recall the exact date, but it was a few months ago. So it was pretty recent, but a little, a little time since you received it. Yes, that's fair to say. Would you by chance know who the plaintiff is in this matter? Yeah. Grounds. Relevance. Grounds. Sustained. Ever seen or talked to the plaintiff? Had any physical interaction with the plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Vague and compound Grounds. question. Sustained. You even know if there's a plaintiff in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Sustained. You know who filed the complaint in this matter? Uh, the complaint was filed by the district attorney's office. Do you know if it was filed by attorney Opera? I don't know particularly who filed the complaint. I just know it was by the Waukesha County District Attorney's Office. And during your time in law enforcement, would it be fair to say that whoever files the complaint is a party to the matter? Objection. Grounds. Beyond the scope of the witnesses, no, Your Honor. Um, sustained. Next question. Grounds please. for the sustain, Your Honor. Next question, please. <coughs> Any reason why the state of Wisconsin would be identified as the plaintiff when they did not file the complaint? Objection. Grounds. Argumentative. Misstatement of the law. Grounds. Sustained. Grounds for the sustain, Your Honor. Ask your next question, please. Was that the grounds? Next question, please. The jury deserves to know these. The jury will disregard that last statement. They need to know. I've sustained the objection, sir. Ask your next question, please. I'm, I'm aware that it was a substantive. I'm, I'm aware. I just wanted to know the grounds. You can't keep hiding stuff from the jury. Mr. Brooks, the court is not hiding anything from anyone, and the jury will disregard that last 
statement. It is not evidence in any way in this case. Would it be fair to say that any case has a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Lack of foundation beyond the scope of the witness's knowledge. Um, sustained. Would it be, can I rephrase the question? Go ahead. I can't say whether it will be answered or not, but you can go ahead but and I rephrase can't it. I can't rephrase, <laughs> just so we're clear. Whether it's answered or not, I can still rephrase the question. I. I I don't know what the question will be, sir, so I can't make a, a ruling that's advisory. So ask your next question, please. Are you aware that in any case brought into a courtroom, there has to be a plaintiff? Objection. Grounds. Same question. Grounds is it not also the also mistakes question. the law, so sustained. There's no plaintiff, how's their case? Move to strike. So, uh, the jury will disregard the last comment and statement made by Mr. Brooks. Browns. There's a defendant that has to be a plaintiff. Of the law. It's not relevant. This jury will be the judge of the facts. The court is the judge of the law. Please continue, sir, or under 90611, I will uh, stop the cross-examination. If there's a defendant, there has to be a plaintiff. Mr. Brooks, please stop. The jury will also disregard that statement. It's a mischaracterization of the law. It's a misstatement of the law. Based on what law or fact, Your Honor? And I'll address that with Mr. Brooks once again after the jury has been excused. Um, one final time, you may ask another question. Otherwise, I will and it must not be along the same lines, or under 90611, I will ask the state whether there's any redirect. Do you know of anyone who filed a claim in this matter? Objection. Grounds. Irrelevant. Grounds. It's also vague, so I'll sustain it. So the grounds is vagueness? And relevance. Is it vague or is it irrelevant? Sustained, Mr. Brooks. Next question. Since your initial night of investigation, you've done no investigation since then in this matter. Correct. And have you seen any news reports? Objection. Re Relevance. Can I finish the question? Um, you can, there's been no identification, so under 90611, meaning of, I'm going to sustain the objection without hearing the rest of the question. Um, I don't see how it would have any relevance. I'll let you make an offer of proof after we're outside the presence of the jury, and if necessary, you can recall this witness. Next question. In that case, then, uh, since that is stated on the record, no further questions. I, I would like to finish at some point. Sir, finish your cross-exam as to that limited topic. no further questions. Okay, but as to that limited topic only. So if there are other things outside that topic, please finish your questioning. I just said two times. I'm going to say it again. No further questions. All right. Thank you then, sir. Do you have any redirect? No, nothing else. Thank you, Judge. All right. Uh, thank you. Um, you may be excused. Um, I'm going to excuse the 
jury momentarily to take up a legal issue with the parties and hopefully we'll have you brought back out shortly. You can use this opportunity for a comfort break though. Please be seated. You may make an offer of proof, sir, as it relates to why or what questions and what information you believe this officer would provide about news reports that he has seen. So the offer of proof would just be to that one question? What would the question be? The question was, would have been would have been if I was allowed to finish it. Had he seen any news reports con uh, directly connected to the incident? But what's the, the relevance? Same, the same for thing. Him? That, the same thing that many other witnesses have been asked, and, and it was never, it was never uh, sustained. Then it was never even objected to. So it was the same. It was the same. Let's focus one on the, the question. specific objection that was posed, and my and what was the willingness for it? to give you an an opportunity to provide the court with an offer of proof. This was a, what relevance would this particular witness seeing news reports have to his testimony? The same thing that any other witness that was asked the same question. Which would be what? You have to be specific, sir. I'm I was not gonna, specific. I'm not have gonna they assume saw, I understand what you are saying. Have they saw any reports Related to the incident. That's the same question that, that's been asked by numerous witnesses. Well, there would witnesses. be a follow-up to that. So how is it relevant to this witness's testimony? It's relevant to anyone who gets on the stand's testimony. What's the legal basis you believe it's relevant to his testimony, sir? It obviously forms an opinion. Again, I'm not... You need to explain to me, sir the legal basis why you believe I should allow that witness to be asked that question and then any follow-up based on his response. What would have been the follow-up? It would have got, you, got sir, asked and it would have got answered. You're the one who's the proponent of this particular testimony and this questioning and the evidence. So explain to me your legal basis for why you believe it's relevant to ask or any other reason, any legal basis, you believe it's that I should allow that question to be asked. I don't. I don't understand how you want me to answer that. I, I've, I've stated. I've stated the reason why I asked the question. No, you stated it's obvious, but it's not obvious to me. So I, I'm asking you to explain it. I also stated that it, it. I just clearly stated, clearly, that it goes towards biasness. I'm that sorry, would be relevant. Wait, wait. Goes to what? B biased. Bias. Biased. No, bias. B i a s. Not. There's no t at the end. Bias. So I want to make sure I understand so, your so reasoning correctly, how sir. So something. it's how you're saying it goes to bias. How does it go to bias of this witness, sir? How would it not go to if you see something in the news? <laughs> it's not a proper legal argument, sir. Okay, well, I don't know how you want me to answer how that. How would what he saw subsequent to his investigation impact either what he did beforehand or his testimony here? You have to make an offer of proof as to that. Without that, I'm not going to allow it. You, you didn't allow it anyway, so it would do a matter at this point. I'm giving you the opportunity. It's called an offer of proof. Okay, I said I, I would recall I, the I'm witness well aware, if I determined. I'm well aware what an offer of proof is. Okay, I'm well aware. so make your offer of proof. I, I don't need to. It's, it's clear. It's very clear. I don't see anything funny either. It's not funny, sir. It's just it's a circular argument. It's you're telling me that it's that clear. I wasn't referring that to you. The person that was that it was referred to know who they are. Well, let's stay on task, please. So I, I'm trying go, to. You're it's, claiming it's it goes to bias, but in this, what may way? May I say this for the record, Your Honor? It's hard to stay on task when it seems like. 
the prosecution can ask essentially anything they want to ask. Mr. Brooks, but then when I, I, object, have, I had wait, an wait. objection before. Well, here's the thing. You want to go off target and you want to bring up target. things from the past. I can't explain to you why sometimes the state has an objection and other times they don't. But That's when they're not, not when an objection has been made, it is my obligation to rule on it. I, and so there was an objection. I'm aware, I'm aware of that, Your Honor. But I'm also aware of the fact, and it's, it's clear, that I object quite often. And every single time I object is, is just thrown to the side. Every single time. Well, I would disagree with that characterization, sir. And, and I make my rulings in this why case Why would you disagree based, with that? I'm like Can an you umpire. Point out one time? I'm like an umpire in a baseball game, sir. I call and see the legal objections as I see them. That is my role, and that is what I do. And are you kidding me? That's that's exactly you're what honored. I do. I'm an umpire, sir. You're I'm, I am a referee in this trial. If you're the um, uh, and let me finish. Okay. Let me finish, okay. Mr. Brooks. I, I okay? apologize. I'm late. So sometimes parties make objections. Sometimes they don't. There can be a variety of reasons. You make a lot of objections in this case. I, from my perspective, okay, you make a number of objections. I rule on them and you disagree with them. But that doesn't mean I'm casting things aside. I'm making a call based on the rules of evidence. So for example, if there's a relevance objection, I'm going to analyze that Okay, based on the objection that's been made. Sometimes I might think there's another basis for something to either come in or not come in. But my rule book, okay, is the rules of evidence, which are the statutes, which once again, I'll point out, I gave you, sir, near the beginning of this trial, so that you would have a better understanding of what those rules are. If you choose not to read them, that's fine. But you cannot then claim that that's, there is somehow foul play because you haven't read them and you don't understand what they are. Your ignorance of the law is not a defense for any of this. Okay, and you getting frustrated with me because you don't understand that, I mean, it's just what it is. But I'm calling these legal shots as I see them. And I will, I've asked you repeatedly for an offer of proof. Um, you want to ask this this witness who had limited involvement regarding a, a part of an investigation related to that vehicle. Um, I don't see the relevance even to bias um, for which I will allow him to answer that. It's You haven't given me a legal or factual reason to overrule the objection uh, and to bring the witness back on the stand and to question him about his viewing of any news reports. So with that, uh, we are gonna take a very short break. The jury's been out for a little bit, but I recognize it's 325. It'll be a good opportunity for a comfort break. And when we come back on, the state should be prepared to call the next witness. Can I release at least rebuttal to what you just said since you actually I don't need got a rebuttal, read. sir. You may not agree with me, but I've made it. It's not about agreeing. Record. You just told me not to interrupt you, and I didn't. So I, I at least deserve the chance to put on the record a what, would you, what would you like to put on the record as it relates to the specific issue for which I was giving you the opportunity to be heard? Not anything else, not subject matter jurisdiction, not uh, now you whether said the that. state's doing other things. I'm up, only Honor. asking you to address the offer of proof. No, I, if you I wanna, have something, go ahead, but I wanna, only as it relates I to I want to address your position because you said you're like the umpire, right? Well, I'm not getting, okay, go ahead, sir. I'm not sure why you need to respond because, to that. Because it, it needs to be on the record. If you're the umpire, that means you're the referee. That's what I'm and, doing here and when, today, sir. And when, you're not, you're not refing fair if the jury's not allowed to hear things that they, that's important for them to know. I respectfully disagree, sir. Again, just because you believe the law means you have a right to question all these witnesses about uh, who the plaintiff is and about subject matter jurisdiction. Doesn't I didn't question make it anybody so. about that. Okay. 
Um, that it was, doesn't that was make between it you so. and I. That didn't have nothing to do with a witness. I've, I've you never once question questioned a witness about subject matter jurisdiction. About whether they are aware of complaints. And the funny thing is, sir, I sometimes let that question be answered for reasons that are completely different, I believe, than why you want them in. I am not going to explain that because you can't, I don't have you can't to say explain why, that. What's my reason for asking um, it? Well, I believe you've made it very clear, sir. So here's the bottom I, line. I don't. One of my roles is to be the umpire. Then you got to right? be fair, Your Honor. You're a public I servant. Need, I am fair, and I'm no, going to follow not. the you're rules not being of fair. evidence. Your Honor, that this is why I say that. Unfettered questioning this is of why witnesses I say that. that are not relevant or that call for hearsay or for a variety of other reasons that are speculative. There's a whole host of reasons in the rules of evidence, sir, that require me to make those determinations. I, you're not I, being fair. I respect you're not that being you fair, might though. not think it's always fair, but it's I not. disagree with the characterization. I think it has more to do with your lack of understanding of the rules of evidence and the rules of procedure, which you knowingly and freely and voluntarily and deliberately made a choice to represent yourself. And, and as you keep I saying that because that it sounds good on the record, but it's not, it's not accurate. You accept it. When you gave me the paperwork, Your Honor, I, I gave not, it back to I'm you. I'm not going in. I didn't I, say that, sir, so we can go back and rehash all of those things. But you know you accepted right? the way that I gave you the paperwork back. So once and you I accept that. And I made findings that, on the record, which I will stand by, sir. So and I'm not, that, I'm not we're gonna arguing, take, we're I'm gonna not take arguing your findings. I I'm not arguing break. the findings, I'm Your sure Honor. You need to come for I would like to get through one more you gotta, witness today. You got to you got to call it fair. You got
<laughs> Sorry, Teresa. Thank you. Be seated. I don't need an all rise when it's like that. before before I have the jury brought out and the state calls its next witness I want to bring to the party's attention that the court just now issued a decision and order uh, in this case I've signed it uh, Madam Clerk is pulling it through and I will provide the parties with a written copy here in court it addresses the matter of subject matter jurisdiction so we're going to address it no, I've issued an order. I'm going to give it to you. That's why I'm addressing it. You can review it later, um, but there's a written decision now denying your motion to dismiss. So is, it, is that including verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction? Because it has yet to be verified or proven. Mr. Brooks, you keep making that statement, but it's a misstatement of the requirements in the law. So it doesn't um, have to be proven? You are going to get a written decision. That's how I'm addressing this. And then I'm going to have the jury brought out and just providing courtesy copies to the parties as I uh, had an opportunity to finalize that over the break. Uh, set for value and return for value is document. Thank you for noting that. All right, bring the jury out. State has its next witness, I presume, ready yes. to go? Yep. All right. When the jury's brought out, you may call the witness. Is that verified proof that you have subject matter jurisdiction? The decision and order speaks for itself, sir. Is it verified proof that you have it? Sir, I believe it answers your questions. I, I don't believe Unequivocally, so. Unequivocally. There's no ver verified proof proving yet. Yeah, it's the same thing. There's no verified proof if, if we're in common law or admiralty law. What, what court is this? 
Sir, I believe your answers will be in that decision and order. I don't believe so. Well, have you read it yet? I don't have to. Okay. I well, accept it for there. value and return for value, so. All right, they're in there, sir. It's a final order. For Verify proof is in there? Verify proof so is in there? So if you'd there? like to challenge that, uh, you can take that up with the appellate courts. Verify proof is in there? All right. Because I don't think it is. Proof of claim is not in there either. No one has a claim. Seated. Statement calls next witness. It calls, calls Carlos Arachiga. All right, good afternoon, Mr. Arachiga. If you would please make your way to the witness stand. It is all the way up near me, to the right of me. It is up one riser. When you get there, please remain standing. Raise your right hand, and my clerk, Teresa, will swear you in. Do you solemnly swear that the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you, sir. Please have a seat. First thing I will ask you to do is to state your first and last names for the record and spell each. Um, my name is uh, Carlos Arechiga Nolasco is my second last name. Uh, C-A-R-L-O-S, Carlos, and then A-R-E-C-H-I-G-A, Arechiga. And then Nolasco, N-O-L-A-S-C-O. Thank you. Go ahead, your witness. Thank you. Uh, sir, back in November of 2021, were you living here in the city of Waukesha? Yes. What was your home address on November 21st of 2021? Uh, 338 Maple Avenue, um, second unit or upper unit. Okay, that's a duplex? It's a duplex, yeah. Were you home uh, at 338 Maple in the upper unit? on the afternoon of that day, the 21st? Yes. Do you recall uh, at some point hearing a noise or something that was out of place outside of your window? Yeah, during that time I was sitting down and to my left um, is a window that looks down to the driveway and um, when I was sitting down I heard like a big screech, scratch, sort of kind of like a, just a rough scratch of either metal or whatever. And as soon as I look out, because um, the window's right there, I just <coughs> peeped open the blinds and um, I was able to see that um, there was a vehicle that I had never recognized. Um, and as soon as I looked over, I was able to see just somebody being able to get a, uh, just jump over the hood of the car, kind of uh, dash away. And when I saw the car, I just um, saw that it was really beat up. And my first instinct was, uh, like, who is this? I hope our cars are okay. Wasn't really sure what was going on. Um, you, since uh, we, sorry. Cut you off there. Could you describe that the vehicle for us that you saw in the driveway? It was a red vehicle, um, SUV, bigger, not a sedan, okay. uh, not a truck, not a pickup truck. It was just a red SUV. When you looked out your second story window at the driveway and you saw the vehicle, at that time, could you see whether there was any damage to the vehicle? Yeah. I answered that already. Um, overruled. Said it was May beat up. Answer. Um, yeah, I saw damage to the vehicle. Um, it was mostly at the hood of the car. Um, you can see uh, damage to the front windshield as well. Um, I was able to even see um, sort of kind of like a lit up headband on the rear view mirror or the side view mirror uh, kind of hanging right about uh, kind of inside or on it, I guess you can say. Uh, when you looked out the window, had the SUV already come to a stop or was it still moving? It was at a complete stop when I looked out the window. Okay. The person you described earlier, where did you first see that person? Um, already outside of the vehicle, like I said, jumping out, mostly over the hood of the car. Um, and as soon as that happened, I instinctively kind of uh, just shut down the blind. Um, and since we live in a duplex, 
I thought it was somebody from downstairs that maybe crashed into one of our cars, maybe uh, they caused an accident, and um, I tried contacting the people downstairs right away. So I, I wasn't really uh, in much of a threat, I guess you can say, but I was just confused at the moment. Okay. We'll come back to that. I want to ask you a couple more questions about this person that you saw. Mm -hmm. uh, was this person directly below you in your vantage point, or was it off to the side? Um, it was more... Um, overruled. He may answer. It was more towards the side. It uh, wasn't really below me. Um, sort of leaving my point of view from the window. Um, Did yeah. you see what direction that person went after they jumped over the hood of the SUV? It would have been, it would have been sort of straight ahead. Um, kind of towards the left of the driveway, so I couldn't see them anymore. Um, we have two windows, one in the bedroom, one in the living room, and if I was in the bedroom, I would have been able to see exactly where they went, but they just went left from my point of view. Um, so would that have been toward or away from Maple? Um, that would have been a witness. Um, hold on, if there's an objection, wait Sorry. until I rule on it. Um, and overruled, uh, the witness may answer. Um, it was towards Maple Avenue. Did you see that person reach Maple Avenue? Um, no. Why not? Um, <laughs> the point of view from the window doesn't really let me see towards Maple Avenue uh, or Maple Avenue altogether. Okay. After the person went out of your field of view, <coughs> is that when you tried to contact your downstairs neighbor? Yeah, because um, I assumed that it was maybe somebody they invited over because uh, I really didn't recognize the person and I tried contact contacting them to make sure uh, they knew who it was or who the person yeah, was. From the moment you first looked out your window and saw that SUV until the moment that the person we've been talking about went out of your field of view, did you see any <coughs> other people out your, outside your window? Uh, no. Did you at some point go downstairs to investigate? Yeah. Um, <coughs> That was during me going downstairs. I was trying to contact the people downstairs because they always invite people over. Um, and that was a week <coughs> I've never seen in my life. Um, so I assume maybe it was one of their friends, somebody. So when I went downstairs, I sort of came to the front of the vehicle. I was able to see the damage up front. The hood was uh, really beat up. You could see it steaming a little bit. Um, so when I contacted the neighbors, they... Um, one of them actually told me that um, they'll ask around. He came back to me. He said, that's nobody's car. They all came out. We were all kind of surrounding it, and we were still confused as to why the car was there. And at that same time, when we were looking at the damage of the vehicle, um, people were leaving uh, downtown Waukesha from Maple Avenue from the library going the other way. And some of them were running. Some of them looked scared. Some of them... Uh, What's it called? One of them told us to call the cops. Um, we were kind of confused as to why, and uh, well, mostly because we saw the vehicle, and we tried not touching it. We tried just leaving it be. One of the people from downstairs called the cops, and we waited a little bit. And as soon as the cops showed up, they told us to go back inside, and I was sort of inside for the rest of the afternoon until the car was removed. When you first started standing around the vehicle with uh, the other people you talked about. Do you remember approximately how many people were standing around the SUV? Um, it would have been, it would have been the the three main neighbors that we have from downstairs, uh, um, two uh, two of their girlfriends, I believe, and then two of their other friends of would have maybe been around like six, seven, uh, and then my mom was also down uh, with me, and then I was there with her, but um, yeah, we tried not really interacting with the vehicle we were telling everybody not to interact with it. And was it at that time while you were standing with those people around the SUV <coughs> that you saw other people running down Maple? Yes. And what direction were they running? Uh, they were heading towards uh, sort of la, the, the restaurant La Estacion, go, um, heading towards kind of like the train tracks, uh, leaving from the library uh, from Maple Avenue. So would that be uh, from, would that be running north or running south? Um, I guess if you're if you're looking at downtown Waukesha, um, I guess that would be north. Um, I guess if south is heading towards downtown, north would be heading away from it. Okay, let's put up... Um,
display for the witness only, exhibit number 130. Go ahead. And can we zoom in on the right middle of the screen? Objection, what's the relevancy? Well, I'm going to ask that you show the witness the map that does not have the annotations. So I'll sustain your objection. Do you want to tell me you want to turn it back on? Sure. Okay. Objection, what, what's being looked up that's not already in the exhibit? Look like something was being looked up. Yeah. I can't answer that question. I don't know. Is it exhibit? Is it looking a, for an, I, I guess on my objection would be: Is there an exhibit being shown, or is there being? There's something nothing shown to the witness right now. It's off. Um, so you objected. I sustained the objection, and so and I told the state not to show the map with annotations. Okay. So whatever they're doing in response to that, I can't something, answer. Something popped up on the screen to look like they was trying to Google something, and then now my screen is off now. So that wouldn't be an exhibit. I, I didn't see anything, so we can take that up later if need be, but um, let's keep going with the questioning of the witness, and we can deal with that later outside the presence of the jury. Just for the record, I know it's 140 exhibits, so it shouldn't be no more than that. Can't create exhibits right now. Well, we'll get to any legal issues later, so the state can continue, please. I'll try to clear this up without any more exhibits for Mr. Brooks. When you are standing in your driveway facing Maple Avenue, if you wanted to go to downtown Waukesha, would you go left or right? No, no. Objection. Uh, that was asked and answered. He asked north or south, and he already answered that question. This question has not been asked or answered, so your objection is overruled. The witness may answer. And if, I'm sorry, you can answer that again. Um, it was left, yeah. And if you wanted to go to La Estación or the train tracks, would you go left or right? It would be right. So the people who were running past your house on Maple, were they running towards downtown, or were they running towards Las Desiana? Towards Las Desiana. Sorry, is there an objection? Accent answered. Accent answered. Um, it was clarification, so uh, his answer may stand. The objection is overruled. Okay. Now, at the time that you were standing around the SUV with those other people, how much time had gone past between that, that time and the time that you first heard the noise and looked out your window upstairs? Objection, relevancy. Overruled. Um, I would say that it was maybe around three, two minutes, not even that much, because I still had to get my shoes and everything. I wanted to go downstairs, and at the same time, I was texting uh, the neighbor from downstairs. Um, so I would say a little bit of time passed by before I went downstairs. Okay. Can we please show for everyone exhibit number 65, a video which has previously been received? Go ahead. wait for a thumbs up from the bailiff. <clears throat> Do you recognize uh, the area that's depicted in this exhibit? Yeah. Tell us what we're looking at here. <clears throat> um, right now we're looking at uh, sort of the side of the building that's uh, or from Les Paul that's facing my house and facing Maple Avenue. Um, that um, house in the corner is uh, my neighbor's house. Uh, I know them as the Loxes. And uh, over there to the left where the uh, perimeter of the fence ends, that's my house with the brick sort of uh, kind of pillars and balcony uh, that'd be my house okay so I know I could see what the witness was pointing to We're gonna um, have so very well I just wanted it's kind of difficult for me to put that on the record so if you can have some further questioning that would be good sure that screen in front of you is a touch screen as long as you use your finger. Okay. can you circle your house for us um, it would be right here 
And we're at the uh, zero second timestamp on this, just for the record. Uh, and then if we could clear that, please. Now I'm going to ask Ms. Gussie to pull up the Zoom tool again. <coughs> And we've zoomed in on the top left quadrant of this photo, or of this video. Uh, if we could play here from the beginning. Objection, what's the relevancy here? Overruled, it's been admitted already. He testified his house was in At the 27 second mark, we pause there. Sir, do you recall? Uh, well, let me just back up there. Did you see on the video there uh, a, a figure emerging from your driveway? Yeah. Could you circle that figure for us? Right here. Okay, and thank you. Right there as well. Where? Yeah. And vehicle. what's the second thing you circled? Uh, just a vehicle. Okay. Let's clear those two circles, please. Does that figure? Understanding the limitations of how far away this camera is, does that figure appear to be consistent with the figure you saw hopping over the hood of the SUV? Objection. Speculative. Um, overruled, the witness may answer. Um, at the time of my sort of testimony, when I was, when we got a visit from uh, detectives, I, I told them that I did see a figure. I remember saying that he had a hoodie. At the, at the time, I told them that. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really sure of the color of it, and um, when we were, uh, when I was asked again the next morning, um, I I just told him that maybe it was like a like a gray or white, but I told him that maybe it was part of the stuff that I saw on top of the car. I remember seeing scarves on on top of the car, uh, that headband that was white with colors. So at the time it was like a flash, um, and I was, um, what's it called? I can see that I was sort of correct because it was a year ago and when I gave my testimony I said everything I could like that I remembered at that time which was um, person I saw had a hoodie on uh, wasn't really able to see them face to face uh, but I can see that they were sort of leaving the car jumping over the hood of the car and just kind of yeah okay and you did not see that person's face no okay um, Let's play just a couple more seconds here before we hit play, though. I just ask you to focus on the figure we've been talking about. And pause. At 31 seconds. Based on what you've seen so far in this exhibit, does that figure appear to be traveling in a path consistent with what you remember? Yeah, actually, you're saying you say you can't, you can't see the street from the window. Um. Overall, he may answer the way that that question was phrased. Um, when I mentioned the direction of the person that I saw leaving, um, facing my driveway, um, obviously there's an exit which connects that entryway where all the cars are parked, and then uh, our driveway where our garage is, and sort of the way that I saw the person leaving was towards the left of my field of view, which would be heading towards Maple Avenue. I'm not going to show for the witness only, please. Exhibit number 66. Do you recognize the photograph on the screen in front of you? Yeah. What is? What are we looking at here? Um, we're looking at the side of my house um, that faces um, kind of the other side of Maple Avenue, I guess you can say. Okay. Are um, we on the same side of your house? Uh, as the camera angle from the last exhibit? Um, no, we're not. On the other side? Yeah, the, the, other, the other camera on, t on the school building was facing the right side of the, of the house. This is facing the left side of the house. Is this how your house appeared on the night of November 21st, 2021? Yeah. Move exhibit 66 into evidence and ask to publish. Exhibit 66 is received, permission to publish is granted.
Do you see a vehicle in your driveway in this picture? <laughs> yeah, it's the red SUV that I described. Okay. We'll show now for the witness only, please, exhibit number 667. <coughs> do you recognize this exhibit? Yeah. <coughs> what are we looking at here? Um, we're looking at my driveway, um, and then my house is to the right, um, and sort of, this is kind of like the area that we were uh, sort of looking at the car from. We approached a little bit closer, but um, that's sort of um, what I saw that night. That is what I saw that night. Okay. And actually, Judge, just to be a little more efficient with time, I'm going to move through the rest of these photos and lay the foundation and then move them all in at once. Go ahead. That's right. All right. Uh, we'll show the witness only, please, 68. Do you recognize that photograph? Yeah. What are we looking at here? Um, we're looking at the car, uh, or the SUV, sorry, that um, in my driveway. Um, to the left, you can see a little bit of a, uh, kind of like a stump, a log. Um, and that those, I recognize a lot, those logs from the um, backyard of my neighbor's house. Uh, and it was sort of dragged all the way to our uh, driveway as well. We'll show the witness now, uh, Exhibit 69, please. What are we looking at in this photograph? Um, this is the, the other end of the driveway where uh, all of our cars are. Um, we can see to the left uh, one of our vehicles, the white SUV, and then the two vehicles, the blue uh, SUV, and then the um, sort of the brown uh, sedan is both those cars are not mine. They're our neighbors' uh, vehicles, but one of them's in the in the backyard, and one of them's in the driveway. Uh, exhibit seventy for the witness only, please. Do you recognize this photograph? Yeah, that's the other. Uh, that's the other vehicle um, from our neighbor's house. So all three; those are all their vehicles. Um, and um, if you look further down, um, you can see the other set of houses that are. Uh, um, what's it called? Or the other set of cars houses that are on the same street from my neighbor's house. Um, our backyards connect. Let's show the witness number 71, please. Objection. What's the relevancy of all these photos? Um, your objection to relevance is noted. It's overruled. Go ahead. Do you recognize what we're looking at in 71? Yeah. That, um, that house, uh, the White House, or sort of the the one that's not to the side, to the right, that's uh, my neighbor's house. Uh, and then to the right, that's sort of the back part of uh, our our house, first floor. <coughs> we show the witness number uh, 72, please. Do you, do you know what we're looking at in this picture? Yeah, um, right here, That those are sort of uh, some of the logs, or um, as I mentioned before, one of the logs that we um, <coughs> One of them was actually dragged into our uh, driveway, and they had a few of them, sort of, for, I'm assuming, sitting down, and um, <coughs> the, this whole area was kind of messed up. Uh, this part of the yard is not our part of the yard, it's our neighbor's uh, yard, but they had logs over there, and they were kind of just as decoration, and uh, looking at this area, when we went to go see, uh, one of them was missing, and everything else was kind of uh, beat up in that part of the yard. And Finally, uh, 73 for the witness only, please. You recognize what we're looking at here in exhibit... I'm sorry, there's no question. Where's the relevancy of this? What are we looking at? Um, your objection is noted. It's overruled. I believe the witness is going to explain. Um, you can see sort of remains of uh, like some of those logs uh, that they... or like those stumps of logs that they had um, and seems to be a, a car part. Uh, from the vehicle, or from the vehicle as well. Okay. Do exhibits 67 through 73 accurately portray um, your driveway, your backyard, and your neighbor's backyard as they looked the night of November 21st? Yeah. And you went outside and looked at these things yourself, correct? Um, yeah, I did. Um, we when before the cops sort of arrived, uh, when we were sort of hovering around the car. Uh, and my neighbors were contacting the police. Um, I was trying to see if any damage was done to our vehicles because that was our main concern since we had no idea what happened with the parade or anything. Um, we just tried to go see what happened to our driveway, what, uh, you know, uh, what we needed to worry about, but yeah.
I move exhibits 67 through 73 into evidence and request permission to publish. Objection. No relevancy. Court notes the objection. It's overruled. Uh, exhibits 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, and 73 are all received permission to publish. Grant it. Okay, we'll start publishing number 67, please. Can the jury let me know if the monitors are on in front of you? Not yet? Okay. red SUV we've been talking about correct yeah and we are facing if you're the person taking the picture right now are you facing towards Maple or away away from Maple Avenue okay uh, let's take a look at 68 please this is just a close-up view of that red SUV yeah objection leading sustained us to the form of the question what is this it is um, the red SUV uh, in my driveway uh, I'll beat up and you referenced a stump earlier when you were describing this <coughs> photograph. Can you, can you point that out for us? Maybe circle it for us? Um, Objection. Relevancy as to a stump. What does that have to do with um, Overruled. The witness may answer. Um, that stump of clog would be sort of on uh, that part of the picture. The left side of the picture? Yeah, the left side of the picture. Can we please clear that, Madam Clerk? Was that stump in that position in your driveway before you saw this red SUV? No. Relevancy. Overruled, it's relevant. The witness may answer. Um, no. Okay, let's take a look at exhibit 69, please. Mm -hmm. So what direction have we moved as we go from exhibit 68 to 69? Um, we have moved more back of the driveway. We have moved uh, looking instead of the left side of the house, we're looking at the left back side of the house. So we're moving away from Maple? We're moving away from Maple Avenue. Okay, and you already talked about these three cars. Can you just remind us what, what these three cars are? Um, so um, that white SUV, that's uh, one of our vehicles. <clears throat> the blue SUV is uh, one of my neighbor's vehicles, as well as the um, brown sedan as well, uh, as we can see from this picture. Do you know if any of those three vehicles sustained damage on November 21st? Objection. Hearsay. Um, overruled, he was asked if he knew, not what he heard. Objection, um, speculation. Um, overruled. Um, from when we were looking back um, during that area, when we saw our neighbor's yard, when we saw everything, um, <clears throat> I couldn't really uh, see uh, like damage right away from any of our vehicles. However, uh, it's not in this image. Uh, it's in the other image um, that I was shown earlier. There's a black SUV to the right of that uh, brown sedan. Uh, that vehicle uh, did have a little bit of a uh, sort of sort of some damage. Uh, what's it called? But apart from that, no, everything else was fine. Okay. Let's move on to Exhibit 70, please. Objection, what's the relevancy of this? Well, the exhibits have been received, so the statement questioned the witness on them. What direction have we moved from the last picture to this picture? We are now towards the back of uh, uh, my, my uh, building, or my house. And did your, the person who took the picture, did we turn to the right or to the left or not at all? Um, they, we, we moved a little bit more towards the left, uh, just getting a better angle of the back side of the house. But now we're facing to the right? Oh uh, yeah, we're facing right. Uh, I can rephrase. Go ahead. Do you know where Prospect is? Uh, Prospect, uh, yeah. Prospect is, uh, uh, it's a one-way street. Uh, you can't enter from Maple side, but you can enter from the back side of Prospect. Uh, Do you see a street light in this photograph? Yes. What street is that street light on? Uh, that's uh, Prospect. Okay. The one-way street. 
And the red, or excuse me, the black SUV you talked about a, a moment ago, is, is that in this photograph? Uh, yeah, uh, that uh, SUV right there. That's the SUV you described as having been damaged? It was uh, honestly not that much, uh, just sort of kind of like the front of, of the SUV. Um, there was a vehicle, however, uh, from uh, if there's a there was another image as well, um, looking at sort of the area, sort of the path that was between uh, the Lox's house and the backyard. Uh, that one did sustain uh, some scratches. Uh, if we go to the next <coughs> photograph, we get at 71, please. Okay. See the street light again? Yeah. Is that the same street light we saw in Exhibit 70? Objection. Answered that already. Same street light, same question, basically. Different picture. Your objections noted. It's overruled. The witness may answer. It is. Do you see an orange cone in this photograph? The Objection. Me. Relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Uh, I do. What, if anything, do you see in the immediate vicinity of that orange cone? Objection. Uh, relevancy. Overruled. The witness may answer. Um, in that sort of area, um, I see um, the, the black SUV. Uh, right in front of it, I see um, some of those uh, stumps of logs that uh, I mentioned before. Uh, one that we saw previously was uh, in my driveway, but um, some of those were kind of left behind but moved from place. Uh, from their original spot, um, and um, yeah. Can we zoom in on the middle of this photograph, please? Do you recognize an object uh, within a few inches of that cone? Uh, Objection. Yeah. Speculation. Overruled. The witness may answer. Um, I do. Well, um, what's it called? I I can see what it is, but I don't personally recognize uh, it. When you say you don't personally recognize it, what do you mean? Um, leading. Objection. I've, leading. Overruled. He may answer. I've never really seen it. Uh, um, it looks to be like a like a beanie, uh, but I've never really seen it. But <coughs> our family doesn't own it. We don't own it. It's okay. not ours. So you've never seen it in that backyard before? No. We zoom back out, please, and move to Exhibit 71. Excuse me, 72. These are the stumps you talked about earlier? Yeah. What direction is the photographer facing now? Um, where as we were facing sort of uh, turning right, or I guess we were facing the left side of the building, now we're facing the right side of the building, the same side that um, the video camera from Les Paul was facing uh, in the previous video. Okay, where's Prospect in relation to the photographer? Uh, prospect would be behind uh, the photographer. Okay. Is this what these stumps looked like? Uh, Earlier in the day on November 21st, before you saw the red SUV? Objection. Relevancy. Overruled. Um, they do not, no, or they did not. Uh, they were set in place uh, on the ground and they were sort of a little bit more together because they were like a seating area for uh, my neighbors. Okay. Let's move to exhibit 73, please. The car part you referenced earlier, is that what we're looking at here? Yes. And to your recollection, was that car part in your neighbor's backyard before you saw the red SUV on November 21st? Objection. Speculation. Overruled. Um, no. Um, uh, my neighbor's backyard is pretty well kept up. Uh, they have a really nice backyard and uh, they don't have any garbage, no nothing in their backyard. We now, so just for the witness, uh, exhibit 143. Do you recognize uh, the vehicle in this photograph? 
Yeah, this is the uh, this is the vehicle that I mentioned that sustained a, a little bit more damage, and it was uh, it was like I mentioned before, it was through the pathway that uh, that sort of connected the Lox's house and uh, sort of uh, their collection of or sort of their uh, parked vehicles as well. And where in the vehicle do you see damage? The front, the back, both, or neither? Uh, Leading the, objection. Overruled. The witness may answer. Um, it is on the back uh, side of the vehicle, uh, towards the left, uh, or towards the driver's side, back left. Can we show the witness only, please, Exhibit 144? you recognize this photograph? Yeah. You see the same vehicle? Uh, yes, it is the same vehicle. And what are we looking at here? Um, we're looking at now the uh, driver's side still, but uh, the front side <coughs> of the vehicle. And now the witness only, please, 145. You recognize that photograph? Yeah, this is the, this is sort of the, um, like I said, the SUV, and to the right of it, you can see another car. Um, they have more vehicles uh, sort of parked in that area. And to the left, you can see sort of a balcony area. Uh, that's sort of like that little um, area, I guess you can see a little path that connects uh, that sort of driveway or parking area towards their yard. Uh, and it's narrow. Are exhibits 143, 144, and 145 accurate photographs depicting the scene as you recall from that night? Yeah. Move exhibits 143, 144, and 145 into evidence and ask to publish. Objection. Rather than see. Brother Vinci, to this matter. All right. The exhibits are received. That's 143, 144, 145. Permission to publish is granted. <coughs> okay, we're looking at 143. This is the vehicle you described? Yeah. Okay, we've got it up on the jury screens too. Now we'll take a look at 144, please. <coughs> this is the front of that same vehicle. Objection. Okay. Relevancy to this matter. Overruled. The exhibits have been received. Um, it, it is. Um, it, now this is the the front part of the of the vehicle, driver's side still, uh, yeah. closest to the the house. 145, please. The balcony on the left, that's your next door neighbor's house? Um, yes. Uh, and then to the, to the right of it are, uh, is one of, the, uh, one of their vehicles. And um, yeah, to the left is uh, their balcony. Um, we can still see it in a previous image that's facing Prospect as well. Okay. And this is the same, this infinity we see in this photograph, that's the same vehicle we saw in the last two photographs. Objection. We. Um, overrule. Who may answer? Um, it is, yes. Prospect is where in relation to the photographer? Objection, uh, relevancy. Overruled. Um, the, the photographer, er, um, prospect is to the back of the photographer. <clears throat> so if you were to drive a vehicle between that porch and that infinity vehicle, straight through that alley that we're looking at right now, you would be driving toward or away from your house? Objection, hearsay. Overruled. Objection. Speculation. Overruled. Um, if you're driving in between, um, if you're driving away from Prospect, uh, in between the balcony, uh, in between the SUV, heading uh, that way, uh, where the camera is facing, you'd be heading towards uh, our backyard, our driveway, or, or the backside of our driveway. <coughs> all right. Thank you. That's all I have for this witness. Thank you. Any cross? Yep. So seeing uh, the damage to the SUV that was parked in your driveway, uh, it would be fair to say that the, the hood was pretty jacked up, would, would that be fair to say? Um, yeah, uh, if, uh, if we're talking about the, the red SUV? The, the vehicle in your driveway. Um, there's multiple vehicles in my driveway. The the one the one that's specifically in your driveway. Uh, in C 
68. Exhibit 68. We can put that up. Where? Is it 68? You see on your screen, Mr. Burke? Yeah. Is that yes. the one you want him to talk about? Yes. Go yes, ahead. Yes. 68 is published. And for the record, I do not identify by that name or consent to being called it. For the record. Can you see it on your screen? Um, yeah, the image I can see uh, two SUVs, uh, our white SUV, and then the red SUV that I mentioned is uh, that's pretty well beat up. It's fair to say that that hood is pretty beat up. Um, you can say it, yeah. And you said you observed the driver of that vehicle jump over the hood. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily jump over the hood. Uh, like I like I said, um, sort of jumping over the hood. You can say like kind of like leaving, kind of going, sort of. It's a little bit hard to explain, but um, not necessarily not necessarily sliding over the hood. Um, sort of going in front of the vehicle, uh, sort of evading it. Um, so, what what would you characterize as a jump? Um. As a jump, I guess you can say, um, definition-wise, jumping is just jumping up and down, but colloquially, I guess we can say jumping over the hood of the car could be uh, sort of evading the vehicle, going uh, away from it, staying close to it, uh, but sort of still being able to move in a quick fashion. So would it be safe to say uh, evading the vehicle? With well, let me back up. What do you mean by evading? Would that be trying to dis distance themselves from the vehicle? Or what, what would you define as evading? Um, evading would be sort of trying to get away. So if you have a certain path, you can try to move to the side, uh, step aside, kind of jump over it, I guess you can say. Um, and from the image, we can see that um, the damage not only is attached to the vehicle, but there's some damage that's sort of spread out from the vehicle as well. So um, jumping over it, stepping to the side of it, sort of falls within that same definition of uh, jumping over the a car, sort of evading it. So that that's that falls in your, with your definition of jumped over the hood with, with me. Would that be mm -hmm. fair to say? You can say. And you said at one point, when, when observing this, you closed the blinds at one point? Yeah, um, our blinds are, they they were closed. Um, it's we really don't have a uh, like anything to look at apart from the building, apart from our driveway. Uh, so um, when I heard the vehicle, or when I heard, obviously I wasn't really sure if it was a vehicle. Uh, when I heard a big scratch, uh, sort of a a, a halt, a, a scratch. Uh, as I looked out, as I peeped over the blinds, I was able to see uh, the vehicle, and I was able to see. Uh, uh, the person sort of uh, evading, jumping over the car, uh, going away from the car. You said you heard a scratch. What, what would you define that as? Um, obviously not a scratch that you can say, um, um, maybe not like a chalkboard one, but sort of if you can hear uh, maybe like metal or maybe something on concrete, um, I guess you can define it as a scrape, I guess you can say a little bit better. Well, so was it? Was it a loud crash? Um, you couldn't really say it was a crash. You can you can hear uh, the the sound that I heard. I defined it as a scratch, or I guess you can say a scrape because so it was. I'm sorry, it, you can continue. Because it was it was more it, it it was a little bit longer than just kind of like a big crash and it ended. You can hear something uh, scraping. So like a scrape. Yeah. Um. But not allow like bang. Um, not necessarily, no. <laughs> and how long would you estimate you were you were observing before you closed the blinds? Um, I would say I would give it like a good like six seconds. I would say six five seconds. Um, yeah, it wasn't that long because. Um, like I mentioned, I thought it was somebody from downstairs. I wasn't really 
Uh, I was more concerned about what happened uh, in our driveway just because I wasn't really sure what was going on. Did anything, did anything get damaged in your driveway? Um, in our driveway, um, there was, I guess you can say, damage in however you may define it, like um, like that log that we can see in the image was sort of dragged into our driveway. Um, there was uh, oil left in our driveway. Um, there was debris left in our driveway as well. Um, and if you could sort of count uh, our backyard, uh, our backyard was pretty well beat up, uh, sort of, um, sort of like you can see with uh, our neighbor's backyard, uh, the grass was sort of kind of beat up. Nobody really drives vehicles through that area, so um, it's pretty well kept. So it was more like uh, oil, logs, pieces of wood, that, that sort of thing? Um, yeah, things were out of place uh, from, uh, from when we usually look at our backyard or how it was uh, that morning. And you stated that you uh, you you can tell the general direction of Maple Street from your window, but you can't actually see it. Um, yeah, I, so that be that be fair to say? Um, yeah, because um, you know I, I know where my house is located, and I know what street it's facing, and I know uh, what street or what is to the left of my house, and I know what's to the right of my house, so I know what general directions are around my. The house. So if if leaving your driveway, going towards Maple Street, if someone would would to go right or left at that point, you wouldn't be able to to tell. Um, from if we're speaking specifically from my driveway, if you were heading left um, away from my driveway, not towards the garage uh, or towards that sort of garage area. If you're heading left, you are heading towards Maple Avenue. There's no other way uh, from it. And, and once coming from your driveway, if someone was headed that way, once they got to Maple, would you be able to see them at that point? Um, not, not on Maple Street, no. Uh, like I said, I know where the general direction as to where Maple is, but I can't really directly see Maple Avenue from uh, the window that I was at. The window that's um, to the left of, or to the left of my window uh, is uh, is sort of closer to that street, but I wasn't there. And you didn't get a description of the driver. Um, uh, what was the question? Sorry, you you didn't get a description of the driver. Of the driver, yeah. When we when we were question or when uh, when I was questioned by the um, by the detectives that visited us, um, I remember giving the, a good description of, of the driver. Uh, I said that he had a hoodie on. He, um, I remember mentioning that it was either a, a, light, uh, a light gray or white. Uh, like I mentioned before, um, since it happened in a flash, uh, some of the white that I saw was uh, part of that scarf that you can see on top of the hood. And in a previous image, we can see something hanging from the side view mirror, which is also a white uh, I guess you can say a white accessory uh, that has uh, sort of like a light colored band. And so at the moment, uh, those are some of the colors that popped up uh, during my uh, recollection uh, when the detective showed up. And um, I could describe the driver as being very able to um, run, uh, move from the vehicle. Um, um, I was pretty uh, sure as to uh, it being not someone very young, maybe not, uh, maybe not an older individual, uh, sort of physically capable of being able to run away and sort of still uh, present within the moment of realizing uh, what happened and sort of uh, leaving the situation. And you made that determination just by uh, five or six seconds of observation out of your window? Yeah. You testified earlier that seeing you saw someone, but you didn't see him face to face. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. And 
the longs that ended up in, in your yard, um, you, you stated that they came from your neighbor's yard. Would that be fair to say? Correct. Do you know what they used those logs for? Um, the, they were sort of placed around. Um, they have a few uh, decorations around their uh, yard. They have a fireplace. They have some seating areas. Um, those logs were sort of just there to uh, sort of sit, sit down because they're little stumpy logs. Um, they had some sort of, uh, I mean, as you can see uh, from the image, they're sort of put together by some metal band. So they're um, not really just there for use, but more they were just kind of put there for them to sit around. So pretty much just if they're out there in the yard, they may use them to sit on some, some of that nature? Correct, yeah. You recall how many logs were out there? Um, not, uh, not necessarily. Um, I, I can say maybe uh, four or three. Um, I, I knew they were there, um, but I couldn't really uh, tell you the exact number. Uh, but I have a general idea of what's in their yard. And you stated at some point um, you and friends or family member, I'm not sure which one you said, but y'all kind of gathered around the vehicle at, at some point? Um, yeah, um, when I, uh, I was the first one to head on down because I was the, the first one to see uh, sort of the vehicle. When I went out, uh, I tried contacting my neighbors uh, from downstairs they tried investigating like if anybody had a, a red car, a red SUV or anything and he came back to me and said no and I told him that there was there's a vehicle in our driveway and so everybody came out, everybody was sort of looking at the vehicle and everybody was pretty confused because it, nobody, rec nobody recognized it as theirs or anybody they knew. So it was more, it was more of a let's go see what he's talking about and figure out if he belongs to anyone type of thing. That was the main purpose. We were trying to figure out uh, what was going on because uh, we never recognized the vehicle. We've never seen it before, or I've never seen it before. And as soon as I described it to them, they've never seen it before. And uh, they they have quite a few people around uh, that visit them, or they had quite a few people that used to visit them a lot. And even then, they couldn't rec recognize the vehicle. So what, what did you guys do from that point after coming out and kind of all collectively observing the vehicle what, what did you do from that point as soon as that happened um, not not that long away we uh, contacted the police because we were concerned of like sort of the vehicle as to why it was left there or who um, who left the vehicle there um, and so um, when we started seeing people uh, leaving uh, or heading down from Maple Avenue away from a downtown Waukesha uh, we started kind of maybe speculating that it was that it was probably involved in because uh, everybody knew that there was a parade going on and we were we started uh, maybe recollecting that maybe it was part of the parade or maybe something happened especially because when we were looking at people uh, leaving the parade some of them looked scared some of them were kind of walking faster than usual um, some running uh, we we were a little bit concerned we were just trying to figure out what was going on so it'd be fair to say at that point you, it was just confusion. No, no knowledge of, no knowledge of anything happening at that point. Um, since we weren't at the parade, um, no. Uh, at, at that moment, we just saw a vehicle in our driveway, and we were trying to figure out what was going on. Do you recall what you were doing right when you looked out the blinds? Like, what, what were you doing leading up to hearing yep. this scrape, and then? Looking out the blinds. Like I said, uh, since um, since I was when I explained uh, first when I uh, heard the vehicle and um, in the first questioning, uh, I mentioned that I was just kind of sitting down. I, um, we have a chair or not a chair, but we have the kind of like a recliner couch, and I was just kind of just having a regular afternoon. And um, since I'm right by the window, as soon as I heard something, I was able to uh, try to investigate what was that noise or what that noise was. And. At the point that you uh, call law enforcement, uh, do you recall how long before law enforcement came to the scene? 
Um, I personally didn't call law enforcement. Like I said, uh, our neighbors called law enforcement. Um, so I couldn't really say an exact time, uh, but they were there fairly quickly. Uh, and as soon as they arrived, we were just told to get inside back in the building. Um, I'm sorry, can you clear the uh, e exhibit? I, I, I forgot it was. It happens. <laughs> I forgot it was. Like... Um, do you recall who took the photographs? Uh, the photographs, no. Were they part of the uh, collective group that all kind of met up to figure out what was going on with the vehicle? Um, I don't, nobody was actually taking photographs during that time. Um, they, they were, uh, the neighbors downstairs were, uh, sort of, what's it called? Uh, they were just kind of inside the building and as soon as I, uh, left the building, we were just kind of looking at it and we were trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, at the moment we were just trying to see if we can get help because we were really sure what was going on. So the, the photographs that you saw on the exhibits today, that was this your first time seeing those photographs? Um, the photographs specifically, uh, yes, but the vehicle and the whole scenery, uh, no. No, just the, just the photographs, was, <clears throat> which you saw today, was that your first time seeing those photographs? These photographs? Yes. Uh, no. So you've seen them before today? Um, I was able, to, I was, like I said, I was able to see sort of the, the uh, what's it called? the whole situation and uh, I was able to uh, sort of, uh, you know, be aware of what was going on. I'm, I'm, I'm asking specifically about the exhibits, the photos. Had you seen those before today? Before today, um, yes. And do you recall uh, who showed them to you? Um, it was mostly just uh, detectives trying to figure out uh, what was going on, uh, sort of that line of questioning that uh, I went through. And you did say you don't know who took the photographs. Do you recall if the law enforcement that came to the scene took the photos? Um, um, when we were asked to go back inside, yeah. Um, when they were trying to investigate what was going on, uh, there was uh, investigators taking uh, photographs and people trying to figure out what was going on. So to the best of your knowledge, you do know who took the photographs? Um, not personally, no. There was people taking photographs, but... So, multiple officers? Yes. And that that night of the incident when the vehicle was found and the law enforcement officers were taking the photos, did you see the photos at that time? Uh, no. And would it be fair to say that you were subpoenaed to come and testify today? Um, I was subpoenaed to come testify. Do you recall by whom? Um, by the, uh, by, uh, what would you say? Just by this, not the state, but the, the city of Waukesha or the town of Waukesha. District attorney's office, an officer or? Um, just. Uh, when I received the subpoena letter, it was just from Waukesha. Uh, what's it called? Not really, I, I don't recall any name specifically on the letter, but uh, I just remembered I was being subpoenaed by the city of Waukesha. Do you recall when you received that subpoena? Uh, maybe about, uh, maybe like a month uh, before, or maybe two months before this, uh, before this happened, or before. Uh, before, the, before today, you, you mean? Uh, I wouldn't say exactly before today, but maybe before the trial, uh, sometime in August. The, the uh, neighbor who's, uh, as we saw in the photos in the exhibit, there was a neighbor whose car has scrapes. Do you recall if they filed any claim in regards to the scrapes? Um, in regards to the scrapes, uh, no, just because um, 
They they weren't actually uh, there. I think they were uh, they were actually at the parade, and since uh, all of since all of Maple was kind of shut down as soon as the police showed up, uh, I think they had trouble getting in or getting to their house. Uh, so they uh, got there late as soon as everything was cleared up, uh, and uh, the day after, um, they sort of they were able to see uh, the damage to their vehicle, and they were able to sort of. Uh, after that whole situation, they sort of knew what what had happened, and they probably figured that um, the damage that was caused was probably from the or from the vehicle that was in the parade. So, I don't think filing a claim was probably their main concern at the at the moment because, yeah. Um, do you recall having any uh, conversations with the the owner of the the vehicle at at some point? Maybe they may have wanted to ask if anyone heard what had transpired. Do you recall having any conversations with him about um, what happened that night? Objection, hearsay. Grounds. Well, the way that he asked it is just did they have conversations? I'll let the witness answer that specific question without disclosing the content first. Did you have any conversations? Um, uh, after, it was the day after the, uh, the incident that um, I talked to the neighbor. Was anyone else uh, present in uh, your home th the night of the incident that may have seen anything to your recollection? Um, not necessarily. Uh, like I said, our uh, our neighbors were downstairs and I had to contact them to let them know what was going on. Uh, I I told, uh, like I said, my, my little brother was there, but he has autism, so he he's in his own world. Uh, and my mom was uh, also in the building, so, and then she was sort of confused as to what was going on. Uh, because I had to go tell her, like, hey, like someone caused damage to our cars. Like, let's go, let's go see what happened. And uh, what's it called? Uh, as soon as as soon as I did that, everybody was aware. Uh, but yeah, was was uh, was your family vehicles damaged? Um, our vehicles, no. After you contacted your, your neighbors who were downstairs, uh, do you recall anyone t telling you that their vehicles may have been damaged in any way? Um, at, at the moment of the incident? Yes. Um, no, they were all, um, at the moment of the incident, like I said, we were all sort of uh, looking at uh, the vehicle and we were sort of uh, walking around. Um, there was a select few of us that went back. Uh, and then we were sort of seeing some of the damage that was uh, made to the yard and uh, what's it called? We, um, as soon as they were calling the cops, um, none of them really, uh, you know, um, said that they had like damage to their car. I could, I could see uh, uh, part of the black SUV that was sort of uh, a little bit touched up, but it wasn't as bad as the Infinity that was uh, in my neighbor's house. Uh, <coughs> Uh, after the law enforcement came to the scene, I'm, I'm sure that you had brief conversations with them. Did uh, anyone from law enforcement ever uh, contact you again after that point about additional information that maybe you missed that night? Um, at the at the exact moment of the situation, uh, as soon as law enforcement showed up, we were told immediately to head back up up to our our house uh, back inside. Uh, a little bit after. Uh, we were contacted by some detectives, and um, that was that same night. We were just contacted once, and then the day after the incident, we were contacted again. So uh, any time after the day after, did you have any uh, contact with any law enforcement about the incident of that, that night? Uh, that day after I did, yeah. And then after that night? Uh, after, after that, yeah. Was that... 
a ways off a, a, a little time after or was it still relatively close to the event? Um, so the the first times that I contact or that I was sort of uh, contacted by detectives was the day of, uh, the day after, and uh, what's it called? And I was contacted later on uh, by uh, sort of uh, victim help, but we never really reached out. Uh, but apart from that, uh, not. Uh, and then uh, I was contacted again uh, before the trial as well. Uh, so that would be a little bit closer to the trial. Um, you. You just said victim help. Can you explain what, what victim help is? Um, well, I couldn't really specify uh, what what it is because I really never reached out. But we were reached out by uh, by by um, I, I don't know if they were or in the organization or just help from uh, from the county for people that suffered from the parade. Um, and we were also reached out because we were involved in the situation, uh, just because our our house was. Uh, sort of in the whole in the whole mess and right, with uh, the we sort of vehicle being found we in your driveway we were sort of pre uh, pretty shaken up about the situation too so um, when we talked to detectives we were all pretty shaken up I was pretty shaken up um, sort of scared sort of uh, sort of frustrated too um, so uh, we'll why did you uh, follow up with victim care if you if you had you know, a few concerns after the incident. What, what prompted you not to follow up with victim care? Objection. Grounds. Relevance. Um, on relevance grounds, I'll sustain the objection. Are you aware uh, who the plaintiff is in this matter? Uh, yes. And who would the plaintiff be? Uh, plaintiff being sort of, uh, or I guess you can say the defendant, uh, Daryl Brooks. The defendant would be the plaintiff? Or not the defendant, but uh, a plaintiff or uh, I guess, what's it called? Uh, could you uh, kind of sort of the plaintiff? Elaborate? The plaintiff would be who is actually bringing the claim. Oh, the plaintiff be, uh, bringing the claim? Who's bringing the claim would oh, be the plaintiff. Um, that would be the this, uh, city of Waukesha, sorry. The city of Waukesha? Um, I'm, I'm confused by the questioning, uh, if I'm gonna be completely honest. And I'll object and move to strike the line of questioning for relevance. <coughs> well, he, answered. He, he answered it, may stand next question, please. <coughs> And you stated that at that time you you didn't uh, there was confusion about what was going on. So just so we're clear, you at that at that time you didn't learn any information about what had transpired at the parade at that time. Um, at that time, um, specifically, can you specify what time? At at the time that you observed the vehicle in your driveway and then had the initial. Um, um, I guess the friends and family kind of like. Oh, during that time window. During that time, yeah. During that time window, like you mentioned, as soon as I uh, witnessed the vehicle, I had no idea what was going on uh, in my driveway or what led to that vehicle being left in my driveway. Uh, and like I mentioned before, as soon as we, uh, we being our neighbors from downstairs and uh, uh, my mom, uh, we all went downstairs and we kind of looked at the vehicle and then we started. Uh, realizing what was going on uh, as soon as we saw people leaving the parade, uh, leaving away from downtown Waukesha, and uh, we were able to sort of uh, figure out what was uh, going on, but not necessarily like exactly what happened. And you stated you saw people uh, running from from the downtown area or from the other way. I, I can't remember which one you said, but you said you saw it was kind of like people were kind of all over the place. 
Um, not necessarily all over the place, I would say. Um, there was a cohesion as to the direction that people were uh, leaving or um, heading towards. They, it looked like people were heading towards, uh, not towards, but more away from downtown Waukesha. So, you say um, like a library from coming from the way of a library or something. Um, the library is closest to the downtown or to the downtown Waukesha <laughs> area. So they were heading away from that sort of general direction. You made a reference to they was going towards the direction where train tracks were? Um, yeah, so they'd be going away from Waukesha or downtown Waukesha. Do you recall if it, the, do you recall how many people it were? Was it a lot of people? Was it? There was quite a bit of people, yeah. Um, it wasn't just one person, two people. There was uh, people, there was uh, um some people carrying their children, uh, some some other uh, some other people kind of with strollers and stuff. So generally, like a crowd. I guess you can say, but they were all sort of still in the uh, in the street, sort of still walking uh, with uh, with all their belongings. Yeah. Did any one of them uh, mention what had happened at that time that you recall? We grounds grounds. Um. It does call for hearsay. Do you want to ask him that? You just want to know I if was, he talked to I was to them? asking, did he, to his recollection, did any one of the people that was moving away from the area, did they say anything that he recalls? Calls for hearsay. Do you want someone to sustain the objection? You can sustain. Okay. And that that do it. No more. No more no, questions. Okay. Thank you. Any redirect? Very very briefly, Your Honor. Um, can we please put up exhibit number 66, which has previously been published? I asked to publish it again. Go ahead. And while we're waiting for that to come up on the jury monitors, I'll ask Mr. Arashiga, from the moment you arrived downstairs and saw the vehicle in your driveway until the moment that the police arrived, were you standing near the vehicle that whole time? Objection. Let me see. Overruled. Um, um, so when the, when the officers arrived, uh, the first responders, I guess you can say, uh, Oh, when they first arrived, uh, we were uh, not necessarily like right by the vehicle, but we were sort of in that general area, right by the balcony area. And as, uh, as soon as they showed up, uh, we were told to just get back inside. So we just uh, walked back uh, in, inside the building. But yeah, we weren't really right on top of it. We were just kind of uh, by it, by that area. When you say balcony, you're referring to the front balcony we're, closest to Maple? Um, Oh, sustained as to the form of the question. When you say balcony, what balcony are you referring to? Um, I, I guess I, I say balcony, but uh, more like porch. Uh, in a previous uh, photograph, or in, a, in another photograph, we were able to see uh, some chairs in that porch area. Uh, and that's sort of kind of where everybody was hanging around. And as soon as uh, the, the cops showed up, they told us to get back inside. So you're talking about the backyard? Objection, Lee. Sustain this to the form of the question. What yard are you talking about? Um, the yard that we were uh, that we were hanging uh, around. Yes. Uh, so uh, that that would be sort of uh, the front yard, uh, where when the first responders showed up, because we were as soon as they showed up, they told us to get back inside, and we went back inside right away. From the moment you got downstairs until the <coughs> moment the first responders arrived, did you see anybody else walk up to the vehicle? Objection. Um, Aside from your group, objection. Um, just hold on a second. Wait to Speculation. Um, overruled. He may answer. Sorry. Um, so, um, on on the vehicle. Sorry. Can you repeat the question? I forgot about it. I'm sorry. Aside from the people in your group, the people you knew, from the moment you got downstairs and saw the SUV in your driveway until the moment that the first responders arrived. Did you see anybody else walk up, walk up to the vehicle? Objection. Um, Speculation. Um, overruled. He may answer. Answer. Excuse me. Um, so yeah. So between that between that uh, time, uh, no, uh, nobody else, nobody 
else approached the vehicle. All, all the people that were around that area uh, were people that were with my neighbors and then uh, just me and my mom as well. Uh, nobody else uh, walking from the parade. Can we zoom in on the house and exhibit number 66, please? Objection, relevancy. It's previously been ex admitted. Do you see the window that you were looking out of on the second floor in this picture? Uh, yes. Can you circle it for us? Uh, it'd be uh, right about here. Or, yeah. Can we please preserve that an annotation, mark it as 66A, and I'd move that into evidence? Objection, list of relevancy. Um, your objections noted, 66A um, is received. And I have nothing else, thank you, Judge. All right, thank you. Sir, you may step down. Was he on your list of subpoenas? Uh, no. I don't, don't believe so. I don't believe so. Okay, then he may be dismissed. Yeah. Or excused, sorry. Okay, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, I have the instruction once again to read to you. Please do not begin your deliberations and discussion of the case until all the evidence is presented and I have instructed you on the law. Do not discuss this case among yourselves or with anyone else until your final deliberations in the jury room. This order is not limited to face-to-face -face conversations. It also extends to all forms of electronic communications. Do not use any electronic devices such as a mobile phone or computer, text or instant messaging, or social networking sites to send or receive any information about this case or your experience as a juror. If you come in contact with the parties, lawyers, interpreters, or witnesses do not speak with them. For their part, the parties, lawyers, interpreters, and witnesses will not contact or speak with you. Uh, do not listen to any conversation about this case. Do not research any information that you personally think might be helpful to you in understanding the issues presented. Do not investigate this case on your own or visit the scene, either in person or by any electronic means. Do not read any newspaper reports or listen to any news reports on radio, television, over the internet, or any other electronic application or tool about this trial. Do not consult dictionaries, computers, electronic applications, social media, the internet, or other reference materials for additional information. Do not seek information regarding the public records of any party or witness in this case. Any information you obtain outside the courtroom could be misleading, inaccurate, or incomplete. Relying on this information is unfair because the parties would not have the opportunity to refute, explain, or correct it. Do not communicate with anyone about this trial or your experience as a juror while you are serving on this jury. Do not use a computer, cell phone, or other electronic device, including personal wearable electronics applications or tools with communication capabilities to share any information about this case. For example, do not communicate by telephone, blog post, email, text message, instant message, social media post, or in any other way on or off the computer. Do not permit anyone to communicate with you about this matter, either in person, electronically, or by any other means. If anyone does so, despite your telling them not to, you should report that to me. I appreciate that it is tempting when you go home in the evening to discuss this case with another member of your household, but you may not do so. This case must be decided by you, the jurors, based on the evidence presented in the courtroom. People not serving on this jury have not heard the evidence, and it is improper for them to influence your deliberations and decision in this case. After the trial is completed, you are free to communicate with anyone in any manner. These rules are intended to assure that jurors remain impartial throughout the trial. If any juror has any reason to believe that another juror has violated these rules, you should report that to me. If jurors do not comply with these rules, it could result in a new trial involving additional time and significant expense to the parties and the taxpayers. You are to decide the case solely on the evidence offered and received at trial. With that, you are excused for the weekend. We will see you Monday morning at 8.30. All rise for the jury.
All right, I'll see everyone on Monday morning at 8.30. We are in recess. Thank you, everyone.